European Express introduces DC 10 service from New York to London starting at just $399 round trip. And New York to Paris also starting at just $399 round trip. Service begins July 3rd, but we're taking reservations right now. Call 1-800-908-5000 to reserve your seat. Leisure Air's European Express. This summer, you can afford Europe. Here's the opener when there's only six of these. They're going a mile and a sixteenth, maidens three and upstate breads. R.C. Up a flashing early speed, and so is Raising Peas. It'll be among those three for the early lead. Gifted Traven will rate in fourth position. Blind Truth is fifth toward the inside. Ace the Test will be the early trailer and takes to the inside now as they continue their run up the backstretch. R.C. Uffa is the leader. R.C. Uffa in front by a length and a half through an opening quarter of 23 and one-fifth seconds. Raising Peas and Renaissance Bob are in close attendance, second and third. And now Gifted Traven is making a move on the outside, up into fourth position. Blind Truth being pushed along to stay within striking range fifth. Ace the Test continues to run at the back of the pack with five furlongs to run. R.C. Off is in command as they hit the far turn, has run a half in 46 and 4 fifth seconds. Renaissance Bob now moving toward the leader. Raising Peas, working hard to stay up close third. Gifted Traven is running in fourth. Ace the Test is launching a bid now, midway around the far turn. It's still R.C. Alpha holding on to the lead. Renaissance Bob is right there with them, second on the outside. Gifted Traven is running in third. They're moving toward the top of the stretch. It's R.C. Alpha trying to go the distance here. Renaissance Bob getting on even terms with the front runner as they turn for home. Gifted Traven is set down for the drive third. Raising Peas is fourth. Ace the test is fifth. Renaissance Bob overtakes R.C. Alpha in mid-stretch. Renaissance Bob driving by a length and a half. Alpha... Well, there has been a trend to overbet Miss Crone since her return. You can almost understand why R.C. Alpha was a uh, low price in here, but not this low. Renaissance Bob, who pressed the pace of mean bout going a distance last time out, appreciated the conditioning edge that he had today. And R.C. Alpha is a horse that had never gone a mile in the 16th. They made it to favor, and it didn't win. Renaissance Renaissance Bob, my friend Mark Hopkins will be happy to hear Renaissance Bob had the best buyer. J.C.J. Stable, John M.D. Stefano Jr. and Mike Luzzi, 1544 R.C. Yaffa, 280, 280, gifted Traven, 420 to show. Six ones, $40. Here's the second. This is a sprint, three-year-old fillies, claiming tag 17.5 to 15.5. Here we got five. The first, the one and two are gone. Euphoric interludes, four to one with Roberto Leon, standard response 10, and Georgina Fro. Lucky Old Violet's the six to five favorite. Dale Beckner will ride. Charlie Fepp is eight to one with Latrell. And even though it's not the favorite, it's the favorite in the double. It's a beautiful L, eight to five with Santos. And a response, and it's a beautiful L. There goes, it's a beautiful L. Getting the jump on him from the beginning and opening up quickly by two and a half lengths. Lucky Old Violet second, Charlie Fepp third, euphoric interlude and standard response. It's a beautiful L is opened up by three as they move for the far turn. Lucky Old Violet in full pursuit. There goes Lucky Old Violet now charging hard. Another two to Euphoric Interlude, who's now moved into third after a quarter of 22 and four. Charlie Fepp is alongside her. Standard response is the trailer, seven lengths from the lead. And there goes Lucky Old Violet running by. It's a beautiful L to get the lead by a length. It's a beautiful L second on the inside by three. Euphoric interlude is running in third. Standard response is fourth through the inside. Charlie Feppa wide fifth. Lucky old Violet off the turn and into the stretch and under the whip with a two-length lead. It's a beautiful L still running second. Euphoric interlude is third. Charlie Fept is closing some ground fourth. Standard response is last in mid-stretch. Lucky old Violet has built a four-length lead. Euphoric interlude is... The drop down, it's a beautiful L, figured to shake loose early and did, but was actually really no match for lucky old Violet. Uh, this was a filly looking for a class after having a broken her maiden for 30,000, two back, the proper spot and the proper ride under these conditions. Lucky old Violet, Jim, James Riccio, John Paracel, Dale Beckner for fun. 442-80-220, euphoric interlude, 340-240, Charlie Fepp nabs, nabs the drop down, it's a beautiful L and picks up the show, 260. The five Five threes, 14, 20, Cronulla 3, 5, 5, 3, 10, 40, early double, 6, 5, not the favorite in the double, 47, 80. 
Here's the second division of that bunch in the first race. This time we've got seven of them going a mile and a sixteenth. Maidens three and up state bread. The there goes Crossgate. And in between horses, Wizards T-shirt is there, and so is Triple Fast. Those four scrimmaging for the early lead, and in behind them, Landing Pad, followed by Pickwick Punch, and Al Ann, who is off to a late start, but Al Ann is making strides quickly. Moving up the back stretch, Crossgate short lead, Triple Fast right there, Woodburn right with the pace on the outside third. Two and a half lengths, Wizards T-shirt is fourth. And to his inside, Alan moving up now. Alan takes fourth. Wizards T-shirt back in fifth. Landing pad being helped along. Sixth on the outside. Five lengths to pick quick punch the trailer. They continue their run up the back stretch. The opening quarter went in 23 and three fifth seconds. The run a half in 47 and one. Three of them stacked across the track around the far turn. Woodburn three wide moving up to grab a short lead. Crossgate right there, triple fast between them. Alan still working hard and behind the lead. Landing pad right there with Alan around the far turn. Woodbourne taking charge. Woodbourne in front. Landing pad hung out four wide. Alan in between horses third. Crossgate now fourth toward the inside. Triple fast couldn't keep up. Farther back. Pickwick Punch and Wizards T-shirt off the turn and into the stretch. Woodbourne hand ride, three length lead. Alan put to the whip, running second on the outside, landing pad third. Woodbourne still with a clear advantage in mid stretch, still holding on by three. I believe this is the pack rule part two today. Meantime, you'll have uh, the four year olds, the two choices in the race, taking the measure of the youngers. They were the two horses that were bet. They will finish inverted. I guess the outside post from a Woodbourne and the poor break from Alain made a, a bit of a difference. Here. Alain might have won if it broke uh, with the field, but then again, it was still doing something it had never done, and Woodbourne is the winner. John Capelli, Steve Schaefer, Paul Sindab. 10 20, 3 20, 2 20. Alain will live to fight again. 2 20, 2 10. Landing pad, another check. 2 20 to show. The exact 8 2, 21 20. We took two off the turf today, the fourth and the fifth, so they're now a mile and a quarter and on the main, four and up, claiming tags 35. Charming Buck out quickly and right toward the inside. Farthest out, there goes our homeboy up and after the lead. And our homeboy taking the early advantage, and on the inside, Charming Buck runs along in second. A call to rise is third, punch passer on the outside, fourth, turning for home, hard held in cramped quarters, fifth. Mr. Lee and devoted glory at the back of the pack as they make their way into the back stretch. The opening quarter went in 25 and one round the first bend. They're into the back stretch now and our homeboy on a loose line there by length and a half. Turning for home is running in second to call to rise and charming buck together second and third. Two and a half lengths back punch passer is a reserved about four and a half lengths from the lead. Mr. Lee is called on for a bit more run now. He's taking up on the outside. Devoted glory is the trailer. The half one in a soft 48 and four fifth seconds with our homeboy still on a clear lead. Turning for home is now edged into second. A call to rise is third. Charming Buck is tailing off into fourth. Mr. Lee now moving up on the outside into fourth position. Charming Buck is back running in fifth. Punch passer devoted glory half mile from the line our homeboy lets it on a notch three quarters and 13 and one and our homeboy now striding away to a three length lead a call to rise is put to a drive with three furlongs to run turning for home back running in third devoted glory in a sustained bid is moved into fourth and the outside devoted glory continues to gain they're at the quarter pole now. Our homeboy leading through easy early fractions is under a hand ride into the stretch with a three length lead, but devoted glory is coming well, and so is a call to rise. They're in mid stretch. Our homeboy is under a left handed whip, and he's still there by two. A call to rise and devoted glory. But our... Talking off camera that the uh, Ferriola horses seem to be waking up a little bit this week uh, his good evidence. And Harvey, I don't know what it is about these mile and a quarter turf races that are rescheduled, but it always seems speed seems to hold the way. That's right. Well, our homeboy wires them. The horses running. Th these are the only three they bet, and they ran one, two, three. But Ingrid Ferriola, Pete Ferriola, and Michelle Luttrell, our homeboy, 580, 360, 260. The last moment, this one became the favorite, actually. Call to rise, 340, 240, devoted glory, 260. The 12-4 is 1820, Quinella 4, 12-12-4, 1160.
first we gave you the sun for just $69. Now, here are the stars. SunJet International introduces daily service from New York to Los Angeles starting at $129 each way and New York to Dallas for just $99 each way. The City of Stars for $129. The Lone Star for $99. Call 1-800-4-SUNJET to reserve your seat. SunJet, we've got your ticket to the sun and the stars. Sports Channel's New Sport gives you the latest on sports. Get the scores, the highlights, the inside stories. Go behind the numbers and hear from players and coaches. Preview your team with pre- and post-game analysis and recap. It's all on Sports Channel's New Sport. The world is waiting for soccer's World Cup tournament to begin. But you don't have to. Sports Channel presents exclusive coverage of Team USA in a prep match against Mexico. It's the USA versus Mexico. Saturday, June 4th, live on Sports Channel's New Sport. Pick three begins with another off the turf for going a mile and a sixteenth. He's a maiden's three and up. Right out on the lead. Top trader broke well. Then it's Broad Grin. In between horses, Thunderbolted is up and looking for the lead. The early trailer will be Watrall's Sea Trip, and the early leader will be Thunderbolted. Eddie Maple riding a bit aggressively here to take the lead by a length on the inside. Broad Grin second, gate six up close third. Two and a half lengths back and top trader running from off the pace is fourth. Another two to Watrall's Sea Trip who will be the trailer as they continue their run up the back stretch. Thunderbolted through a quarter of 23 and three fifth seconds, but there goes Broad Grin. Broad Grin putting ahead in front. Thunderbolted second, gate six continues to run up close to the pace while on the outside. Three and a half lengths back. Top trader remains in fourth, about four lengths from the lead. They hit the far turn after a half of 47 and two fifth seconds, and gate six is now the leader. Gate six in front. Broad grin second, Thunderbolt at third. Now Mike Smith makes a move with top trader, fourth and gaining on the outside. Watt trolls C trip following top trader. Three furlongs from the line. Gate six with a three length advantage. Top trader under the whip second is gate six continues to get away. Watrow's sea trip has moved into third on the outside. Broad Grin and Thunderbolted have dropped back. Off the turn and into the stretch. Gate six, a four-length lead. Top trader and Watrow's sea trip. Down toward the final furlong now. Mohica going left-handed on gate six with a four-length advantage and less than a furlong to run. On the outside, Watrow's Sea Trip has moved into second, gaining ground on gate six. Two length lead. Watrow's Sea Trip trying to get to gate six. Won't do it. Gate six holds. Three quarters of a length. Watrow this field was just totally decimated when 10 of the 15 entered overnight, including five AEs came out at scratch time. Uh, <laughs> this is a very difficult horse to make, Aubrey. We're talking about this off camera. My only question was being from an Aubrey's boy mare, I was just surprised that they didn't try it going along sooner. This horse was eligible for the first race and the third race. Today's the New York Red Maiden. The Bianca stable, Ken Strike, a Raphael Mojica Jr., gate six. I would have had to go with the all button to get it. 1668 and 320. Walthrow Sea Trip, seven and three. Top trader, 240 to show. And in a five-horse field, friends, the exact at 10 2 $100.80. Here's the six. They're going seven furlongs. He's a four and up, claiming he takes 25 down to 20. Out for gold is out. I'll take a Stan Luttrell, Palm Beach Dewey. John Velasquez rides the Philly. Just for the record, Robbie Davis, Bushman's out. Crown prospect to Mike Smith. Marauders out. Sea Voyage, Dale Beckman. They're off. I'll take a stand. Gets out first. And just for the records there, just for the record takes the lead, I'll take a stand, and between them it's Crown Prospect, and at the back of the early going will be Sea Voyage, and down inside Palm Beach Dewey. Up the back stretched a three-way scramble for the lead, just for the record down on the inside, I'll take a stand on the outside, Crown Prospect mixing it up in between them, three lengths back, Palm Beach Dewey, fourth toward the rail, and Sea Voyage the trailer. A contentious opening quarter of 22 and four fifth seconds, racing well off the rail, just for the record, short lead. Crown Prospect right there to his outside. I'll take a stand. Tails off into third. Palm Beach Dewey gaining at the inside from fourth. And Sea Voyage is moving into contention. They're midway around the far turn. It's just for the record still in front. Pressed through a half of 45 and four. 
to his outside crown prospect. There's an opening for Sea Voyage. And down inside Palm Beach Dewey. Those four will hit the top together. I'll take a stand coming up at the top of the stretch. Just for the record is still holding on to the lead. It's just for the record in front. I'll take a stand who dropped back on the turn. Is coming well down the center of the racetrack. Noticed yesterday when I handicapped this race that just for the record does his best racing when he's fresh as he is today after about six weeks. But uh, in the meantime, uh, I thought no way could he run with Bushman. In the meantime, Bushman was a late scratch. It allowed just for the record a loose lead. Loose lead for the Ned Law stable, John Hurtler and Robbie Davis. 720, I'll take a stand, went back and came again. 282.60, Sea Voyage, $4. The exact of 3 1, $22. The seventh race were on the turf. It's a mile and a sixteenth. These are three and up. Now was a race other than Maiden claiming a starter. In the gate, an awfully long time. Chicago Land, the number four horse, had a blinker problem. They didn't fit. They had to get other blinkers. I think they were sewing them while we were watching. They finally went off. Ali Dawn, six to one in Samine, the Plainsman, nine to two in Robbie. My only hopes, 50 with Julio Heredia, Chicago Land, five to two, and a very patient Jerry Bailey. Sand kicker, ten and John. Velasquez, Gallant Guest, six with Eddie Maple. Bermuda Seed is out. Flaming Falcon, eight to five, New York. And indeed, they're off. The Plainsman breaks well. There goes Sand Kicker up toward the lead. Sand Kicker takes charge early. Gallant Guest moving swiftly after him, second by three. On the outside, Flaming Falcon now moves into third. The Plainsman is back to fourth. Chicagoland is running fifth early. Ali Don and My Only Hope. Into the back stretch, Sand Kicker on an uncontested lead, striding away to a three-length advantage. Gallant Guest is taken in hand, second by two and a half. Flaming Falcon third, two and a half. The Plainsman is fourth. Chicago Land and Alley Dawn are together, and they're moving together. Then a break of three to my only hope, the trailer. Midway down the back stretch, Sand Kicker got the opening quarter in 24 and 2, but now Gallant Guest is getting closer and moving to his flank to apply pressure midway up the back stretch. Two lengths back. Flaming Falcon is running in third. In between horses, Alley Don, the Plainsman continues to save ground. Chicagoland is there on the far outside with a half mile to run. Chicagoland beginning to make some progress. Another three back to my only hope, the trailer. The half one in 49 flat. The tempo quickening around the far turn. Sand kicker pressed harder by Gallant Guest. Flaming Falcon right there with them third. The Plainsman is moving well, but in behind horses fourth. Chicagoland is a wide fifth and Alley Don as the field turns for home. Gallant Guest has taken the lead at the top of the stretch. Flaming Falcon set down for the drive second. The Plainsman right there in between horses. Third, Chicagoland is fourth. It's Gallant Guest in front. The Plainsman coming well. The Plainsman in between horses. Flaming Falcon on the outside. And they both go by. Gallant Guest. Chicagoland is fourth. Flaming Falcon forging to a short lead. The Plainsman second best. Flaming Falcon wins by a long neck. The Actually, I spoke to Bob Duncan about that long delay, and what had happened was that Chicagoland apparently uh, ripped off the cup during the post parade. They tried to fit him with two other blinkers that didn't work, and you were right, Harvey. Uh, Jerry actually got a piece of string and tied the cup back to the blinker. It didn't do him any good because he winds up running third. In the, but in the meantime, our OTB puncher strikes in here. This horse opened about one to nine. This is another one of those horses. We don't know who he is. We're happy to see him win. Guy who bets his Money is entitled to a score. I hope he wasn't watching. It might have been a little frightening in the stretch. But Flaming Falcon, who blew out to 8-5, uh, to five, wins it for the Charby Stable, Gary Siaka, Richard Liori, and that very happy Big Better. 525 and 240. The Plainsman, 5 and 260. Chicago Land, 260 to show. The Exacta, 8 twos, $25. Pick 3, 10, 3, 8, $469. Form thoroughbred brought to you by the Daily Racing, the best friend a handicapper could have. If you're looking for an edge, there's only one place to find it. Everything you really need to know about a horse is in the racing form. It's the best piece of information you can get today. Well, the Daily Racing form is a handicapper's Bible. You can't get along without it if you're seriously trying to make money. It's the only way to race. It's the only way to know what's going on. When you come to the track without the form, it's strictly a guessing game. The Daily Racing form, the paper to read when you're playing to win. I truly think that the, I don't see how a trainer or any horseman can do without a racing form. 
Dear Dave, I got a degree, got a job, got my first paycheck, got a shot. Where's the rest? Luckily, there's a Wendy's nearby. With your 99-cent super value menu, I get lots of choices, even though I'm on a limited budget. My favorites are the 99-cent Junior Cheeseburger Deluxe and Caesar Side Salad. Although sometimes I'll get your great chili instead of the cheeseburger. And when I have a rough day, I treat myself to a Frosty. They say there's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> Luckily, this comes close. Any closer, and I'd be out of business. On the widener, mile and a sixteen. These are three-year-olds and up. Now winners of three other maiden claiming or starter. Brissetto, Chavez. Compadre, Craig Perret. Press card, Julie Crone. World Order, Jose Santos. Ocean Wave, Robbie Davis on the favorite. Taub, Jerry Bailey. Happy Trails, Frank Alvarado. Glitty, Jean-Luc Semin, a couple of bar shoes. Grafton, Mike Smith. And they're off. Compadre and Bersito both after the lead. There goes Grafton on the outside and happy trails. Grafton taking charge early. From his outside post has cleared the field and made the lead by the time they reach the backstretch. Bersito backs off running second. Happy trails third. Compadre is rating in fourth. Glitty in hand fifth. Talb is running in sixth. World Order restrained in seventh. Ocean Wave is restrained at the back of the pack as well. Press card is the early trailer. Press card's about nine from the lead. Grafton is the leader through a quarter of 24 and three-fifths seconds. Bersito just off his flank second. Happy trails third. Compadres between horses. World Order is making steady progress with a ground saving trip. On the far outside, running four wide is Glitty, followed by Talb. And now Prescott is launching a bid outside horses as they enter the far turn. The trailer is now Ocean Wave. The half went in 49 and 1. On the far turn, Grafton by ahead, Bersito running second. Glitty is now moved into third. Press card was last earlier, a wide fourth now. Down inside, World Order has had a perfect trip while in behind the lead. Happy trails. And then it's Talb, followed on the inside by Compadre. Ocean Wave at the back, six lengths from the front end to the back end. And as the field turns for home, on the front end is Bersito. Bersito opening up at the top of the stretch. Turning back, Grafton. Happy Trails is second. Compadre coming well on the outside. World Order in between horses, now fourth. Down to the final six. It shows you what happens when you're controlling speed in a relatively paceless field. Bersetto was on top of the pace all the way, just tracking Grafton, who was coming out of sprints. And when the running began, Bersetto had more than a lot, m enough left. Murray Garron owned a trainer, Bersetto, with Chavez. 28, 20, 14, 60, 9, 60. World order gets the place thanks to a super ground saving ride by the Santos. 13 and 740. Happy Trails gets nipped. 920 to show. The one for exact, the three. 46.20. Here's the finale. This is seven furlongs. Phillies and Mayors four and up. 17.5 down to 15.5. A claim here. Number eight, Fortune One, will go to uh, uh, John Paracella. Uh, Nikki's Rose is out. Special Mana, five with Mike Smith. Life's Walk, six, and John Velasquez. Okay to advance. 21, Latrell. Sarasota Sand. Chavez to sweep at six. Precisely perfect, eight with Lovato. Hot under the collar, five in Migliori. George's Bank, nine with Santos. Fortune One's the favorite, five to two in Bailey. Happy Charger, 18, Alvarado. Goblin, nine in Leon. Musical score, 50 with Luzzy. They're off. Fortune Wand and Sarasota Sand out fast. There goes George's Bank up from between horses to get the lead. George's Bank in front. Fortune Wand running second. Sarasota Sand is third. Down on the inside, okay to advance is now running in fourth. Hot under the collar is fifth. And a happy charger is sixth on the far outside. A break of three to life's walk running in seventh. Goblin is now eighth. Precisely perfect ninth. Special mana back to tenth. Five lengths to musical score the trailer. George's Bank drills an opening quarter in 22 and three fifths seconds. Okay to advance, this come on through, second now on the inside. In between horses, it's Sarasota Sand. Fortune One has hung out three wide. In behind that group, hot under the collar is running within striking range fifth. A happy charger dropping back a bit in sixth. Precisely perfect is a strong seventh. And then it's Life's Walk, Goblin, Special Mana. Musical score still well behind. George's Bank still in command. Off the rail comes okay to advanced. Now poised for the stretch drive 
second. Fortune One is third. Hot under the collar coming well in fourth. Life's Walk is there. Precisely Perfect is coming on through in between horses. Goblin's on the outside and farthest out. Special Mana. It's still okay to advance. Holding on two and a half lengths. Precisely Perfect has moved into second. Goblin is coming well on the outside with Life's Walk, but it will be okay to advance. A four and a half length winner here under the line second with Life's Walk. Well, this is uh, Ferriola and Michelle Luttrell on a double today. And Harvey, I think you had me convinced that this horse was a bit of an overlay. Good race at this level, two back going six furlongs. I guess he appreciated the added panel today. An overlay that I didn't have. I didn't. <laughs> I thought the race was too tough. I think I was right. Ingrid Ferriola, Pete Ferriola, Michelle Luttrell, they pick up a double. Okay to advance. 44, 18, 20, 10, 80. Life's Walk, 726. Precisely perfect, 560 to show. Mudcork fans might have hit it. First and third horse, only ones. The 3 2 exact of 470 and 60 cents. Late double, 1 3. We don't get many of those. $916.40. Triple, 3 2 5, $2,680. If I went at the pick six today with 5,000, I think I might have had four. Here's tomorrow's scratches. In the second, take out the 11, Polaris Star. Move to the fifth and take out the 18, All Star, the 19, Jade Bird. That's about it for the scratches for tomorrow, at least at this time. European Ooh. Express. This summer, you can afford Europe. The opener is at seven furlongs. It's for three-year-olds and up, which have never won three races other than maiden claiming or starter. I'm no quacker Alvarado, digging in Smith, Cormor Ray, Perrette, fighting Daddy Davis. Imaging, Santos, England expects Jerry Bailey. Cormor Ray will be the early leader, but fighting Daddy's in close pursuit. Image side is third, I'm no quacker for... England expects settles about four lengths from the lead. Five lengths back to digging in, who is off to a sluggish beginning. Up the back stretch and Cormoray drills the opening quarter in 22 and two. But there goes Fighting Daddy making his move and England expects is moving willingly toward the lead on the outside while still in hand. Two and a half lengths back, Imaging is now being pushed along in fourth. Digging in takes to the outside. I'm no quacker has dropped back to trail the field. They're midway around the far turn, and the half goes in 45 and two fifth seconds. It's Cormoray still holding on to the lead. England expects his poise for the stretch drive on the outside. Fighting Daddy continues the battle away in between horses. Imaging takes to an opening on the inside. Digging in is set down for the drive. It's still Cormoray in front. Here comes Imaging up the inside now with a bold challenge for the front runner. Cormoray trying to hold for another furlong, but Imaging is coming on by to take the lead. It's Imaging down inside, in front by a head. Cormoray on the outside will be second best coming to the line. Imaging, rail skimming ride, Jose Santos. The three longest shots on the board all hit the board here. Imaging, who won his last on an off track going seven furlongs, gets an inside trip here, comes up the rail, and wins it under Jose Santos at odds of nine to one for owner trainer Stanley Huff. Two in a row for Imaging. Jose Santos aboard. 2160, 860, 480. Cormor Ray also at nine to one. Returns 1080 and 680. Longest shot in the field. I'm no quacker. Five dollars for show. The exact of five and three, 165, 40. Here's the second. It's a mile and a 16th on the Widener. Phillies and mares four and up. Claiming price, 50 to 45,000. Gary Contessa entry, high talent Santos, dark star line, Penta Sormo. Triple charm Alvarado, new account Maple. Turco Lady Bailey, Miss Fixit Luzzy, Chris's dear Debbie Lovato, a shaky queen Nelson, interrupted Davis, hurry up Maria, John Velasquez. And they're off. High talent comes out running from the inside. On the outside, a shaky queen is there. And there goes Miss Fixit moving toward the lead early. They make the bend into the back stretch and Mix Fixit with an aggressive early mood takes charge. Now in front by two. Turco Lady is coming on through. A shaky queen is there on the outside running in third. High talent in hand running in fourth. Two lengths back to New Account racing in fifth. Hurry up, Mario is sixth on the outside. Triple Charm is seventh. And Chris's Dear Debbie is eighth. Interrupta is ninth. And Dark Star Line is the trailer. The opening quarter went in 23 seconds flat. 
honest fractions here set by Miss Fixit with Turk -a Lady and a shaky queen in close pursuit and high talent tucked neatly in behind the lead running fourth. Two lengths back. New account races in fifth position. Hurry up, Mari is only five lengths from the lead, followed by Chris's Dear W is in behind horses as the field hits the far turn. Then farther back, it's Triple Charm who's losing ground. Dark Star Line moving around her. Interrupta is the trailer. The half in 46 and one fifth seconds. And they're midway around the far turn. Turco Lady coming on to grab a short lead. But Miss Fixit is not done yet, and she battles right back. A shaky queen is three wide. Hurry up, Maria is coming. Coming four wide, High Talent has had a flawless trip while in behind the lead, but she'll need some running room now. They're at the top of the stretch. Turkle Lady, Miss Fixit, going at it head to head. High Talent still nowhere to run. Hurry up, Maria is right there, and then here comes Chris's dear Debbie, and here comes Dark Star Line, fastest of them all. Dark Star Line splitting horses to take the lead. Chris's dear Debbie running second. Hurry up, Maria third. Dark Star Line. Both of Gary Contessa's horses here, High Talent and Dark Star Line, were certainly competitive with this group. High Talent blocked behind a wall of horses in the stretch. Dark Star Line, meanwhile, was very patiently handled by Kent DeSormo, splits horses in the stretch, and gets up for the victory. The old Brookside Farm, Gary Contessa, Kent DeSormo in for the ride, $583, $240. Chris's Dear Debbie, seven and four forty. dollars Hurry up, Maria, $4. The exact is one six sixty four dollars. Quinella one six six one thirty five forty. Early double five and one eighty three sixty. The third race is on the inner turf, a mile and a quarter. This is for maidens three and up. And they're off. Premium value bounces right out on the lead. And gone dancing again is up there, up after the lead. And on the far outside, Strauss. Gone dancing again has gone on to take the lead. Strauss will prompt from the outside. Premium value taken back into third. In between horses, Sophie's friend is racing fourth. Alfaxi was three wide in fifth position. Indian Sun is saving ground along the rail in sixth position. And then Rain Alert now moves through between horses to be seventh. Alley Red is eighth on the outside and Raffinell toward the rail. Then a break of three lengths back to Winterton, and the early trailer will be Grand Chef. Grand Chef's better than a dozen from the lead. Gone dancing again is the leader, Jose Santos, trying to nurse his speed down the back stretch. But Strauss is right there to put some pressure on. I'll fax you laying just off the lead in third. The opening quarter went in 24 and 3 fifth seconds. They got a half here in an easy 49 and 3. Soft fractions here for Gone Dancing again, the leader, with Strauss right there with him second. I'll fax you kept close to this moderate pace running in third. Rain alert now, edging up into fourth on the outside. Sophie's friend is fifth, three lengths from the lead. And then it's Indian Sun racing sixth on the outside, followed by Premium Value. Then Raph Fennell and Winterton, Grand Chef, Alley Reds at the back of the pack. The cadence is quickening as they round the far turn. Down inside, Gone Denson again, committed to the lead, trying to go the distance here. Strauss is in between horses. I'll fax you on the far outside. Sophie's friend looms boldly while in behind the lead. Rain Alert switches to the outside for the run into the stretch. Indian Sun is fanned wide as the field turns for home. I'll fax you, forging to the lead. It's I'll fax you in front and bearing in. Gone Denson again, switched to the outside for clear running. Indian Sun is full of Ronick. Uncorking an explosive rally. Here comes Indian Sun trying to catch Alfaxiu, running out of ground. Indian Sun is going to get there. A hard charge through that land. Indian ball. Sun away since March, making just his second start of the year. Comes from off the pace to nail Alfaxiu as they come for the line. Alfaxiu, a half to stakes winner. Christy Cat takes to the turf but has to settle for place. Indian Sun, John Peace, Rusty Arnold, Craig Perrette. Seven dollars four forty three twenty. I'll fax you twelve twenty eight eighty. Gone dancing again seven twenty. Exact to three ten eighty seven twenty. Back to the main track for the fourth. It's a sprint six and a half furlongs. Phillies and mares three and up, which have never won two races other than Pam Zig, Samin, Magnetic Money, Dale Beckner, Ensign Joanne Davis, Braided Way, Bailey. Dancers Gate, Alvarado, Water Resistant, Luzzy, Our Dear Dana, Leon. They're off. Braided Way and Magnetic Money hook up early. 
Water resistance just off them. Pam Zig came out running in fourth. Then it's our dear Dana, followed by Ensign Joanne, the early trailer dancer's gate. The early leader is Magnetic Money. By a length, braided way is chasing her running second. And then it's Pam Zig third. On the outside, water resistant, kept close to the pace. Three lengths off it as they hit the far turn. The quarter in 22 and one. It's still Magnetic Money who continues to blaze the way around the far turn. Braided Way is running in second, and there goes Pam Zig now, revving up on the outside third. Water Resistant is fourth by five. Then Ensign Joanne and our dear Dana. Dancer's Gate is far behind. It's still Magnetic Money with the lead. Pam Zig right there with the pacemakers while three wide. And in between those two, it's Braided Way in the field, turns for home. Pam Zig called on for her best, and she's giving it. Pam Zig opening up now by a length and a half, leaving Magnetic Money and Braided Way behind. Water Resistant is fourth, and our dear Dana fifth. Inside the final furlong, Jean-Luc Samin continues to urge on Pam Zig to an insurmountable lead now. Water Resistant has moved into This is second. an interesting horse, this Pam Zig, four-year-old daughter, of course, of Dan Zig. She's a New York bred, yet she broke her maiden over in Europe on the grass. She hasn't seen the turf here in the United States. That may be the next move for trainer Phil Johnson. She wins here impressively for the Sugar Maple Farm and jockey Jean-Luc Samin. Pam Zig, 520, 340-280. Water resistant, $4.320. Our dear Dana, $5. Exactors, $1.6, $19. Cornella, $1.661, $10.40. a little lesson in automobile economics. Ford Taurus versus Toyota Camry. Let's see. Monthly payments, Taurus cost less. Tune-ups, Taurus cost less. Insurance rates, Taurus cost less. The MSRP of each car with V6, dual airbags, and anti-lock brakes. Wow, Taurus cost $3,500 less. This is a no-brainer. No wonder Ford Taurus is the best-selling car. It's a better value. See your Ford dealer and see for yourself. This week, check out Sports Channel. Wednesday, the Mets wrap up their series with the visiting Rockies. Thursday, Rusty Staub serves up great baseball talk and much more at the plate. Mets baseball and at the plate. This week, only on Sports Channel. The world is waiting for soccer's World Cup tournament to begin. But you don't have to. Sports Channel presents exclusive coverage of Team USA in a prep match against Mexico. Live Saturday night at 7.30, only on Sports Channel's new sport. Here's the fifth as we begin the pick three. A mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Phillies and mares three and up, which have never won three races other than. And they're off. Persnickety comes out running and directly to the lead. Penny's reshoot has speed from the inside and from the outside it's Staple Queen. Persnickety with a short lead. Staple Queen is right there with her. There's room at the inside for Penny's reshoot. And just off the early leaders will be Bold as Silver, who now moves into fourth. Wings Point, under a snug hold by Jerry Bailey, is running fifth now and settles in behind horses. Then a break of four lengths back to Quinpool, the trailer. Up front, a speed duel develops between Perstickety and Penny's reshoot. The opening quarter went in 23-2, and two, and Penny's reshoot now with the lead by a half length. Persnickety, though, sticking right to her. And Bold as Silver has made steady progress. Now third, only a length and a half from the front. Staple Queen is running fourth in between horses through a half of 46 and two. Wings Point unhurried as yet. And a big break back to Quinpool. They're rounding the far turn. Penny's reshoot still holding the lead. Persnickety now trying to get to her. And now Bailey begins the move with Wings Point, who looms a threatening third. Staple Queen is fourth. Bold as Silver is fifth. And from the back of the pack, Quinpool is gathering momentum. And Quinpool is coming well on the outside. The field coming past the quarter pole. Penny's reshoot by a half length. Wings Point coming three wide after her. Persnickety is now back running in third. Quinpool is fourth. In mid-stretch, Mike Luzzi goes left-handed on Penny's reshoot. But here comes Wings Point. 
who runs by to get the lead. Wings point in front. Penny's reshoot is unwavering, and she's coming back. Penny's reshoot reclaiming the lead, and Penny's reshoot would not be denied victory. Winning Wings point looked like a winner at the eighth pole, but she hangs in the stretch, and Penny's reshoot, as consistent as they come, comes back on the inside to get the victory. Seven lifetime starts, now four wins, two seconds, and a third. Penny's reshoot, three-year-old Philly, beats some of her elders here. Eddie Wachtel, JCJ Stable, John DeStefano trains, Mike Luzzi was up. Six dollars, 320, 210. Wings point, 320, 220, per snickety, 240. The exact is one six fifteen dollars Back to the turf for the sixth. Mile and a quarter on the inner. Three rolls and up, which have never won two races. And they're off. Nice try, George. Sultan of Java and Check Ride out best. Check Ride will take the initiative. Sultan of Java angles to the uh, inside now. Then farther back. It's nice try, George, saving ground toward the rail. On the outside, Cosby is moving up free wide. And behind that group, it's Mr. Hydro. And they're followed by Reddenham Electric Image in the early trailer will be Moscow Magic. Check ride, coasting along on an easy lead. Settles down two links ahead of Sultan of Java running second. Cosby's third on the outside. The opening quarter went in 24 and 3. Into the back stretch, check ride in hand and in front. But Cosby will come up now to press the front runner. Sultan of Java's in between those two. Then a break of three back to the trio of Electric Image, Nice Try George and Reddenham. Mr. Hydro is second to last. Moscow Magic continues to trail the field. The pace is slow to develop. The half went in 49 and 1. But now Cosby has taken the lead. Check ride second on the inside with five furlongs to run. To their outside, Electric Image is moving well, an anxious third. On the inside, Reddenham is racing in fourth. Sultan of Java, three wide, going into the turn. Nice try, George, is only four lengths from the lead. Then Moscow Magic, second to last, and Mr. Hydro's the trailer. Check Ride has reclaimed the lead from Cosby. Electric Image is just off the running third. Nice try, George. Threading his way through between horses. Down inside Reddenham. Moscow Magic coming four wide. Mr. Hydro is in behind a wall of horses. The trailer is now Sultan of Java. As the field comes off the turn, Check Ride is the leader by a length. Cosby is second. Moscow Magic, who is far back down the back stretch, is coming well. Nice try, George. Stalled in heavy traffic. They're in the final furlong. Moscow Magic on the outside. Check ride at the rail. Moscow Magic and Check Ride head to head as they come down to the line. And Moscow Magic will outfinish Check Ride to win by a length. Moscow Magic returned off a layoff in her last start, was beaten by Matchless Dancer, who I believe came back and won yesterday or the day before. Moscow Magic from off the pace here is going to win this time. Three career turf starts. This is his second victory. Son of Najinsky Secret wins it for the Penny Bryn Farm. David Whiteley and Craig Perrette gets his second victory today. 820, 420, 320. Check 8340. Nice try 780. The exact to 3 and 8, 3260. On to the seventh. We're on the wide near here. A mile and a sixteenth. Three year olds and up, which have not won two races of 22,000 and a mile or over since September 15th of 93. Binary light is out. Solar Splendor McCauley. Roman Envoy, Perrette, Sea Hero, Jerry Bailey on the favorite. Jackson Port, Leone, Four Stars All Star, Santos, Alpine Choice, Smith. Scratch the rest. They're off. Roman Envoy comes out running immediately to the lead. Sea Hero will concede the lead to him. Alpine Chase is running in third in the early going. In between horses, Solar Splendor. At the back will be four stars. All star Jackson Port to be the early trailer. They make their way into the back stretch. Roman Envoy on an uncontested lead. Two and a half lengths clear of Jerry Bailey and his Derby winner, Sea Hero, reserved in second position. And then it's Alpine Choice on the outside. Solar Splendor threading his way through between horses now to be third. Four stars all-star down on the fence. Jackson Port continues to trail the field. Roman Envoy continues alone on the lead. The opening quarter in 23 seconds flat. Solar Splendor's moving into second. Sea Hero kept within striking range third. Heading for the far turn now. Roman Envoy still uncontested on the lead through a 46-second half mile. Sea Hero getting a bit closer with a half mile to run. Solar Splendor is third. 
Four stars, all star, lengthening his stride now as they approach the midway point on the turn. Al Point Choice and Jackson Port. It's still Roman Envoy, the one to catch. Sea Hero, a measured second. Solar Splendor down on the fence, running in third. Four stars, all star, draws within striking range fourth as the field turns for home. Roman Envoy cuts the corner in front by a length and a half. Sea Hero is coming with his run now. Sea Hero on even terms with Roman Envoy as four. Four stars, all star joins the fray. Sea Heroes in front. Four stars, all star giving his all. Sea Hero digging down. Four stars, all star. Those two streaking toward the wire together. Four stars, all star out kicking. Four Sea turf Hero races to today. All four winners coming from off the pace. And four stars, all star just keeps rolling along. Gets the victory here. Jose Santos is second of the day. Sea Hero making his first grass start against really top notch competition has to settle for second. It is four stars all-star, Richard Bomsey, Philip DeLeo, Leo O'Brien, Santos on his second. 7, 260, 220. Sea Hero, 220, 210. Roman Envoy, 260. Exact is 5, 3, $16. Pick 3, 135, $95. Form Thoroughbred Action, brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, the best friend a handicapper could have. Even when the race is over, it's sometimes hard to tell who won. But the best way to pick the winners before they hit the wire is with the new look Daily Racing Form. More workouts with rankings, record at the track and at the distance, expanded race conditions, additional fractional time, front bandages, more European coverage, and more of everything you need to get the complete picture on every race. So before you try to pick your next winner, pick up the Daily Racing Form and see how the best just got even better. Now, more than ever, you can own quality thoroughbred racehorses. Racing's hottest stable, LSI Gold, introduces the most innovative concept in racing today, affordable thoroughbred general partnerships. Right now, LSI Gold is among the leading races won and purses earned. LSI Gold's formula for success is simple. Select development and training of potential high-earning sound thoroughbreds. Remember, the time to call LSI Gold is now, because winning is everything. Promotional consideration provided by the beautiful Luna Restaurant, affordably priced and conveniently located across from Belmont Park. The Luna offers the finest in continental Neapolitan cuisine. Find out today why the Luna is New York's best kept dining secret. Here's the highlight of the afternoon, the 101st running of the Metropolitan Handicap Grade 1, $500,000. The Allen Jerkins entry, Virginia Rapids, Samine, Devil is Due, Bailey. American Chance, Maple, Cherokee Run, Perrette. Federal Funds, John Velasquez, West by West, Davis. Holy Bull, the favorite even money, money under Mike Smith. Lair of Trumpets, Luzzy, Tinner's Way, DeSormo, Colonial Affair, Santos, Northern Trend was scratched. Holy Bull comes out running, and Cherokee Run is also right there. Down toward the inside, it's American Chance. Then it's Devil is Due, and on the far outside, Tinner's Way. Holy Bull has made the lead, and he opens up now by a length and a half. Tinner's Way is running in second. Flare of Trumpets now with the rush. Third on the outside. And then it's Devil is Due, who's up close to the pace. He's right there fourth, in behind Holy Bull. Cherokee Run is racing in fifth. American Chance is sixth. Colonial Affair is seventh, about six lengths from the lead. Then it's Virginia Rapids, followed by Federal Funds. And five lengths back to West by West, who's better than 15 from the lead. Holy Bull drilled the opening quarter in 22 and four fifth seconds. And he blazes the way into the far turn, leading by length. Blair of Trumpets pressing him second through a half mile of 45 seconds flat. Cherokee Run is making his run now. He's third on the outside, midway around the far turn. And here comes Devil is Due, coming on through an opening toward the inside. Virginia Rapids is rallying on the far outside. American Chance is there. Tinner's Way is now dropped back to sixth. Colonial Affair is down inside. He's seventh, seven lengths from the lead. And Holy Bull comes roaring off the turn, bracing for a challenge here from Cherokee Run. Cherokee Run confronts Holy Bull, and Holy Bull is digging down and is responding. And he shrugs off the challenge of Cherokee Run. Virginia Rapids is running in third. Devil is due is fourth, but it's Holy Bull. 
hand written by Mike Smith, and he'll go on to a magnificent Matt Mile. Holy ball by five. It's close for second between... It's always good to see any kind of an athlete bounce back from a bad performance, and Holy Bull has shown the ability to do that. Beaten 25 lengths in the Fountain of Youth, he came back and won the Florida Derby. Up the track as the favorite in the Kentucky Derby, he comes back here with an eye-catching performance to win the Met Mile. The only question mark was the play spot. It went to 16-1 to one shot Cherokee run, but Holy Bull in a brilliant performance, owned and trained by Jimmy Kroll, Mike Smith up. $4, 440 and 280. Cherokee run 10 and 380. Devil is due 240. The exact is 63, 63, 40. Triple 631, $123. And the pick six was hit today. 36 winning tickets, $1,962. Consolation five of six pays $41. Ninth race is at seven furlongs, four-year-olds and up, claiming price 14 to 12. And they're off. Callisto breaks sharply, exuberant Kim is there. There goes Alex's Candy now to get the lead. Alex's Candy to the front. Cinnamon Bay now moves into second. Callisto third, exuberant Kim fourth. Toward the inside, United Prospect now coming on from fifth. Prioritizer sixth in between horses. Italian Wolf is now seventh, followed by Green Thoughts and Peace One. And then it's sailing on a prayer. Eastern Brave is the trailer. The opening quarter was a sharp 22 and three-fifths seconds set by Alex's Candy. Callisto and Cinnamon Bay in pursuit second and third. Exuberant Kim fourth on the outside. United Prospect tailing off in the fifth. Sailing on a prayer now, beginning to hit his best stride and move swiftly on the outside. Then it's Prioritizer, Green Thoughts, Italian Wolf, and Peace One. Eastern Brave still at the back, but it's still like Alex's Candy up front. A half mile in 45 and two-fifths seconds. Alex's Candy comes roaring off the turn with a three-length lead. Callisto second, exuberant Kim third. Sailing on a prayer, has moved into fourth, but floated wide into the stretch. Cinnamon Bay is back to fifth. Then Prioritizer and United Prospect. This Candy streaking past the eighth, put the two-and-a-half length lead. Callisto now second on the outside. Sailing on a prayer is now third. Prioritizer's coming on through between horses. Alex's Candy still in front. Callisto up Final lunge as they come down to the line. Alex's Candy holds. Wins by a Alex's Candy does hold on to win the ninth for Ingrid and Pete Ferriola. Michelle Luttrell aboard. 840 $463. Callisto, $643.20. Sailing on a prayer, $280. The consolation double, True Dutch, was a late scratch. The con 612, base 520, 6 and 1, 2360. The exacta in the ninth, 111, 4820, triple 111, 9, 151 dollars. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. The Hollywood Turf Cup, Hollywood Turf Handicap was our 10th race. The simulcast, it was won by Grand Flotilla, paying $37.20, $9.340. The NBN, 28210, Blues Traveler, 320. The exacta 1 2, 64 60, triple 127, $628. You can catch the Hollywood Turf Handicap on tomorrow night's Inside Racing program. We need a, a clock giveaway, I think, around here. Anyway, as far as the scratches for tomorrow, nothing in races 1, 2, and 3. Fourth race, take out 11, Shelter Bay, 18 here, and 19, Dance and Do. Fifth race, scratch the 7, Continuous Chant, and the 14, Rajah's Image. Nothing in 6 and 7. Eighth race, take out the 9, Crandall. Ninth race, take out 16, She's is Equal. Those, of course, the early scratches for this Wednesday. That's it. A good day weekend here at Belmont. Hope to see you later this week. Good night. $50,000 Oaklawn Park event in the Midwest. Out West, Lady Blessington won the $100,000 Grade 3 Buena Vista at Santa Anita. And in the East, Santa Catalina equaled the Grade 3 Shirley Jones handicap mark in winning this $100,000 Gulfstream Park event. From 23 runners this season, eight already have won or placed in stakes races, all but one of them graded. Team Valor ships 800-734-60. Team Valor, America's racing stable. Here at Belmont Park, the big Memorial Day weekend began on Saturday with the Grade 3 Rosebend Handicap. A sprint at six furlongs, three-year-olds and up. Here's Tom Durkin with the call. They're off. 
Swamp King breaks sharply, so does Demolute Demashoot. In between horses, Boom Towner is there. Tough heart with speed on the outside. Up the back stretch, Demolute Demashoot and Swamp King going at it head to head. Tough heart right there running in third. Boom Towner takes to the rail racing in fourth. The last crusade in tight and behind Boom Towner. Boundary is racing on the outside, now moving into fifth. One song moves up into sixth position, a quarter, 22 and two. At the back are Chief Desire and Cody's Key. Bird on the wire is the trailer, but he's revving up on the far outside. They're moving toward the top of the stretch. It's been Demolute, Demashoot, and Swamp King dueling head-to-head -head the entire way. Tough Heart's been in close attendance. Boundary is poised on the outside fourth. Boom Towner down on the rail, running in fifth position. One song is six wide. Bird on the wire is seven wide. The field is at the top of the stretch. Six of them coming to mid-stretch together, and Boundary is emerging from the pack with the lead. Bird on the wire is there on the far outside. Chief Desire is coming on in between horses. Boundary in front. Chief Desire. Bird on the wire on the far outside. One song. Demolute. Demoshoot. Boundary bounding home to win the road. Coming out of the pack with a sudden burst of energy in this field of very good sprinters and a good solid field is the undefeated boundary with John Velasquez. Now five for five lifetime. Boundary, son of Danzig, wins the Rose Ben handicap. Chief Desire will hold on for the play spot over Bird on the Wire. Bird on the Wire making his first start of 1994. But it is Boundary, Billy Mott, John Velasquez winning the Rose Ben handicap at seven. We'll stay at Belmont for grade two Peter Pan stakes. This for three-year-olds, a mile and a furlong the distance. Here again, Tom Durkin. They're in the gate. And they're off. Ulysses going directly for the lead. Abel Buck is also away quickly. Gash with good speed toward the inside. Twining taken back into fourth. And Lahent will be the early trailer. Gash taking the lead. It's Gash in front. Robbie Davis trying to throttle that speed. As that happens, Abel Buck comes on by. Abel Buck and now head to head. The opening in 23 seconds flat. Ulysses is just off the pace. Twining has clear running on the far outside. Quining in close attendance to the pace. And Lahent still trailing the field five lengths from the front. Gash the leader. Abel Buck right there at his neck. On the outside, Ulysses, and farthest out into the track is Twining Lahint in behind that group. They've run a half here in a sprightly 45 and 3. Abel Buck in front, Gash right there with them. Those two continue to duel. And the favorite, Twining, is right there with the brisk pace on the outside third. Ulysses is there as well. And Lahint only three lengths from the lead. Gash by ahead, Abel Buck right there. Santos making a move now with Twining on the outside. Ulysses is in behind the front runners, and Lahint beginning to pick it up now toward the rail. They're moving toward the top of the stretch, and Twining has taken command. It's Twining in front by a length. Gash is second, and Lahint in cramped quarters toward the inside now, and Lahint coming on through. It's Twining the leader. Gash second, Lahint toward the inside, Abel Buck. Ulysses has retreated to fifth in mid-stretch. The entries 1-2 with Twining opening up here. Twining by five as they come down to the final 16th. Lahint toward the inside and Twining in a runaway today. Another eye-catching performance. Little more than an exhibition five. race is uh, Twining. Another undefeated horse, same as Boundary, but this one is a young, late-developing three-year-old Scotty Schulhofer thinking Travers down the line. That is correct. Twining also now five for five lifetime. He is a son of 49er and a very easy win here in the Peter Pan for Scotty Schulhofer and Jose Santos. Looks like Dwyer here at Belmont, then the Jim Dandy up at Saratoga, followed by the Travers. But Twining, a good, late-developing three-year-old. He wins the Peter Pan. Uh, Lahint was second, and Gash finished third, 149 the final time. We'll stay with three-year-olds, but we'll go to Garden State Park this closing night at the Jersey Track. This is the Grade 2 Jersey Derby. Three-year-olds on the turf at a mile and a sixteenth. And here's Larry Letterman's call. And they're off in the 50th New Jersey Derby. Answering the call the best is Mr. Angel in the two path. On the inside, Honorable Flight came out smoothly as well. Here comes the Illinois Derby winner, Rustic Light, and the two highweights are almost on even terms by the stands the first time. A two-length break, three wide is Jack Apollo. Then in between rivals is Manila Man on the inside at Honorable Flight. 
Then we move back another length. A little rank there is that Warren Me now moves closer to the inside. Wide into the turn is Powerful Patch. Another three and a half length break to Seattle Rob, who's saving ground. On the outside of that one is Alleged Impression and have to climb out of last, Zuno Star. They went the first quarter on the turf course in 23 and a fifth. They moved to the back stretch, ensconced on the lead, Mr. Angel dictating a nice pace, leading it a length and a half. Rustic Light eyes the leader in second, two lengths to Jack Apollo. Warren Me now edges a little bit closer. On the inside, Manila Man is nestled in nicely. Then remaining very, very wide is Powerful Patch, who's straining. On the inside is Honorable Flight, followed on the outside only a half a length. And beginning to pick it up slightly is alleged impression. Zuno Star is going to need room and having trouble keeping up is Seattle Rob. They went a half in 47, three quarters and 11 and three. Here on the turn and Mr. Angel now controlling it a length and a half. Warren Me took his best shot. Rustic Light was in contention and is now falling out of it. They're into the home stretch of the 50th New Jersey Derby. McCauley's asking everything from Mr. Angel and standing his ground three quarters of a length. Zuno Star from nowhere has made a big run and Mr. Angel cannot end. Zuno Star and Zuno Star is beginning to widen on the field and putting in a headline performance in a page one race in Zuno Star to take one of our sponsors, Team Valor, about to take home the Jersey Derby with Mike Smith and Zuno Star. It's on the turf now, but remember, this is the race where Spend a Buck passed up the Preakness to get the big bonus. Things have sure changed. They certainly have, and uh, Zuno Star wins this one on the grass in 143 and 4 going from last to first mark hennig mike smith combined seattle rob was second a dead heat for third between warn me and the two to one favorite mr angel we'll stay on the grass but go out west to hollywood park for the grade three honeymoon handicap three-year-old fillies at a mile and a sixteenth here's trevor denman's call for the honeymoon handicap sent on their way to a perfect beginning. Work the crowd from the outside gate is going straight to the lead and Magical Avi gets up second. Danza Reggio, the grey, is right there too. Mally Star is settling down in fourth and fancy and fabulous in the red colours. Fifth, five off the leader who's going a good face up front. Then we come back to Baby Diamonds, third last. Dancing Mirage races on the outside of her and Rustica Ridge is last. Nine lengths off the leaders. They run to the three-quarter pole and Chris McCarran has worked the crowd, taking them along just over a length. Magical Avis racing on the outside of Danza Reggio in second and third. Then we come back to Mally Star, fourth, five off the leaders. Fancy and Fabulous up alongside of her. On the extreme outside is Dancing Mirage in the sixth spot, six lengths off the leaders. Another three back to Baby Diamonds and Rustica Ridge is trailing. They run to the half-mile pole in the honeymoon and work the crowd. Nice and relaxed out here. Leads them three parts of a length to Magical Avi. Down at the rail comes Danza Reggio, and up alongside of her is Mally Star. Fancy and Fabulous is fifth. Four and a half off that leader. Then we come back to Dancing Mirage, who's having to be sent along now. Dancing Mirage got to pick it up from there. Baby Diamonds down at the rail, and then Rustica Reg. They get to the top of the lane and work the crowd as Finding More on the lead. Work the crowd kicks on for home by two to Magical Avi, Mally Star in the white, down at the rail as Danza Reggio and then Fancy and Fabulous they run for home and work the crowd has sprinted away from them and work the crowd coming through the lane in a super impressive run, look at this daughter of political ambition, spread eagle the field it's work the crowd couldn't be more impressive, wins it by seven Mally she wins Star like a two to five eight. shot does work the crowd with Chris McCarron but she's eight to one, California bred from beating her own kind moves into open, wins for fun. First graded stakes win for Work the Crowd under Chris McCarron. Uh, she's trained by Greg Kilchrist, goes wire to wire, wins off by eight lengths at eight to one odds, paying $18. Work the Crowd the winner. Mally Star was second. Fancy and Fabulous third. And yes, a mile and a 16th on the turf in 139 and three. We'll stay at Hollywood Park for Sunday's grade two Hawthorne handicap this race lost a lot of its luster uh, when Hollywood Wildcat uh, was scratched. Hollywood Wildcat won the Breeders' Cup Distaff last year. Scratched early in the day on Sunday. That left just a field of four in the Hawthorne Handicap. Field for the Hawthorne Handicap sent on their way. The four runners came out as one. 
On the inside, and Destine has been taken off to the early lead. Potra D is right up alongside of her, though. Listening behind that comes Likeable Style. Forced to go just a little wide into the turn, and Golden Clear in close contact today is only two and a half off the leaders. Four runners bunched together as they run to the three-quarter pole. Chris McCarran has the favourite and Destine leading them by half a length with Potra D breathing down her neck in second and Golden Clare scrapes the paint right there third. Likeable style at the back fourth but just two lengths off this leader. Onto the back stretch they go, and Golden Clare, different tactics from last time, showing good speed today and keeping the pressure on Andestine up front. Potredy on the outside third, and Likeable Style just pulling her way along in fourth. Still two and a half lengths, covers all four runners. It's a tight one as they run to the half mile pole, and Destine in front by a neck. Golden Clare at the rail, and Potredy right up alongside of her, and Likeable Style just going along at the back, only two lengths off the leader. No change as they run to the 3 8 pole. Golden Clear, though, starts to be asked to keep up down at the rail now. And Destine between them. Potredy on the outside. They haven't had a breather throughout. And Likeable Style is now going to pick her spot. It's going to have to. She's going to have to go around the others. A quarter of a mile to run. Potredy with a big white face comes to take on the favourite. And Destine. Golden Clear starting to weaken at the rail. Likeable Style's got a kick in on the outside. They run for home. Potredy with a white face going on for it. Here comes Likeable Style on the outside to take her on. Golden Clare and Andestine, the four of them in a straight line as they come for home. Golden Clare down at the rail, likeable style on the outside. And Golden Clare has got up to win it from likeable style. And Destine the good news is they got a decent race out of it. The bad news is people are afraid to enter against the big horse. Then the big horse scratches and the track is left with a big purse and a small field. But if you got the winner, who cares? That's right. Four horse field, Golden Clare who had won a stake in her last start, comes back and wins again, goes off at seven to two odds, wins the Hawthorne for trainer Darrell Vienna and a jockey Kent DeSormo. Golden Clare winning this one, likable style second. The big favorite, three to five, and Destine was third. The final time, 141 and two. And those are just a few of the races we've got to show you from this past weekend. There are more to come, including the big one here at Belmont, and really the big one nationally, the Metropolitan Handicap. And John's going to stay here, lay those in later in the day before he does the daily show for today. So you'll get the Metropolitan, you get the race out of Hollywood, and something from the National Best 7. We're not taking it, but we're getting the picture. That's right. That is one advantage. We're <laughs> able to look at the races that are involved in there and perhaps use a few for this show. Okay, John will be back with those races in a minute. This is it. Yep, June 13th marks the opening of final two-year-olds in training sale for 1994. Your final opportunity to bid and buy a two-year-old in training who may be just a few weeks from racing and winning. Buyers will have hundreds to select from and all can be seen under tack on the OBS regulation mile race track. So be in Ocala, Florida for the Monday, June 13th sale of two-year-olds in training. You will get more for your money, and that's what winning's all about. You're out here, then here, but can't get there. How do you break through the barriers and get closer to the Mets? Simple. Watch the show that takes you inside the Mets. Modell's Inside Pitch, Fridays on Sports Channel. This week, check out Sports Channel. Wednesday, the Mets wrap up their series with the visiting Rockies. Thursday, Rusty Staub serves up great baseball talk and much more at the plate. Mets baseball and at the plate, this week only on Sports Channel. The week's action for New York Red showed that early bloomers among the state's two-year-old fillies of last year have not lost their form. The Bowery Stakes for three-year-old fillies was taken by Windbound Farms. She rides tonight who came out last June and won her first start. And the filly who finished second, Sam's in control, also broke her maiden in her debut as a juvenile last June. She rides tonight, who was bred by Milford Farm, won the Mohawk last year, and is graded stakes placed at both two and three. She has won over $150,000. Tonight we pay our last farm visit of the breeding season, and what a timely one it is 
who were going to the New York Stallion Station just south of Albany, where the hottest stallion in America resides. New York Stallion Station is home to Cormoran, who has been one of New York's leading sires for years and who this year tops all active sires in North America. That's because Cormorant is having an absolutely sensational year with his Kentucky-bred son, Gopher Jin, winner of the Kentucky Derby and runner-up in the Preakness. Gopher Jin is one of more than 30 stakes winners sired by Cormorant. They also include Mr. Angel, who finished third in the Jersey Derby, and 1992 Eclipse winner, Saratoga Dew. Staying with the classic connection, now ready for his third year at the New York Stallion Station, is champion Go and Go, the only American classic winner ever to retire to stud in New York directly from the racetrack. Winner of the Belmont Stakes in a sensational performance over unbridled and 36 red, Go and Go is also an outstanding juvenile with plenty of speed, winning stakes in Europe at seven furlongs and then shipping to this country to win the Laurel Futurity on the dirt. His sire was one of Northern Dancer's best Myler sons, and his dam is a half-sister to the brilliant Twilight Agenda. His first yearlings sell this year. Owned and operated by veterinarian Jerry Belinsky, the New York Stallion Station is a full-service facility conveniently located in the heart of the Hudson Valley's horse country. Why not plan to stop by soon? Promotional consideration provided by the beautiful Luna Restaurant, affordably priced and conveniently located across from Belmont Park. The Luna offers the finest in continental Neapolitan cuisine. Find out today why the Luna is New York's best-kept dining secret. Luna Restaurant is our new sponsor, and it couldn't be any more conveniently located right out the uh, main gate at Belmont, right across the street on Hempstead Turnpike. And if you're there, you could see a racing personality or two, or perhaps somebody just like RV Pack. Anyway, it's a good place. Believe me, check it out if you can. We've got some more races to bring you. Races from Monday Memorial Day. We'll begin at Arlington International with the Washington Park Handicap. This is a grade two on the main track at a mile and an eighth. And here's Kurt Becker with the call. And they're off. Hanson, Jake, Brother, Brown, Antrim, Road, Recoup, the cash showing speed, then Nelson, Forever, Whirl on the far outside. He equals MC squared out, running seven lengths from the lead. Valley crossing to his inside. Then Z Ruler, very own next to last. Powerful punch at the back is running 12 lengths from the early lead of Brother Brown, who's on the lead by a length and a half to recoup the cash in second. Antrim Road is placed forwardly third, two lengths from the front. Forever, Whirl is moving three wide off the first turn. He's up into third by a half length. Nantrim Road back to fourth by three quarters of a length. And then Nelson, a gap of three and a half off him to E equals MC squared up the back stretch. And after that is Danson, Jake, Z Ruler. And further back, Valley Crossing is running a good 15 lengths from the front. Powerful punch, then Barry on the trailer. Everyone chasing Brother Brown recoup the cash. His three quarters of a length away in second. Antrim Road stays close to the inside third. He's two lengths from the lead. And Forever World is flanking him in fourth, three from the front. Then a gap of four to E equals MC squared. Z Ruler is right behind that one. Field working past the 3-8 pole. And Brother Brown has the lead a half length. Recoup the cash. And Forever World are moving to his outside. And they come into contention. Antrim Road is looking for running room. He's fourth, two lengths from the lead. Top of the stretch. And Brother Brown is under assault. Forever World recoup the cash. Drum Road is seeking room. He's desperate. He equals MC squared. It's flying late and powerful punch late run. But Brother Brown may be too strong for this field. He's got the lead by three. He equals MC squared. You can't find a more consistent horse in racing anywhere than Brother Brown. He's making here his 19th career start. This is his 14th victory. Goes to the front and stays there, getting the victory as the favorite under jockey Pat Day. Brother Brown, the even money favorite, wins the Washington Park handicap in 149 and three. E equals MC squared was second. Antrim Road finished third. Out west we go now to Hollywood Park for the grade one Hollywood turf handicap. A half a million dollars up for grabs. This is at a mile and a quarter on the turf. Here's Trevor Denman's call.
Hill for the Hollywood Turf Handicap sent on their way. They all came out smoothly. The tender track in the orange sleeves goes straight to the lead. On the outside, Blues Traveler and Ah Kong on the grandstand side runs up to join them. Marshall Line, the white cap is right there too. And down at the rail comes Missile. They've been followed by Navarone. BNBN's been taken back today, a little further back than normal. He's about six off the leader. And Grand Flotilla brings up the rear. Past the stands first time round. And Ah Kong going to go out and make his own pace. He's not in any hurry out here. Got his ears break going along easily as Ah Kong. Missile is down at the rail. Blues Traveler now between those two. Marshall R settled down in the fourth position. The tender track is fifth. Four lengths off the leaders. Here's BNBN racing in six. He's five and a half off that leader. A length and a half back to Navarone and Grand Flotilla brings up the rear. Seven lengths would cover the field. Onto the back stretch they go, and Blues Traveler leading them by a half a length. Not in any hurry now. Our Kong is right up alongside of him. Missile is neatly placed in the third spot, and Marshall is in fourth. The tender track fifth at the rail, four lengths off the leaders. BNBN on the extreme outside. Chris McCarran starts to edge him up just a little closer now, and there goes BNBN. He's fourth and starting to move in closer to the leaders. Grand Flotilla at the rail, and Navarone is last, seven off the leaders. Three eights to go, and they quicken the pace now as Blues Traveler kicks on for home. Our Kong goes with him. BNBN has now moved up to take third. Chris, Chris McCarran starting to ask him now. Down at the rail, Grand Flotilla is running a huge one. The gray, if he can get through, and Missile has to do better. Top of the lane, and Blues Traveler kicking on. Ah Kong, and on the outside, BNBN in the gold cap. Grand Flotilla has room at the rail, too. BNBN in the goal, but Grand Flotilla is running a huge one down at the rail. Grand Flotilla and BNBN, but Grand Flotilla is staying on the better of the two. And it's going to be Grand Flotilla and Gary Stevens to win the Hollywood Turf Handicap. BNBN Grand Flotilla wins. turns the tables on BNBN here. Uh, BNBN won the San Juan Capistrano by three quarters of a length over Grand Flotilla. But here, even as Trevor Denman pointed out, BNBN taken further back than usual. Grand Flotilla gets that inside trip under Gary Stevens, and he posts the upset in the Hollywood Turf Handicap. Grand Flotilla, trained by Janine Sahadi, ridden by Gary Stevens, wins this one. BNBN, the big favorite, has to settle for second. Blues Traveler was third. The final time, 1.59 and 1. And the big one at Belmont Park on Monday, the grade one met mile. Three rolls and up, $500,000. Here's Tom Durkin's call. And they're off. Holy Bull comes out running, and Cherokee Run is also right there. Down toward the inside, it's American Chance. Then it's Devil is Due, and on the far outside, Tinner's Way. Holy Bull has made the lead, and he opens up now by a length and a half. Tinner's Way is running in second. Blair of Trumpets now with a rush. Third on the outside. And then it's Devil is Due, who's up close to the pace. He's right there fourth in behind Holy Bull. Cherokee Run is racing in fifth. American Chance is sixth. Colonial Affair is seventh, about six lengths from the lead. Then it's Virginia Rapids, followed by Federal Funds. And five lengths back to West by West who's better than 15 from the lead. Holy Bull drilled the opening quarter in 22 and 4 fifth seconds, and he blazes the way into the far turn, leading by length. Blair of Trumpets pressing him second through a half mile of 45 seconds flat. Cherokee Run is making his run now. He's third on the outside, midway around the far turn. And here comes Devil is Due, coming on through an opening toward the inside. Virginia Rapids is rallying on the far outside. American Tinner's Way is now dropped back to sixth. The affair is down inside. He's seventh, seven lengths from the lead. And Holy Bull comes roaring off the turn, bracing for a challenge here from Cherokee Run. Cherokee Run confronts Holy Bull, and Holy Bull is digging down and is responding. And he shrugs off the challenge of Cherokee Run. Virginia Rapids is running in third. Devil is due is fourth, but it's Holy Bull hand written by Mike Smith and he'll go on to a magnificent Met Mile. Holy Bull by five. It's close for second between Devil is Due and... A sterling performance here by Holy Bull. He goes three quarters in 109 and two head to head with Cherokee Run and then he just pours it on in the last eighth of a mile, drawing off to win by better than five lengths. Holy Bull beating top older horses here. A grand performance by this three-year-old 
Uh, Jimmy Kroll owns and trains Mike Smith aboard. It is Holy Bull winning the Met Mile in 133 and 4. Cherokee Run did hold for second. Devil His Due was third. And it's good for the game that Holy Bull is back and put in that kind of a performance. We can now look for him in the next couple of months. Twining is a good three-year-old. We've got the Belmont coming up a week from Saturday. So good racing to look forward to. And hopefully next week on Monday night's Inside Racing Show, we will have the trainer of Go For Gin, Nick Zito. John Preachy will also be here to take an overall look at the Belmont Stakes, which is a week from Saturday. That's it for tonight. We'll see you next week on Inside Racing. New York itself, the play here, you've got to come, you can't have a thin skin. It's not a city that accepts mediocrity in any form. I was very fortunate. Uh, I played well. The fans reacted very positively to me. I get an opportunity in the booth to be a manager. I mean, I played for 23 years. I studied a lot of details. I get the real break of managing without having to have the consequences. Rusty Staub caters to baseball fans this summer when he serves up a menu of great guests. One of the better things that came out of the At The Play show, you get some great friendships out of it. Sports Channel turns up the heat in June. Bobby Bow and the Mets slug it out with National League rivals in 18 games. At the plate with Rusty Staub serves up great baseball talk. Dynamets pitches baseball fun for the entire family. Catch the U.S. prepping for the World Cup on the World Series of Soccer. Summer Racing 94 is the place to be for live harness racing from Yonkers. And get same-day thoroughbred racing results from Belmont. It's all for you in June on Sports Channel. Thursday, join Rusty Staub for great baseball talk and more. The season premiere of At the Plate, Thursday at 10, only on Sports Channel. I'm Jenny and welcome to Modell's Dynamets, the baseball show just for kids. As you can see, we're not in Kansas anymore. Just a little movie humor to start things off. <laughs> this week we're visiting the ultimate movie theme park, Universal Studios, Florida. So don't touch that dial, Modell's Dynamets is just getting started.
at Bible's Playland, and we were just playing a little catch. You know, catching a ball can be very easy once you get used to it. But before you can learn how to catch, you have to get over your fear of the ball. Bible, are you afraid of the ball? Oh, it's nothing to be ashamed of. We're all afraid at first. So this week on Buddy's Clinic, we're going to learn some catching drills. And that way, we can improve our skills and gain confidence. Don't worry about it, Fievel. Everyone's afraid of the ball when they first start playing catch. Hi, this is Bud Harrelson, and welcome to Buddy's Clinic. You know why we do that? We do that because we really don't watch the ball. We're afraid of it, and I was afraid of it at nine years old. Most players are afraid of it. And even after 15 years of playing, I had respect for the ball, not a great amount of fear. This is what you look like when you're trying to catch the beginning. Head, you close your eyes. This is what I catch with. So we want to try to center the ball as close as our eyes as possible. Our eyes are moving to the ball, not away from the ball, all right? Now the ball. The ball is, is hard. It hurts when it hits you. you. I know that. You know that. So how about when we first start playing catch with Dad or our friend for the first time, let's not use a regular baseball. Let's use a tennis ball, a rubber ball, a wiffle ball. You're learning how to catch the ball. You're not learning how to catch a baseball. First, you have to learn how to catch. And car in America. In fact, for the third year in a row, your Ford dealer has five of the 10 best-selling cars and trucks in America. Now, how can you top that? Now, get a new Ford Escort with low 2-9 financing for up to 48 months or 400 cash back. I guess the competition just doesn't stack up. See your tri-state quality Ford dealer and see for yourself. Here's the first. It's at six furlongs. It's for three-year-olds claiming price 17.5 to 15.5. Spicy High Santos, personal shopper Mojica. June's Pistol, Beckner, Master Dooley, two to one, and Michelle Luttrell. Button Man Scratch. Shaquad Chavez, Captain Moonlight, Luzzy, Full of Sauce, Leon, Midnight Idol, Ruben Hernandez. On the outside, Captain Moonlight sprints to the early lead. Spicy High on the inside is next. Midnight Idol moves up, then it's full of sauce in fourth. Personal Shopper is racing fifth between horses. Master Dooley on the outside is Shaquad, and June's Pistol is eighth as the field approaches the far turn. Captain Moonlight, the leader by a length and a half. Midnight Idol is second by a length. Spicy Hot in third. Full of sauce is right there. The quarter went in 22 and four. Then it's a gap of five to Shaquad. On the inside is personal shopper. Master Dooley is racing seventh, about 10 lengths off the front. And June's Pistol remains in eighth. They are moving for the head of the stretch. Now it's full of sauce on the outside and Captain Moonlight on the inside. Heads apart for the lead as they turn for home. Spicy High is racing third. They're at the eighth pole. Full of sauce on the outside. On the inside, Captain Moonlight coming on again as they come for the 16th pole. A late run from June's Pistol now third. Past the 16th pole. Captain Moonlight a short lead. Full of sauce on the outside. Captain Moonlight will do it by about a length. Well, it's not quite holy bull in the Met Mile, but a rebound nonetheless. Captain Moonlight, 35,000, too rich for his blood last time out after an open length maiden score. Today, a loose lead, realistically placed for 17-5, got the drop on him and lasted. It is Captain Moonlight, Wheelock, Whitney, James Binger, Lisa Lewis trains, Mike Luzzi up. 10, 624 dollars. Full of sauce, 825, 80. June's pistol, 380. Exact to seven and eight, 99, 60. Here's the second, it's out a mile. Maiden fillies and mares, three and up. Alan Jerkins entry, Great Lady Mary Luttrell, Lady Ice Cubes, Georgina Frost. Wee Jiner, Nelson, Jade Bird, one to two, and Jerry Bailey. Kelby is out, Faith and Dreams Macaulay, All-Star Dancer Santos, Tap Teragram Todd Beckner. Going for the lead is Great Lady Mary. The between horses is Faith and Dreams. Down on the inside, Wee Jiner with uh, Jade Bird. Also right there is Tap Terra Graham Todd as the field moves down the backstretch. Great Lady Mary with the lead by about a length. 
Between horses, Jade Bird is now second on the inside. We Giner on the outside is Tap Terra Graham Todd. Then a gap of four to All Star Dancer, followed by Faith in Dreams and Lady Ice Cubes is seventh. The first quarter in 22 and four. On the outside is Great Lady Mary. On the inside, Bird. They're now heads apart. A length and a half to tap Terra Graham Todd in third as they move around the far turn, the half mile in 46 and 1. Jade Bird on the inside is short lead. Great Lady Mary on the outside is second. And tap Terra Graham Todd now swings three wide. A gap of seven now to Lady Ice Cubes now in fourth. Then farther back, all-star dancer, Faith in Dreams. They're moving for the head of the stretch. And it's Tap Terra Graham Todd on the outside and Jade Bird on the inside. Three quarters, 111 and three. They're in the stretch. Tap Terra Graham Todd on the outside is short lead. Jade Bird on the inside is second. Farther back, it's Lady Ice Cubes in third. Jade Bird. A bit ranked there as they came through the stretch. Tap Terra Graham Todd, the leader now by two and a half. Jade Bird will be second. Well, the mad bomber from OTB gets stung in here, John. This horse was one to nine through most of the betting. You think at the eighth pole, he ran over there and said, I said, place it on Jade Bird. In any event, Tap Terra Graham Todd, the lone four-year-old in the field, works on a nice trip, does Dale Beckner behind dueling leaders and survives. You could call it Tap Terra Graham Todd, or you could call her Pat Margaret Dot Backwards. She's the winner any way you pronounce her name. AY Line Stable Owns, Bobby Reinecker Trains, Dale Beckner up. 1440, 340, 210. Jade Bird, 240, 210. Lady Ice Cubes, 210. Exact is 7 3, 27 20. The Quinella is 7 40. Early double, 7 and 7, 64 60. On to the third, five and a half furlongs, two year old maiden fillies. Skippy Shafoff with a trio. Stately Bet Maple, forever proud John Velasquez. Finito, Frank Alvarado. Nice Sight, Luzzy, Lockstepper, Mojica. Cuesta, Mike Smith. Kathy's Attitude, Jose Santos. Jovial Joust, Bailey. Derry Nane, Davis. Kathy's attitude, Jovial Joust on the outside going for the lead. Nice Sight is next in third. Then Stately Bet in fourth. Finito is fifth. Then it's Forever Proud Racing sixth. Derry Nane is seventh. Followed by Lux Stepper in eighth. And Cuesta is ninth. A half mile to run. Nice Sight on the inside is short lead. Kathy's attitude between horses second. Jovial Joust on the outside is third. It's a gap of six to Derry Nain, who has now gotten a little closer in fourth. On the inside is Stately Bet in fifth. They're moving for the head of the stretch. Three of them across the track. Nice Sight between horses. Kathy's attitude on the outside. Jovial Joust. And farther back is Derry Nane there in the stretch. Nice side on the inside, still with a short lead. Jovial Joust on the outside coming on. Jovial Joust now puts ahead in front. Nice side is next. Kathy's attitude back into third. Derry Nane on the outside in fourth and stately bet. They're coming for the line. It's going to be tight on the inside. Nice side on the outside. Jovial Joust heads apart as they hit the line. John, the big sting, part two. Kathy's attitude has showed improvement last time in blinkers behind a well-meant filly. Shows no improvement today. Heavy action, but the late action came to the first-timers, Nice Sight and Derry Nane. And even though Nice Sight may eventually be turf meant, she was meant well enough today. And she was good enough to win here, holding off Jovial Joust. It's Nice Sight. Owned by the Sulamar Stable, trained by Phil Johnson, Mike Luzzi up 966 and 440. Jovial Joust, $11.26. Derry Nane, $3.80. Exact at $2.6, $115.80. On to the turf, the widener for the fourth, a mile and a sixteenth. Phillies and mares, four and up, claiming price, $35,000. Richie DeStasio's entry, Azarakat Migliori, a demon a day, Samin. Obligated Sue is out. Gin Joint Chavez, My Vote Leon, New York Issue Alvarado, X Facto Crone, Something Scandalous Smith, Hello Hannah Frost, Madeline's Affair Lovato, Scratch Titans Bell, Pretty Firm Luttrell, Scratch the Rest. Zero. X Facto was away slowly from the gate, spotting the field about 10 lengths. 
Going for the lead on the outside is Azarakat. Azarakat has the lead by a length and a half. Madeline's Affair is racing second, and Something Scandalous is third. Then it's a gap of three to New York Issue, a demon a day, and my heads apart. Gin Joint, now seventh. Hello Hannah is eighth. Pretty firm in ninth, and a gap of about eight to X Facto in tenth. The quarter went in 23 seconds. They're down the back stretch. As a racket on the inside, a short lead. Madeline's Affair on the outside is second by six. Something Scandalous is racing third by three lengths. Then it's a demon a day, and my vote heads apart fourth and fifth. Jin Join is sixth, then a New York issue. A gap of four to pretty firm. Hello, Hannah. Far back is X Facto. The half went in 46 and one. Around the far turn, Crackett has the lead by a half length. Madeline's Affair is second by five. Then something scandalous in third. A gap of two to a demon a day. Two more to my vote. Then it's Gin Joint. They're moving for the head of the stretch. As the racket has the lead now by three lengths as they come for the head of the stretch. It's as a racket by three. Madeline's Affair dropping back. A demon a day gains ground on the outside. A demon a day now gains on as a racket as they come for the eighth pole. As a racket still with the lead. A demon a day on the outside. Here comes a late run from Pretty Firm. They're past the 16th pole. On the outside is a demon a day. On the inside, as a racket. Pretty Firm with a late run. They're coming for the line. It's going to be tight. As a racket coming back in a demon a day. The entry Optimum That's use of an entry here as a racket on the pace battling Madeline's affair into defeat and actually stays very gamely behind her perfect trip winning mate a demon a day in the meantime pretty firm and also New York issue came flying home too late a, a pretty firm will round out the exacta but the winner is a demon a day Ivor Malmstrom Richie Destagio Jean-Luc Samin 567 and 420 as a racket second pays the same pretty firm 560 the Exacta 111, $60.40. The Quinella, $34.80. Ninety miles from New York City, there's an entire world like you've never seen before. The Concord Resort Hotel, Championship Golf, Indoor and Outdoor Tennis, Live Entertainment with the biggest names in show business. A million activities just for the kids, and much, much more. So leave your world behind and lose yourself in ours for a while. The Concord Resort Hotel. For reservations, call 1-800-CONCORD. New York itself, the play here. You've got to come. You can't have a thin skin. It's not a city that accepts mediocrity in any form. I was very fortunate. Uh, I played well. The fans reacted very positively to me. I get an opportunity in the booth to be a manager. I mean, I played for 23 years. I studied a lot of details. I get the real break of managing without having to have the consequences. Rusty Staub caters to baseball fans this summer when he serves up a menu of great guests. One of the better things that came out of the At The Play show, you get some great friendships out of it. Here's the fifth race. It's at six furlongs. This is for New York Red Maidens, three and up. Raising a warrior was away slowly. Going for the lead is in-flight movie and love limited. On the outside, now I hope in third. Limited war is fourth. And then it's 40 shades of green in a fifth. Moving up between horses is who's on first. Sam Sarah Star is right there. Then we come back to Doubtful Dead and Manipulator. Then it's Wacky Road, followed by Sir Noble. And then Ella Cat's Banner. Farther back is Thor Thors, and way back is Raising a Warrior in 14. Around the far turn, in-flight movie towards the inside. There goes Limited War on the outside, and between those two is Love Limited. Those three at the head of the stretch. Limited War on the outside now takes the lead. In-flight movie is second. Love Limited is third. Then the favorite, who's on first, coming for the eighth pole. Limited War has the lead now by five lengths. 
who's on first. Here comes Ellicott's Banner with a late run, passing the 16th pole. It's Limited War in front. Ellicott's Banner now second. Limited War in a big upset here at 30 to 1. Ellicott's who's on Banner. first? I don't know. Third place. This is, uh, John, part three of the uh, Mad Bomber saga today, going down to defeat. In the meantime, a very smart-looking debut here. David Whiteley trained first-timer. Limited War, uh, who was also announced a gelding, and incidentally completing this rather large exacta, is a horse who trip handicappers may remember from his two-year-old season, also a first-time gelding. Hello, Cat's Banner, first-time gelding, also the blinkers off from his uh, race last year, but the winner and a big price, Limited War, Happy Hill Farm, David Whiteley, Craig Perrette, 6580, 3460-1080. Hello Cat's Banner, 15 and 760. Who's on first? The favorite, $3. Exacta 138, 967.20. On to the sixth. It's seven furlongs, three-year-old Phillies, claiming price 50 to 45. Skip one, Bailey, May Ropido, Chavez. Heather's Apparel, Luzzy, Velaco, Alvarado. Don Juan's gal, Davis, Confederate flag, Beckner, country redneck, Luttrell, exquisite star, Scratched, lifeboat, Julie Crone. They're up. Confederate flag goes for the lead. Heather's Apparel is next on the inside. Skip one, May Rupido is right there as the field moves down the back stretch. May Rupido between horses now takes the lead. Skip one at the rail in second. Confederate flag is third. Don Juan's girl is fourth. On the outside is Lifeboat Racing fifth. Heather's Apparel is now sixth. Then it's Country Redneck in seventh. And farther back to Balaco in eighth. The quarter in 23 seconds into the far turn. May Rupido on the inside is short lead. Confederate flag is second by a length. Then skip one. On the inside, and Don Juan's girl on the outside, headed in fourth. Lifeboat is Rafe. The field is now midway around the turn. The half mile in 46 and three. May Rupido on the inside, Confederate flag on the outside. Their heads apart. Skip one is third. On the outside is Lifeboat in fourth. As they hit the head of the stretch, Confederate flag now takes the lead. It's Confederate flag by about a length. Lifeboat is next on the far outside. Here comes May Ropido again. On the inside, it's Skip One gaining ground. They're coming for the 16th pole. Heather's Apparel is on the outside. Skip One is on the inside. Then Confederate flag. Skip One with a late run on the inside. Skip One to win it. Heather's Apparel second. Confederate flag third. John, this looked like one of those wide open races on paper where, you know, a trip in good position was going to work it out. And that's exactly what happened here as Jerry Bailey worked himself out of Real good trip from the rail going seven eighths aboard Skip One, who ran very well in this condition two races back. And that time she was chased home by Heather's apparel. She's going to chase her home again. Coupled horses, as they would say. Skip One, Seymour Cone, Red Terrell, Jerry Bailey, 980, 520, 360. Heather's apparel, 680, 380. Confederate flag, 380. Exact is 1 3, 56, 60. Here's the seventh. It's a sprint, six furlongs, three-year-olds and up, which have never won a race other than maiden claiming or starter. Groucho Gaucho Rydowski, famous fan, Julie Crone, Scratch Sand Kicker, Scratch Mr. Tyler. Bermuda Cedar, McCauley, Catch This Luzzy, Comanche Trail, Bailey, Medical Pro, Michelle Luttrell. Vera. Medical Pro on the extreme outside goes for the lead. Comanche Trail is racing second. Famous Fan in third. Bermuda Cedar is fourth. And Groucho Gaucho in fifth. And a gap of five to catch this in sixth. The leader is Medical Pro as the field moves into the far turn. Comanche Trail just a half length off of it. Then it's a gap of six to Bermuda Cedar followed by Famous Fan, and then Groucho Gaucho, and catch this. The quarter, 22 and two. The leader is Medical Pro by a half length. Comanche Trail on the outside is second. It's still seven lengths to Bermuda Cedar. Then Famous Fan, they're at the head of the stretch. The half mile in 45 and one. There goes Comanche Trail on the outside. Comanche Trail now takes the lead. Medical Pro on the inside is second. Famous Fan in the middle of the racetrack. Then it's Bermuda Cedar past the eighth pole. 
Comanche Trail in front now by th Medical Pro is second and gaining on the outside in third. They come for the line. Comanche Trail will do it. And it's tight for second between Medical Pro and Famous Comanche Man. Trail was part of a real hot base when Numerous won the Derby trial and understandably tired. But he ships into New York. We're turning back to three quarters of a mile and the conditions read non-winners of one. Well, Jerry Bailey works out another good trip here. The fast pace of Medical Pro. Much he had in reserve, but he had more than enough to take the measure of these. This is a son of Copeland, Comanche Trail for William Young, D. Wayne Lucas, Jerry Bailey, two in a row. 380, 280, 240. Medical Pro did hold for second, 360, 260. Famous Fan, 280. 11, 8, 15, 40. Pick 13, 1, 7, $950. Racing Form Thoroughbred Action, brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, the best friend a handicapper could have. Andy Beyer has done it again. In Beyer on Speed, America's leading horse racing authority shows the way with his most advanced strategies for winning at the track. Blending colorful stories with incisive instruction, Beyer on Speed covers the most advanced subjects, recommending aggressive ways to win with exotic wagers. For serious students and casual bettors alike, Beyer on Speed is sure to become a classic. Don't miss your big payoff. Visit your local bookseller today. I've discovered a great new way to buy quality American-made bedding at wholesale prices. Just call 1-800-USA-SLEEP. 1-800-USA-SLEEP will deliver any size and style bedding at the lowest factory direct price. You can save hundreds of dollars on twin, full, queen, and king size sets in soft, medium, and extra firm models, direct from the factory to you. Call now, 1-800-USA-SLEEP. 1-800-USA-SLEEP. Guests on tonight receive a complimentary dinner for the beautiful Luna restaurant. Affordably priced, conveniently located across from Belmont Park, the Luna offers the continental Neapolitan. Find out today why the Luna is New York's best kept dining secret. Geez, Harvey's off today. When to where he's eating tonight? How about uh, Golden Arches R Us? How about that one? <laughs> Could very well be. Here's the eighth race on the Widener. Mile and a 16th. Phillies and Mares three and up, which have never won two races. Outhart Velasquez. Bet a million bucks. Venetian Red Bailey. Stop the Croquet Luttrell. Lady Affirm Chavez. Miss Carmela Frost. Storm in Sight. Even Money Craig Perrette. Last Blood Smith. Medieval Tina Santos. Going for the lead is the last blood on the outside is our secret heart in second. Stop the Croquet is third. Medieval Tina on the out fourth. Lady affirmed. Venetian Red heads apart. And then we come back to Storm in Sight in seventh and Miss Carmella is eighth. They straighten away and move down the back stretch and last blood has the lead by a length and a half. The first quarter went in 24 and two. Stop the Croquet is racing second by a length. Venetian Red on the inside in third. On the outside is Medieval Tina. Farther out is Lady Affirmed. Then it's our Secret Heart, followed by Miss Carmella. And the favorite, Storm in Sight, is now eighth. They continue down the back stretch. Last Blood is short lead. Stop the Croquet is alongside in second. The half mile went in 48 and two. Lady Affirmed now gains on the outside. Lady Affirmed is moving into second. But the leader is Last Blood as they move around the far turn. Last Blood by a half length. Lady Affirmed on the outside is second. Now the favorite, Storm in Sight, has gained ground and moved into third. Miss Carmella also has moved up and is fourth on the inside. As the field moves forward, the head of the stretch, Last turns for home with a shoot. Lady Affirmed on the outside is second. Storm in Sight is third. Then it's Venetian Red and Miss Carmella for approaching the eighth pole. Lady Affirmed now takes the lead. Last Blood is back into second. Then it's Storm in Sight and Venetian Red. They're coming for the line. 
Lady Affirm by a length and a half. Last Blood trying to hold second. Last Blood does hold second. Tight for Bred third. both sides for grass. What a and wonderful Storm turf inside. debut this was. Lady Affirm, who was pretty much wrestled off a trotting horse pace, that went 24-2 the first quarter of a mile. That allows Last Blood to hang on for second. But look at this filly stride out. Off that slow pace, a Venetian Red uh, closed very well for third. And Lady Affirm has really done nothing wrong in her three-race career. She was easy in her debut with Saratoga. Obviously some problem there. Came back at Belmont, broke her maiden on the dirt a couple of weeks ago, right back on the turf here and wins again. Harborview Farm, Alan Jerkins, Jorge Chavez. Lady Affirm, $740, $625. Last Blood, $1680, $1140. Venetian Red, $460. The exact is $47, $177, $60. Here's the finale, seven furlongs, fillies and mares, four and up, claiming price 14 to 12. Viperist, Nelson, Memento's Lady, Chavez for the sweep. Bunny's Touch, Leon, Sweetheart, Sarah Davis. Explorette, Frost, Drama Club, Mojica, Undivided Attention, Scratch. Dolly, Mike Luzzi, Adia, Sindab, Alice Key, six to five, and Mike Smith. Founding Believer, Alvarado, Lovely Josephine Luttrell, Cut Lassie, Classy Lovato, Shady Willow, Dale Beckner, Scratch Copes Light. They're off. Momento's Lady towards the inside with a Viperist. Out on the far outside, it's Cut Lassie, Classy. Then Bunny's Touch between horses, Bounding Believer. Also moving up is Drama Club. Then on the outside is lovely Josephine, along with Alice Key. Then we come back to Sweetheart Sarah, followed by Dolly on the inside, then Adia. Next is Explorette, and Shady Willow is 13th. The quarter in 23 seconds, and Viperous has the lead now by three lengths. Memento's Lady is second, Drama Club is third, Bunny's Touch on the inside in fourth. Then between horses is Alice Key, Bounding Believer on the outside. Then a length and a half to a lovely Josephine, followed by Dolly and Explorette on the inside. The half in 47 and two. Viper is still with the lead, a length and a half. Drama Club is next, followed by Alice Key. On the inside is Memento's Lady. Dolly gains a bit between horses. Then it's Bounding Believer. They're at the head of the stretch. Viper is still in front, a short lead. Gaining ground on the outside. Here comes Alice Key. Between horses is Drama Club. Dolly looks for racing room. On the far outside is Bounding Believer. They're coming for the 16th pole. Drama Club between horses bounding believer on the outside bounding believer gets the lead dolly with a late run towards the inside bounding believer wins it dolly up for second credit gas for moshera for getting this filly to run back off the layoff although she was dropping down had a little trouble here uh, help here as you can see the number eight horse dolly was caught very badly in horses and to her credit she'll all and and just fire up big inside the third horse for the place and we don't understand why all the money on Alice Key, perhaps as John calls him or her, maybe the Mad Bomber again. Alice Key off at 6-5, to five, a little strange. Bounding Believer, Barbara Davis, Gaspar Mochera, Frank Alvarado. 17, 645, 40. Dolly, 460 and 460. Drama Club, 840. Exacta, 11, 8, $69. Late Double, 411, $86. Triple, 11, 8, 6, $726. The pick six was not hit. Carry over into tomorrow. Here are the early scratches for Thursday. In the first, take out 12, Northern Witness, 18, Class Hat, 19, Studley Do Right, and 20, Peter And. Nothing in two and three. Fourth race, scratch. Move all the way to the ninth race, scratch number nine, Pago's Whim. Here it is, pick six information for the 1st of June. New body pick six, five of six, 19 winning tickets, $720. The carryover is more than 41,000. We don't even have time for one of John's picks. That's it, John, thank you. Good night. World is waiting for soccer's World Cup tournament to begin. But you don't have to. Sports Channel presents exclusive coverage of Team USA in a prep match against Mexico. It's the USA versus Mexico. Saturday, June 4th, live on Sports Channel's new sport. Ford dealer has five of the ten best-selling cars and trucks in America. Now how can you top that? 
Now, get a new Ford Escort with low 2-9 financing for up to 48 months or 400 cash back. I guess the competition just doesn't stack up. See your Tri-State Quality Ford dealer and see for yourself. Here's the opener today. I didn't see it. Had a flat tire on the Whitestone Expressway. I'll watch you with you. Mile of 16th on the widener. Four-year-olds and up. All in for tags of $20,000, $35,000. Gary Siaka, Z. Buck Chavez, Glen Echo Sami. Turning for home. This pension fraud McCauley. Go Duck. Yaros is out. Powerboat Leon. To the twist is out. Golden Explosive Mike Smith. Political Fact Jerry Bailey. Uh, Clover City John Velasquez. Bet Hudson Grayel. They're off. Golden Explosive set out after the lead. Go Dutch has good early speed. And there goes Pension Fraud, who's up close. Making the bend into the back stretch, Golden Explosive will be the early leader. Running anxiously in front now and getting away by two and a half lengths. Pension Fraud backs off a bit, running second. Go Dutch is wrangled back into third. Political Fact is fourth in the outside. Z-Buck fifth at the rail. Glen Echo is running sixth in mid-pack, followed closely by Clover City. Bet Hudson now taking to the outside and launching a bid with better than six to run. And then it's turning for off to a sluggish beginning. And the early trailer is the gray power bolt. The leader continues to be Golden Explosive, who got the opening quarter in 23 and two-fifths seconds and still leads by a length and a half from Pension Fraud running second. And then it's Go Dutch still in hand running in third. Z-Buck toward the inside, fourth Clover City, beginning to move now fifth on the outside. They ran a half and 47 and one-fifth seconds. Golden Explosive still on an uncontested lead. Go Dutch trying to come to him now. Pension Fraud now back running in third. Here comes Glen Echo coming strongly. Fourth now on the outside. Z-Buck is fifth toward the rail. Clover City is running in sixth. Turning for home takes to the outside. He'll be forced wide into the stretch. They're still chasing Golden Explosive, who turns for home and cuts the corner by length. Glen Echo is on the attack on the far outside. Z-Buck is also coming fast. Golden Explosive still clinging desperately to the lead. Here comes Z-Buck under a vigorous Jorge Chavez to the lead. Z-Buck in front and his mate Glen Echo's now second. Turning for home is closing one on the outside. No getting to Z-Buck, who wins by two and a half. Z-Buck gets a perfect inside-out ride from Chavez and goes on to score as the favorite. Ten-year-old turning for home was off behind the field, four wide around the turn, but was along to get the place photo. This is the weirdest coincidence. The guy who sent the tow truck to fix my car said, hey, you'll be there in time to do your show and give my best to Gary Siaka. Gary is the trainer of Z-Buck. Carmine Picosia, Peter Lamantia, Jorge Chavez, and the favorite, Z-Buck, returns 520-280-340. Turning for home, the old campaign of 460-440. Glen Echo, part of the Siak entry, finishes third. The 1-2 is $29. Here's the second, a mile on the 16th. He's a maiden, fillies and mares, three and up, 35 down to 30. Dance craze, Gilberto Leon. Flyaway drive, Chavez to sweep, land Eddie Maple. Stop right here, John Velasquez, superstar J.R. Mojita. Bay Ridge Beauty, Dale Beckner, Nick Korea, Steve Radowski. They're off. Stop right here. There goes Dance Craze down toward the inside. Dance Craze to take the early lead. Stop right here. Toward the outside, it's Bay Ridge Beauty. Superstar JR is in between those two. Then farther back, Flyaway Drive is coming up the inside, followed closely by Bland. The trailer will be Nick Taria. Stretch the leader is Dance Craze by a length and a half. Pursued by Flyaway Drive Superstar JR. Stop right here. And Bland. Bay Ridge Beauty is also up close to the pace on the outside. Nick Taria continues the trail. The opening quarter went in 23 and 2 fifth seconds. Moving up the back stretch, Dance Craze off the rail and with the lead. There's room at the inside for Flyway Drive to challenge for the lead. And those two now going head to head as they move into the far turn with Bay Ridge Beauty stalking third through a half of 47 and three. Bland is kept within striking range on the inside. Stop right here, retreats to fifth. Nectaria coming up the inside. Superstar JR is now the trailer. And as they round the far turn, Flyway Drive has come on to take a clear lead 
Dance Craze has stopped suddenly, and it's Flyway Drive, the leader by two. Bland on the outside, running second. Now Nectaria has moved into third on the inside. Bayridge Beauty is fourth. Dance Craze, who led earlier, has dropped back to fifth. Then it stopped right here in Superstar JR. Off the turn and into the stretch. Flyway drives under the whip, and Bland appears on her flank, and Bland blows right by. Bland opening up. Moving away willingly by three now and by four. Flyway drive is second uh, on the outside neck. And they're coming down to the line. No doubt about this winner. Bland's, Bland's two main track routes at Gulfstream against special weight fields were enough to kill this field, and that's what happened. She completes an aluminum pad daily double. Aluminum pad daily double, weapon aluminum pad exacted, no? That's right, Nectaria came on for the exact as the rank outsider. Also with an aluminum pad on. A lot of aluminum pads here. But the winner is the favorite, Bland, Lacey F. Ranch, Angel Pennant Jr., Eddie Maple is up, 5-4-40-2-40. Nectaria, 1985-20, stop right here, 260 to show. Philadelphia Police. 8240, Cronella 3773, Racing Oddity, same price, 8240, early double, 1-3, 1120. Here's the third, six and a half furlongs, two-year-old maidens. Shapoff sending out a pair, crafty silver gray L, silver medalist Chavez. Proud code L, Prospecto are out. Testability, Jerry Bale, give you three to five. Conduit Street, Robbie Davis, Spoon Ben, Mike Smith, Visible King, Migliore. They're off. Testability and silver medalist break together. Testability to the lead. Silver medalist trying to move with him, crafty silver toward the inside. Visible King came out running fourth. Spoon Bend in behind horses, running fifth. Three lengths to Conduit Street, the trailer. Vis uh, Testability, rather, is the leader. Testability, there goes Silver Medalist and Visible King. The three of them now going at it, and it's Testability still holding on to the lead, getting away again by a length and a half. Silver Medalist and Visible King down toward the inside. Crafty Silver running in fourth, and Spoon Bend, fifth and moving now on the far outside. Conduit Street's the trailer. Off the turn and into the stretch. Testability by three. Spoon Bend is set down for the drive on the outside. Silver Medalist is in between horses. Crafty Silver down toward the rail. But it's Testability and an absolute runaway here. Jerry Bailey never moving on Testability. Took a peek back. The competition's getting even farther away. Silver Medalist... Testability worked in 47 and 1 from the gate on Sunday. It was the best work of 63 at the distance. Today she's merely simulated the work and went on to destroy this field. Testability of 3 to 5, first assay. And Copeland. Copeland's generally a very good early in their career and he's been a nice sire. For Fred Hooper. Phil Serpy's the trainer. Jerry Bailey up. Testability. Firster. Short price for a first of 320, 260-240. Silver medalist, 5360. Spoon Bend, $5 to show. The 4-1 exact is $19. On to the fourth. This is a mile over the inner turf. Three-year-olds claiming 5000 Decidedly Glory, Mohica. Special tribute, Bobby Messina. Groaning Bob, Robbie Davis. Best Aquarian, Paul Sindale. Lucky H, Chavez is aboard. Chirkin, Eddie Maple. Just Feathers, Tony Mickens. Bellingham, Diane Nelson. Dizzy Devil, John Velasquez. Mike and Chris, Gilberto Leon. Wilton Place. Ruben Hernandez. And they're off. Decidedly gory. Sent out toward the lead. But there goes Dizzy Double flashing early speed. Lucky Eight is up close early. Wilton Place is there on the outside. Making their way for the first turn. And Dizzy Double clears the field and angles over to the inside. Decidedly Glory running along in behind. On the outside, Lucky Eight right up there with the pacemakers running in third position. And Best Aquarian is fourth in cramped quarters and down. Now back running in fifth position. Wilton Place is sixth. Then toward the rail, it's Groaning Bob in seventh position. He's threading his way through between horses, followed by Just Feathers. Then a break of five to Mike and Chris. Bellingham is second to last. Cherkin is the trailer. The opening quarter went in 23 and three-fifth seconds, and they're into the back stretch now. Dizzy Devil is the leader. Best Aquarian right there, moving alongside in second. Lucky Eight right there with the lead now. Running in third position toward the inside. Decidedly glorious now running in fourth. Groaning Bob is moving eagerly into fifth position, followed by special tribute Wilton Place, a break of two and a half to Just Feathers, another two and a half to Bellingham, who's followed by Mike and Chris and Cherkin still at the back. The half in 47 and two fifth seconds. Honest fractions here set by Dizzy Devil, still the leader by almost two lengths. And the favorite, Lucky Eight, is right there, poised in second with a half mile to run. 
Best Aquarian is now tailing off into third. There goes Groaning Bob, and he's moving strongly. He's a strong third now as Best Aquarian drops back to fourth. Special tribute fifth toward the inside and moving on through, then decidedly glory farther back, Cherkin and just as they come to the top of the stretch, double but only by a head. Here comes Lucky Eight powering up on the outside. Those two head to head as the field turns for home, then a break of four to Groaning Bob, who's third in special tribute fourth toward the inside. Lucky Eight rolls past Dizzy Double and opens up here under a hand ride by three. And Dizzy Double has been left behind in second on the outside special tribute, and Just Feathers is in between horses third. It's going to be Lucky Eight. Who Favorite Lucky Eight draws off at will after catching pace setter Dizzy Devil. And the exact is decided between a pair of horses well bred for the grass. Special tribute, who's a half to Packets Landing, and Just Feathers, who's out of of turkey he was by turkey shoot out of a hawaii mare only thing with lucky eight could he go the distance well the point is he could go the distance he's the winner as the favorite that's pat faccio dominic galusio jorge chavez lucky eight returns 382 8260 finishing second special tribute bobby messina once a guest on inside racing 867 dollars just feathers eight dollars to show the five twos 45 40 vanilla two five five two 32 40. Again, I'm Fred's Bedman with the best way to buy quality American-made bedding at factory prices. Call 1-800-USA-SLEEP. 1-800-USA-SLEEP. You can save hundreds of dollars on twin, full, queen, and king-size sets because we ship right from the factory direct to you. There's no middleman. So pick up the phone right now and buy your bed from Fred. Call 1-800-USA-SLEEP. 1-800-USA-SLEEP. You're out here, then here, but can't get there. How do you break through the barriers and get closer to the Mets? Simple. Watch the show that takes you inside the Mets. Modell's Inside Pitch, Fridays on Sports Channel. The world is waiting for soccer's World Cup tournament to begin. But you don't have to. Sports Channel presents exclusive coverage of Team USA in a prep match against Mexico. Live Saturday night at 7.30, only on Sports Channel's New Sport. Three opens with a seven furlong race, four and up, claiming tag 75 down to 70. Gaspin Ochera scratch two. Lariski and Senor Cello go with Fabersham, Mike Smith. Richmond runner, Robbie Davis, Birdies Fly, Eddie Maple. My Mogul, Julie Crone, Nymphus Chavez, Boss Sauce, Jerry Bailey. They're off. Boss Sauce and My Mogul break sharply, but it's Boss Sauce with the best speed. Making the lead rather easily and over to the rail. Fabersham is coming up on the outside to challenge for the lead, and so is Nymphus. Those three across the track now, and My Mogul runs fourth. Birdies fly fifth toward the inside. Richmond runner will be the early trailer. Boss Sauce holding on to the lead by three quarters of a length. Nymphus is running second through a quarter of 23 and one. Fabersham right there disputing the pace while three wide. Birdies fly in behind the lead fourth. My Mogul being nudged along now, fifth on the outside. Richmond runner still trailing the field. And midway around the far turn, it's still Boss Sauce in charge by two. Fabersham second, Nymphist running third. Here comes Richmond runner now, last down the back stretch and moving within a length and a half of the lead. Birdies fly, My Mogul has dropped back to trail. It's still Boss Sauce in command. There's a narrow opening for Richmond runner, turning for home, Boss Sauce. Richmond runner in a bit tight toward the rail. Those two now head to head coming into the final for long. Memphis is third and under a drive. Fabersham fourth in the far outside. Richmond runner has come on through to get a short lead. Boss Sauce battling hard. Nymphist is coming well on the outside. Here comes Nymphist. Richmond runner down toward the rail. Richmond runner holds on to win it. This is a high price claimer for older horses, but Richmond runner is breaking his maiden in a manner of speaking. He's had four starts on Aqueduct's main track, won them by anywhere from three to 11 lengths, but in six other starts on any other surface, he's never been closer than 10 lengths. Today, he finally gets the job done. And also a strange race. Horses like Fabersham, Nymphus were closer than usual because there was no speed in the race. Richmond runner, though, found the opening. That's for uh, Reynolds and Alexander. Frank is the trainer. Robbie Davis was up, 744-2280. Nymphus, 360-320. Boss Sauce, 460 to show. 25-3680. Here's the sixth. They're going a mile on the 16th. These are Phillies and Mares, three and up. New York State Breds trying to run through the condition. 
They're in the gate, and they're off. Come on, Joy. Break sharply on the outside. Many colored roses has speed, and so does Newby. Car Star is right there. Then down toward the fence at Dollar Poker. The early trailers, Lois's flag, and well turned. Up the back stretch, and five of them up close toward the lead. Newby is there. Come on, Joy. Many colored roses, and Dollar Poker toward the rail. Car Star in behind the lead now, running a close fifth. Three and a half lengths back to Lois's flag. Another five to the trailer. Well turned, who lets the others do battle early. The opening quarter in 23 and one fifth seconds. Now three up after the lead. Come on, Joy, farthest out into the track. Newbies in between horses, many colored roses. Right there toward the inside third. Dollar Poker has dropped off into fourth position. On the outside, Car Star is fifth. Then a break of four to Lois's flag and another five to Well Turn. The half went in 46 and three. It's still three across the track. Come on, Joy, farthest out. Newbie has been mixing it up in between horses the whole way. Many Colored Roses is still right there. The three of them in a line with three furlongs to run. And then it's three lengths back to Car Star running fourth. Lois's flag is moving well on the outside in fifth position. Now the field coming to the top of the stretch. Many Colored Roses down on the rail. On the outside, it's Come On Joy. Those two turning for home together. Car Star is moving into contention now. Lois's flag is put to the whip. Well turned down toward the rail. Coming to the final furlong. Here comes Car Star. Car Star on the outside. Runs by to get a short lead. Many Colored Roses trying to fight with her. 16th pole Car Star and Many Colored Roses. Well turned, switch to the outside for the run into the line. Car Star will win it. Three quarters of a length. This is the old drop and stretch angle with Car Star. She was an even sixth in the Bowery Stakes on May 25th. Today she's stretching out, dropping back in with non-winners of one allowance types. She gets a perfect trip stalking a hotly contested pace into the turn. Tough to bet her as a favorite, but she's not the favorite. L looked like a race set up for a closer, which would uh, make well turn or car star the winner, but it's car star that gets the money. Ronald Nicholson, Caesar Kimmel, Jimmy Toner, and the rider, Robbie Davis. 1580, 764, many colored roses, six and four, and 480 to show. The 65 exacta, 8120. The seventh's at high allowance conditions. It's a mile and a quarter on the inner for three-year-olds and up. Now one is of four other than. They're off. Turk Passer and Victory Cross break first with Tank's number on the inside. Moving for the first turn, Tank's number and Victory Cross will vie for the lead as uh, O-Star runs up in the third position. Turk Passer's been gathered back into fourth position. Palachal's alongside him. Bersito three wide into the turn. Sentimental Moi reserved at the back of the pack. Corentino the trailer. Around the first turn, and it's Victory Cross. Loose on an easy lead. Tanks number hard held second. O-Star moving up now into second position. Tanks number back running in third position. Palachal moving up three wide from fourth. And uh, Turk Passer. In hand in between horses, fifth through an opening quarter of 23 and three. Bersito is sixth and a break of three to Sentimental Moi and Corentino at the back of the back. They continue their run up the back stretch. Victory cross, all stars move to his neck. Tanks number in behind. In between horses, Turk Passer is right there just off the lead. On the outside, Palachal. Bersito is moving four wide with five furlongs to run. Then a break of three lengths to Sentimental Moi. Corentino continues to trail the field. They've run a half and 48 and one fifth seconds. It's Victory Cross committed to the lead. O-Star right there. Bersito moving aggressively after the lead now. Tanks numbers had a good trip while in behind the lead. Victory Cross, or rather, uh, Turk Passer continues to remain in between horses. Palachal is there on the outside. And from the back of the pack, Corentino is launching his bid, but forced to go wide. Outside, Sentimental Moi, who's also moving. Turning for a home, Bersito is the leader at the top of the stretch. But here comes Sentimental Moi, charging hard on the outside, bearing in just a bit. Corentino was full of run. Turk Passers fourth now in the final furlong. Sentimental Moi by two and a half lengths. Corentino second and Turk Passer third. Coming down to the line. Sentimental Moi will do it. Sentimental Moi was a fast closing second in the records last fall, making only his fourth start on turf and it appears he's developed nicely as a four-year-old. 
And the play spot goes to Quarantino, who was victimized by a slow pace last time, but we've got a much better setup today. Both of them came from off the pace, but this horse just exploded. Landon Knight, Billy Badgett, Jose Santos, perfect ride, perfect trip, sentimental moi. 944, 40, 340. Quarantino also from behind. 924, 40. Turk Pass will look a little rank in the post parade. 320 to show. The exact to 3 1, 64, 20. Pick 3, 2, 6, 3, 334 dollars. Form thoroughbred action brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, the best friend a handicapper could have. If you're looking for an edge, there's only one place to find it. Everything you really need to know about a horse is in the racing form. It's the best piece of information you can get today. Well, the Daily Racing Form is a handicapper's Bible. You can't get along without it if you're seriously trying to make money. It's the only way to race. It's the only way to know what's going on. When you come to the track without the form, it's strictly a guessing game. The Daily Racing Form, the paper to read when you're playing to win. I truly think that uh, I don't see how a trainer or any horseman could do without a racing form. Think you can't afford to buy a car with all-wheel drive? Right now, you can't afford not to, because your participating Subaru dealer is offering up to $2,500 in savings on a new Impreza. And that means you can get the road-holding traction of all-wheel drive for less than $12,500. Or lease an all-wheel drive Impreza with payments as low as $196 a month. And that's a small price to pay to own the road. This is a sprint for three-year-olds and up. Non-winners of three races of 7800 since July 5th, 93. Hushin sending out two that fit. Golden Tent, New York, repeal his performer, Lovato. Lukey's Pop, Chavez aboard the favorite. Distinct Reality, Mike Luzzi, Zimmerman, Mike Smith, Paul and Jerry Bailey. They're off. Distinct Reality gets out first. Lukey's Pop gets in gear right from the gate. There goes Lukey's Pop, flashing his usual early speed. And Distinct Reality is now uh, running in second. Harlan on the outside, third. Peerless Performer, four deep, fourth. Three and a half lengths back. And Golden Tent takes to the inside fifth, and Zimmerman is the trailer as the field rounds the far turn. 22 and 2, first quarter. Lukey's Pop still blazes the way around the far turn. Distinct reality is coming after him. Harlem out there, three wide, three and a half lengths to Peerless Performer. And down inside, Golden Tent and another four to Zimmerman. Coming to the top of the stretch, Lukey's Pop. Harlan right there on the outside. Distinct reality continues to battle away while in between horses. Golden Tent switched to the outside for the run into the stretch. At the top of the stretch now, Jerry Bailey getting into Harlan. Distinct reality is right there. Distinct reality short lead. Harlan right at his neck. Lukey's Pop couldn't keep up. Golden Tent is third, passing the 16th pole. It is distinct reality. Fending off Harlan and goes on to win. Distinct reality, a hard-fought length. Distinct Reality was a fast closing second in the Hearst Jacobs at Pimlico May 15th. He's making his second start back from a layoff today and out finishes Harlan, who's making his first start since last November at Santa Anita. If you look at the conditions, it surely favored Distinct Reality. If you want to check back, he did win a stake, the 7,800 three times, and he got the money. If he had had more time last night, this would have been John Preachy's pick, at least according to Newsday. Can-Am Stable, Beatrice Oxenberg, Stanley Huff. Distinct reality with Mike Luzzi aboard. 860, 320, 320. Harlan 4, 260. Golden 10, 280. 3 5 exact in a small field, not bad. $36. Here's the finale. Oh, I'm sorry, the pick six. There are 18 winners, 8,000 plus. Five correct, 305 tickets. They, 303 tickets, they received $115. Here's the finale today, a mile on a 16th, four and up, claiming tags 14 down to 12. They're off. Paraco from the inside, there goes Puma Express, Ridge Road, good speed. Ridge Road to the lead. Puma Express now running along in second toward the inside. Paraco is third, Octoon fourth. We Stark followed by Salako and farthest out world game. In behind that group, it's Stack'em Up and another three to make the stink the trailer. Up 
the back stretch. The opening quarter goes in 23 and 3 fifth seconds with Ridge Road pressed by Puma Express from the inside. A break of four to Paraco and Octung, and they're followed closely by Sulaco, who runs fifth on the outside. Farther back, it's We Stark, Make the Stake moving up toward the inside, stack them up. And on the far outside, World Game is called on for run with five furlongs to go. He's moving four wide as the field rounds the far turn. Ridge Road has taken command after a half and 47 and three-fifths seconds. Puma Express couldn't keep up. Octoon and Paraco right there off the flank of Ridge Road. Sulaco now moving up to be fourth on the outside as Puma Express retreats to fifth. Stack him up is running sixth and moving within striking range now. Then make the snake and world game. Five lengths back to We Stark the trailer coming to the top of the stretch. It's still Ridge Road. Ridge Road now beginning to get away. Opening up at the top of the stretch to a three length lead. And Paraco now running second. On the far outside, it's Sulaco. Then Nake the Snake toward the inside. Stack him up and Octune, all chasing Ridge Road, who's left them five. The crack bell scratch that left the other half of the entry. Ridge Road, once he disposed of rank outsider, Puma Express into the far turn. The rest was history. Incredible. Ridge Road does win the race. Viola Summer, Frank Martin, Tony Mickens up. Ridge Road returns. 12, 27, and 6. Stack him up five and four. Nake the Snake four. The exact to 110, 6280, late double 31, 55 dollars, triple 110, 6, 297 dollars. Here's tomorrow's scratches quickly. Uh, in the third, take out the four, Nikki Zamba, the six, Titanic Victoire, the ten, Restored Hope. Skip to the fifth, take out the eight, Warm Me Up. Skip to the sixth, take out the twelve, Best Aquarian. Go to the eighth, scratch the two, Lord Wollaston, and in the ninth, take out the eleven, Scam. And now, I'm going to report to you quickly. Richard McCarthy versus Dave Litvin on Saturday in the paddock. Today in Post Parade Magazine, not second, not third, on top. Richard McCarthy, eight winners, missed only the seventh race. How do you like that? That's amazing. Aren't you glad that didn't happen on Saturday? Let's have a few for tomorrow. <laughs> okay, we're going to go with the sixth and the ninth races tomorrow. The sixth is a claimer on grass for three-year-olds. Uh, many of them going to the turf for the first time. One of them is Johnny North, who's going to the turf for Skiaka. Uh, Gary Skak had three three-year-olds last at the spring meet in 93 that won first time on the grass at double-digit mutuals. And in the ninth, we're going to go with Pressing Connection, who comes out of the faster division of a split maiden. Race. Okay, that's two from him. Good night. May the horse be with you. presents exclusive coverage of Team USA in a prep match against Mexico. Live Saturday night at 7.30, only on Sports Channel's New Sport. This week on Sports Channel, the Mets hit the road. Saturday, they clash with the Cincinnati Reds. Monday, it's off to Colorado for a slugfest with the Rockies. Mets baseball, Saturday and Monday, live and exclusive on Sports Channel. We'll open with a mile on the 16th. Maidens, three-year-olds and up. The claiming tags 35 to 30. No, there were no claims. Great Axe, Chavez. Wavering Man, Latrell, Sir Robin, Luzzy. Castle Pride, Nelson. John Prospect, John Velasquez. Real Cool Gang, Ruben Hernandez. Mean Poncho, Eddie Maple ride the favorite. R.C. Yoff is out. Strike for Life, Dale Beckner. Mean Poncho and Wavering Man out well. On the far outside, Strike for Life is there. And in between horses comes Castle Pride up after the lead. Moving up the back stretch, Strike for Life short lead on the far outside. Down toward the rail, it's Wavering Man. And in between those two, it's Castle Pride. Charm Prospect runs along in fourth. And just to his outside, Mean Poncho's now back running in fifth. Then it's Great Act, the real cool gang. Five lengths back to Sir Robin the trailer. Up the back stretch, they're in 23 and 3. Waver short lead. Pressed by Castle Pride and Strike for Life. Two and a half lengths back. Charm Prospect runs along unhurried in fourth. Great Act fifth toward the inside. The real cool gang is running in sixth. Mean Poncho has dropped back to seventh. Another five back to Sir Robin the trailer. The half in 47 and 1, and it's still Wavering Man holding on to a sheet. Castle Pride right there with them. Strike for life, just a bit farther back, running in third. To his outside, Charm Prospect in good striking position is now fourth, and he's followed closely by Mean Poncho, a wide fifth. 
Then farther back, it's Great Act toward the inside, the real Kogang and Sir Robin. Coming to the top of the stretch, still wavering man, Castle Pride. Strike for life is coming three wide. Charm Prospect taken four wide. Mean Poncho five wide into the stretch. Off the turn and turning for home. And it's Charm Prospect who's got a short lead. Charm Prospect in front. And Mean Poncho is coming to him on the outside. And the two favorites are 1-2 inside the final furlong. Strike for Life is third. Charm Prospect digging down. Mean Poncho overtakes him inside the 16th. Two-horse race on paper and on the track between Mean Poncho and Charm Prospect. Eddie Maple waits a little longer to make his move than John Velasquez, and it gets the money with a late wide move. Like we said in the paddock club, there's not even any surprises here we can look for. Mean Poncho gets it. That's for Joseph Federico and... Uh, P. Bonaventure, Eddie Maple is up. 480, 260, 220. Charm Prospect, 260, 240. Strike for Life, $5. The exact of favorites in order, 7, 5, 13, 20. The second race is a sprint for four and up, claiming tags 25 down to 20. We have a claim here. The favorite top the record will go to John Paracella. A triad that's out, out for Gold McCauley. Top the record, Smith. Stereo cassette, freeze dry, they're out. Border cat, Jerry Bailey. Vale's gorgeous, Kevin Whiteley. Quickest blade, Steve Radowski. The Ronald, Michelle Luttrell. And they're off. Border Cat, Quickest Blade, the Ronald all out fast. There goes Val's Gorgeous, hard ridden. And Val's Gorgeous is up to take the lead. But the Ronald is right there to press. Quickest Blade back running in fourth. Border Cat takes to the rail fifth. A break of two back to top the record and out for gold. They hit the far turn with the Ronald and Val's Gorgeous going full tilt head to head through a quarter of 22 and three fifth seconds. The Ronald's got a short lead. Val's Gorgeous is battling right back. Those two continue in a cutthroat duel. Quickest Blade is now moving three wide. Border Cat nowhere to run in behind horses. Here comes out for gold who sweeps on by. Top the record is kicking in. They're coming to the top of the stretch. Out for gold with a four wide sweep after the lead. Val's gorgeous toward the inside. Quickest Blade is coming on through between horses. The Ronald is hanging in there tough. Border Cat is running room is switched to the outside. Coming to the final for long. Quickest Blade full out. Short for gold right there. Border Cat at 16th pole. Quickest Blade holding on. Quickest Blade getting away and he's going to win. Quickest Blade. Two big drop downs in here and Quickest Blade and Border Cat. Quickest Blade ran for 50 last time, in for 25 today. Trainer Joe Aquilino gets away with something because nobody claims him in here. Top the record kind of a bad favorite because you're betting him off his mud numbers on fast tracks. He's been off the board his last five. And as Steve points out, this track is anything but muddy. Quickest Blade, Steve Simon, Joe Aquilino, Steve Radowski aboard. 684-4340 out for gold, 7 and 540. Border Cat, five dollars to show. The exact is 7 ones, 36. The Quinella 1771, 2520. The early double a pair of sevens, 2160. Third is a sprint. It's for Maiden Phillies, three and up, New York State Reds. They're off. Muddle breaks sharply. There goes previously. Classy charade toward the inside, and I skate. Those four up and after the lead. It's three lengths back. And on the inside, Dr. Knows Best now moves into fifth. Ali Toon alongside that one running sixth. Three lengths to Lady Trilogy, followed by Late Star. Will Spy now is second to last. Better than 10 from the lead, but launching a bid. And a big break back to Star Darahi, who's been outrun through a quarter of 22 and 4. Muddle is in control around the far turn. Previously is running in second. Doctor knows best now getting into gear. Third on the outside. Classy Charade has dropped back to fourth. And Will Spy now, in a sustained bid, moves into contention three lengths from the lead as they hit the quarter pole. Muddle, hand ridden into the stretch and giving them the slip, opening up by four, leaving a fatigued previously back in second. Will Spy now coming with that move on the far outside. But in mid-stretch, it's Muddle with an imposing six-length lead. Will Spy now second. Figured this race would be between Will Spy now, who had a horrible trip last time, and any of the firsters who could run. It turns out that Muddle can. This is a half-sister to Permit, who was a nice horse, also a half-sister to Scam, who's over 20 and counting. But Muddle does take after Permit here. Muddle will not be a maiden again. Joseph Shields Jr., Frank Alexander, Jerry Bailey for fun. Muddle, eight, four, and three. Will Spy now, 34260, Lady Trilogy, $5 to show. The exact of three and nine, 2560.
Here's a race where every horse won its last. Reason, it's five and a half furlongs for two-year-olds, which had never won a race other than. Impassion, Craig Perrette, Twist Lime, Jerry Bailey's on the favorite. Slick Victorian, John Velasquez, Broadway and Pine, Robbie Davis, Maxine's turn, Carl Fiorentino. And they're off. Twist to Lime, right to the lead. Impassion is right there with her, and those two will go head-to-head -head right from the get-go. Three lengths to Slick Victorian third, four lengths to Broadway and Pine, another three back to Maxine's turn. They hit the far turn, and it's Impassion with a short lead. Twist to Lime coming to her again. Those two continue head-to-head -head as, as they round the far turn, and they get a quarter in 22 and two as Slick Victorian draws in closer third, and Broadway and Pine gets within striking range fourth on the outside. Maxine's turn trails the field. They hit the quarter pole. Impassion twist the line. Slick Victorian now moving to them on the outside. Broadway and Pine set down for the drive fourth. Twist to Lime in front at the eighth pole by a length and a half. Leaving Impassion behind in second. Broadway and Pine trying to get to Twist the Lime. Running out of ground. Twist the Lime a length and a half. Broadway and Pine. A final thrust down to the line. Twist the Lime holding by a... There aren't too many races that I consider unbettable, but this was one of them. You had Phillies in here coming in off two and three furlong races on which it's impossible to make accurate figures, but the public guessed right as the favorite wins. The second choice does finish second here. I don't think these are great Phillies. However. I think one more jump, it might have been a reversal, but Twist a Lime gets it. Mrs. Fred Hooper, Phil Serpy, another one of those Hooper Copelands, Jerry Bailey aboard, 360, 240, 210. Broadway and Pine, 280, 210, Impassion, 210. The exact of the 24, 940. Quinella, 2442, 620. Team Valor is continuing its torrid pace of a year ago when Star of Cozine beat Lure in the Manhattan and Caesars and won the Arlington Million to contribute to the stable's 1993 earnings of 3.35 million. Barry Irwin and Jeff Siegel's Team Valor in 1994 is right on its 1993 pace in earnings and ahead of its pace in stakes performers. Leading sprinter Demolut Demashoot equaled the grade three Count Fleet handicap mark of 108 and one fifth in taking this 150,000 dollar Oaklawn Park event in the Midwest. Out West, Lady Blessington won the $100,000 Grade 3 Buena Vista at Santa Anita. And in the East, Santa Catalina equaled the Grade 3 Shirley Jones handicap mark in winning this $100,000 Gulfstream Park event. From 23 runners this season, eight already have won or placed in stakes races, all but one of them graded. Team Valor, General Partnerships, 800-734-5660. Team Valor, America's racing stable. Pick three begins with a mile and a quarter over the inner turf. These are maiden fillies and mares, three and up. And they're off, solar display, breaking sharply and right up after the lead. Down toward the inside, foe is there. Toward the outside, it's Viva La Dance. Coming up on through between horses, Social Ease is looking for the lead. And Social Ease takes charge going into the turn. Foe coming up the inside. In between those two, it's Solar Display. In uh, those three going at it now, and just in behind the lead, toward the inside, Slew of Rubies is running in fourth position. Viva La Dance under a hard hold fifth. Sudana six toward the rail, followed by Flutter Up, who's in between horses seventh, Philippine Queen three wide eight. And then it's Kyle's Pet, followed by Neon Fairy Tale. And at the back of the pack is Call Today. The opening quarter in a strong 23 and one fifth seconds. Foe has now taken the lead. Social Ease right there pressing second. Slew of Rubies moving up toward the lead, third on the outside. Solar Display toward the inside, running in fourth. Viva La Dance up close to the pace and running four wide in fifth position. And then it's Sudana, Philippine Queen on the outside. Flutter Up is in between those two. Farther back, Kyle's Pet Neon Fairy Tale and called today.
The half and 48 and one fifth seconds. They're moving for the far turn now. Socialese and Foe on even terms. Slew of Rubies up close third. Solar display getting closer. Has a narrow opening on the inside. Fourth. Sudan is right there running in fifth. On the far outside, Viva La Dance is moving swiftly toward the lead. There goes Viva La Dance picking off horses one by one. And she charges to the front. Viva La Dance with a short lead. Socialese is now running in second. Here comes Kyle's pet now. Moving toward the lead on the outside, running third. For the inside, foe is now fourth. Then farthest out into the track, it's Neon Fairy Tail, followed by Sedana. Slew of Rubies has dropped back. They're coming toward the final furlong, and Kyle's pet under a hand ride, moving right by Viva La Dance, Socialese, and then farther back, Sedana and Neon Fairy Tail. They're coming down to the line. All sorts of interesting angles and pedigrees in here, and 80 to one shot makes a huge middle move, but we end up with the two favorites in inverse order. Kyle's pet draws off kind of nicely. So this is David Whiteley. I think that's three in a row for David, and Jerry Bailey picks up three. Davis took a few days. Jerry's only took a few hours. Kyle's pet wins it for Whiteley and Bailey, returning 8280. Sudana, 3.80. Viva La Dance, 9.80 to show. That's the long one. The 8-1 Exacta, $19. Here's the 6. They're going a mile on the widener. These are three-year-olds. Claiming tags all in for 35. Uh, A.J. Starr, Ruben Hernandez, Lucky 8's out. Assess Dale Beckner. Gito Chavez rides the favorite. Cape Verde's out. Risk Your Wealth Santos, Legacy's Luzzy. Sean's World Smith, Bo Landingham Luttrell. Johnny North, Frank Alvarado. Sir Bert, Julio Heredia, Gate 6, Mojica. They're off. Gate 6 breaks first. Sean's World's between horses along with Sir Bert Bold Landingham and Gito and a five-way scramble for the lead and a crush of horses moving for the back stretch together. Farthest out, gate six, up for a short lead. Sir Bert right there for the inside. Sean's World running third. But Landingham is now fourth. Johnny North, fifth on the outside. Gito was steadied on the first turn. Back running on the rail in sixth. AJ Star seventh by four. Then it's Assess. Alongside that one, Risk Your Wealth. Legacies is the trailer as the field continues their run up the backstretch. And the opening quarter was a sharp 22 seconds flat up the backstretch. Gate six. Out there now by three and a half lengths. Johnny North moves into second. Sir Bert backs up into third. AJ Starr and Sean's World together. Gito now being helped along about eight lengths from the lead. Then farther back, it's Bold Landingham. Risk your wealth. Launching a bit outside horses. Assesses under the whip. Legacies at the back. The half in 45 and one fifth seconds. Gate six has set excruciating fractions here. Still leading by half as they make the turn into the stretch. North is second. Sean's World. Gito is on the attack on the far outside. Gate six weakening on the lead. Johnny North right there with gate six. And on the far outside, it's Gito. And Gito takes the lead. Johnny North trying to battle back. Sean's World running in third. By the back, it's Risk Your Wealth. Down to the final 16th. Gito still in front. Johnny North giving his all second best. Gito wins a hard fought length. Johnny North wins. Gito's coming out of one of the stronger three year old claiming grass races at the meeting behind Mr. Importance, who came back and won a stake, earned a good figure that day. Here, you could have been worried about him getting tired. The best thing that happened to him probably was getting in trouble early because he ends up coming from off a very quick pace set by a gate six. Clanny Gale Stable and Jose Martin, Jorge Chavez. Gito did come off a rough trip, but he gets the money. 440, 280, 240. Second favorite, Johnny North. That's the one Dave Lipman predicted would run better on the turf, and it did. 360, 320, Sean's World, $3. The exact to three and nine, 1980. Here's the seventh, going a mile to 16, three and up. State Bread's trying to run through the condition. Mount Shannon Woodburn did not, decided not to try today. Promising Rainbow Luzzy, groom on the mood Luttrell. Flying groom, Mike Smith on the chalk, head trip Santos. C.C. Sharp, Georgina Frost, Millbrook, Dale Beckner. They're off. On the... Outside, Millbrook is broken sharply and come on to take the lead. Head trip is second on the inside by four lengths. And on the outside, C.C. Sharp now moves into third position, followed by Flying Groom fourth. Then it's Groom on the move. And Promising Rainbow is at the back of the pack. Field continues their run up the back stretch. And the opening quarter went in 23 and one-fifth seconds. 
And it's Millbrook, the leader by two lengths. An unhurried head trip running along second by two and a half. Flying Groom has settled in third. CC Sharp takes to the inside. Now fourth. And then it's Groom on the move and Promising Rainbow at the back of the pack. Millbrook relaxed down the lead and still clear of head trips, burning away a bit here. The half and 46 and four fifth seconds. Millbrook still in charge with the half mile to run. And head trip right there, just off his flank, running second. Flying Groom is called on for more run. Three and a half lengths from the lead. And then it's Groom on the move toward the inside. CC Sharp second to last. Promising Rainbow trailing. Moving toward the top of the stretch. Millbrook is the leader. Millbrook three quarters of a length. Head trip coming after him in earnest now. Three lengths back. Groom on the move running third toward the inside. And Flying Groom has dropped back and forth. Off the turn. Into the stretch. Head trip to the lead. Head trip in front. Millbrook grudgingly is given way second on the inside and it's three lengths back to groom on the move third and they're coming down to the final 16th head trip still leading the way then millbrook here's a late resurgent flying groom they're coming down to the line head trip and flying groom hit the line together photo this finish. is something you don't see very often a horse who is falling back on the turn suddenly finding a second win flying groom just seemed to lose contact with the field around the turn then comes flying at the end can you call the photo just a little bit short i want to tell you if that horse had had to go another step the winner would have been flying groove but it is head trip bobby spiegel phil gleaves and jose santos 6 3 20 280 flying groom 240 240 groom on the move 360 to show 6 5 17 40 pick 3 8 3 6 60 dollars Form Thoroughbred Action, brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, the best friend a handicapper could have. If you want to play at the track, you've got to get Playing to Win, the all-new, fun-to-watch, easy-to-understand handicapping video from America's Turf Authority Daily Racing Form. Host Bob Newmeyer takes you inside the track, talks to key players, and shows you how the pros pick their winners. Past performances, speed figures, workout patterns, and breeding angles are just a few of the helpful handicapping tips that can really pay off. Playing to Win will take you to the front. Call 1-800-208-4333 today to order your very own copy. 90 miles from New York City, there's an entire world like you've never seen before. The Concord Resort Hotel, Championship Golf, Indoor and Outdoor Tennis, Live Entertainment with the biggest names in show business, a million activities just for the kids, and much, much more. So leave your world behind and lose yourself in ours for a while. The Concord Resort Hotel. For reservations, call 1-800-CONCORD. Guests on tonight's program receive a complimentary dinner for two at the Lunar Restaurant, conveniently located on Hempstead Turnpike, directly across from Belmont Park's main entrance. Affordably priced, the Luna offers the finest in Italian cuisine. Open for lunch and dinner seven days a week, the Lunar Restaurant is the perfect place to cap off your day at the races. Mr. Christ and his wife were inhaling a nice plate of food. Here's a mile, the feature. Three-year-olds and up. Now when is a race other than Maiden claiming a starter? Hughes Kids, Craig Perrette. Walderboro's the favorite. Luzzy's up. Joe Ran Express is out. Timeless and Devis Santos. Hawaii's Star Migliori. Powell's Memory, Luttrell. They're off. Powell's Memory, Hughes Kids. Timeless Endeavor coming up after the lead. Walderboro's right there. Timeless Endeavor and Walderboro hook up. Timeless Endeavor to the lead, a half length. Walderboro second. A length and a half back to Q's Kids is running third. Then a break of four to the two trailers. Hawaii Star and Pal's Memory. And those two now about eight lengths from the lead. Up the back stretch. And Walderboro eagerly up to take the lead. Timeless Endeavor back running in second. And they dash off a first quarter in 22 and 4 fifth seconds with Q's Kids running third. Five lengths back to Pal's Memory and Hawaii Star. Hitting the far turn with Walderboro in front by three quarters of a length. Timeless Endeavor still sticking with them. On the outside, Q's Kids is third to half in 46 and 2. Rounding the far turn, Walderboro still holding on short lead. Q's Kids is gearing up three wide. Timeless Endeavor's in between horses as Pal's Memory and a Hawaii Star both get closer. Coming to the top of the stretch. 
It's Waldeboro holding on to a short lead. Q's Kids on the outside running second. Hawaii Star down toward the rail and coming on through. He may need some running room. And Pal's Memory on the outside. Top of the stretch. Mike Luzzi getting into Waldeboro. Waldeboro still holding on to the lead. On the outside, Q's Kids trying to get to him. Hawaii Stars come out for running room. Down to the final 16th. Waldeboro under a rousing ride here. Still there by a length and a half. Hawaii Star, a final thrust. Waldeboro wins by a length. Pretty weak field for this one other than condition and not a particularly fast race, but it's hard to fault Waldeboro. One down, seven eighths, first time out. Wins stretching out to a mile today on the lead. Q's kids took a lot of money. He was coming off a phony figure race on one of those drying out tracks. The joke on Waldeboro is this is the horse that Shug McGay sent out first time, and it paid 21 to 1 for McGay. He's got a big following, but it wins back, wins back first time into this condition. Emery Hamilton, Shug McGay, Mike Lussy, Waldeboro, the favorite. Been a lot of those today. 522, 8210, Hawaii Star 3220, Pals Memory 280, the Exacta 25, 1440. Pick six today. It looks almost like the result of the national best seven. 185 winners, $278, five correct, a whole bus pack of bus load, a trainload of you, 10 bucks. Here's the ninth. This is a sprint for Baden's, Phillies and Mares, three and up, state breads. Linda Lee Lou comes out in stride, and Linda Britt also broke quickly. Linda Britt to the lead. Linda Lee Lou right there with her pressing connection is third. Lady Chiller now moving in between horses to be fourth. On the outside, Roses for Regina now moves up to be fifth, followed by Seven Lear. Loveline's Gold on the far outside running in seventh. Rosanna Lynn eighth toward the rail. Four lengths back to Wild Dame. Another four to toast the Duchess. Five lengths back to Sandra P. The opening quarter went in 22 and three-fifths seconds. Rounding the far turn, it's Linda Britt with a short lead, pressed by pressing connection. Roses for Regina looms a threatening third on the outside. Linda Lee Lou is dropped back to fourth. Seven layer moves within striking range fifth. Farther back, Wild Dame and Lady Chiller. Off the turn, into the stretch. Linda Britt digging down at the rail, pressing connection right there. Here comes Roses for Regina with her rally on the outside. Those three hit the eighth pole together, five lengths back to seven layer. Roses for Regina driving, now to a short lead at the 16th pole. Linda Britt battling on valiantly as they come down to the line, pressing connection third. Roses for Regina wins three quarters of a length. Yeah, two pretty well-bred firsters in here with exceptionally good six furlong workouts. The one from Julie Crone and Sue Alpers goes off at six to five. The one from Noel Winner and Willie Riley goes off at 11 to one. The more popular connections do get there. These are both pretty decent horses here running one, two. Good pedigree finish. Well, the winner is Roses for Regina of Newman's and Sue Alpers and Julie Crone. Four eight, and sorry, Julie's only mount for the day. 480, 360-240. Linda Britt. Noel Winter, 8 and 360, pressing connection, 220 to show. The 6-4 exacta, 35-40, late double, 2-6, 1320. Triple's not that bad. The two favorites with Noel Winter in the middle, the 6 4 8, 101. Let's get to tomorrow's scratches. In the first, take out the 7, May Rapito. In the third, the 13, Late Skate. 17, Wizards T-Shirt. 18, Carly's Connection. 19, Triple Fast. In the fifth, the 2, Puckalips. Uh, go to the seventh, the 1, Matthew Red Dog. And the 8, Tamara R. And in the ninth, the 12, Lucky Tags, 25 to 20. Lucky Old Violet is out, but Copeland's Lucky Jack and her stable mate will go off at even money with Chavez. Mighty Jenny, Migliore, Silvery Ladies out. Firm Inquisition, Georgina Frost, Alexis Lucky Star is out. Lancet, Mike Luzzi, and the second choice, Code 2 at Bay, Tony Mickens. They're off. Marty Jenny comes out on the lead. Quickly, in front of length and a half, Code 2 at Bay is chasing second. Then it's Firm Inquisition in between horses as Copeland's Lucky Jet, off a beat slowly, is rushed up on the inside. Now moving into third, Lancet, the early trader. Mighty Jenny is the leader. By a length and a half, Coutu at Bay running second. Copeland's Lucky Jet down on the fence running in third. Lancet is three wide fourth. Firm Inquisition in between horses. The opening quarter went in 23 and one with Mighty Jenny in front and Coutu at Bay sticking to her right there second. Lancet hung out there three wide and then it's Firm Inquisition in between horses and down toward the inside, Copeland's Lucky Jet. 
Midway around the far turn, it's still Mighty Jenny and Kotu at bay running one, two. Lancet hitting her best stride, now moving into third. Copeland's Lucky Jet has a lot to do, still four and a half lengths behind. Firm Inquisition, the trailer. Coming to the quarter pole, Mighty Jenny holding on to the lead. Kotu at bay is put to an all-out drive, trying to get to Mighty Jenny. Lancet third, three sixteenths from the line. Mighty Jenny still there. Migliori quickening up for here with Mighty Jenny opening up now by a length and a half. On the outside, Kotu at bay is giving her all. They're leaving the others behind. Mighty Jenny and Kotu at bay. One, two, all the way around. Favorite here, Copeland's Lucky Jet shows absolutely nothing, which is not a major surprise. Kotu at bay, this is what she likes to do. Her career, two wins, eight seconds, means eight times she had dead aim and failed to cash in. You want to be in front of horses like that at the top of the stretch. And Mighty Jenny won the brass ring. She outbroke them. She wired them. That's Wayne Trombley, Bob Placeris, and Richard Migliori combining. 1264-4240. Co two at bay, 262-10. Lancet, 260. The exact at two and seven, 4160. Here's the second half. This is a sprint for four year olds and up. Our bottom tags, 14 down to 12. Alex's candy is out. Appreciate, appreciate it, Michelle Luttrell. Barry's man, Dale Beckner, premier flag, Julie Crone. Ben's brother, Frank Chavez. Number to court, Paul Sindab, Tricky Catman, Rafael Mojica. Stereo cassette, John Velasquez. Reappeal, Richard Migliori to sweep. Mr. Miami, Mike Luzzi rides the favorite. And they're off. Reappeal comes out running, and so does Appreciate It. Premier flag is speed from the inside. Reappeal, Appreciate It concedes the lead to the quicker Reappeal, who gets in front now by two. Appreciate It is now running in second. Numbered Accord coming on through third. Mr. Miami is four wide, running in fourth. Ben's brother, Frank, had to check, was taken up sharply in behind Numbered Accord. Stereo Cassette is running in fifth position. Mr. Track Catman now is moving round Ben Brothers Fank, who's now about 10 lengths from the lead. There's a break of five to Barry's man and Premier Flag. Moving toward the top of the stretch, Reappeal is opened up by four. Got an opening quarter in 22 seconds flat. Reappeal zipping along here and still leading by three. Appreciated as second. Mr. Miami's under a drive. Third on the outside. Numbered accord is fourth toward the rail. Tricky Catman fifth on the far outside. Ben's brother Frank is sixth. Reappeal in mid stretch by two, but Mr. Miami is kicking in late down to the final 16th. And here comes Mr. Miami, who goes right by Reappeal. Numbered accord, Ben Brothers Frank under the line. Should have been scared off one of the bottom of the, po uh, the post parade magazine. It said that uh, Mr. Miami had an aluminum pad on. He's run with it many times and runs as well with it as without it. You can see that there's a little A for equipment in the post parade magazine. Same kind of horse. Race fits him perfectly. Reappeal will give you an honest pace. Mr. Miami likes to stalk, and he's going to win it. Going away for Robert J. Perizzini, Dick Dutro, and Mike Luzzi. Favorite returns, 443 20 240 Reappeal, $443. Ben's brother, Frank, who had a check, according to our announcer, 320 to show. The Exacta 9-8, given to you cold in our program by Richard McCarthy's $21. Quinell 8 9 13 20 The early double, he gave you that cold, too, the 2 9 80 Here's the third. This is a mile and a 16th over the Widener Turf, Maidens 3 and up, New York State Reds. They're off. Narrow River and Dynamite Devon both breaking alertly for the lead. And it is Narrow River who's gone on now to take the lead. Running in second position is Dearly Dunce. Just in behind that group. The bank man running in third, then toward the inside, Crossgate. Crossgate now moves into third position. The bank man is now fourth. Ode to Mickey Joe back in fifth. Roger Boy sixth moving on the outside. Three lengths back to Dynamite Devon, followed by Rain Alert. Then another three length margin back to Pro Squared and A.J. Warbucks. Lively opening fractions here. The first quarter went in 22 and three-fifths seconds. Narrow River has a short lead. Crossgate right there, those two hooked up with Dearly Dunce kept close to these fast fractions, right there running in third, a demanding half, 45 and four. The bank man down on the inside is a close fourth. Roger Boy fifth by two. Rain Alert now being asked for his best, and he takes to the outside. Rain Alert launching his bid. A.J. Warbucks is following him.
They're midway return. Narrow River has an alert. Gearing up on the outside now. Crossgate back running third toward the inside. Raja Boy is fourth. A.J. Warbucks continues to follow the move of Rain Alert. Off the turn into the stretch. Rain Alert forging past Narrow River. A.J. Warbucks now moving into second on the outside. Crossgate is fourth toward the rail. And Raja Boy in the final for long. Rain Alert has now opened up. An insurmountable lead. Then it's A.J. Warbucks and Narrow River. Rain alert from off the pace. To there was a five, knock on this five, favorite, actually. Five, Even though he was much the fastest horse in the race, the, nobody could touch him. But he had been a beaten favorite so many times and burned up so much money, you thought maybe he would never get it going. But he's back with state breads today for the first time in 94. He runs like a bullet. Those colors that you're looking at among the oldest in American racing, August Belmont. Billy Badgett's the trainer, and Frank Alvarado's up. Favorite returns, 560, 320, 240. A.J. Warbucks had a bad trip, but probably wouldn't have menaced the winner. 440 and 3, Narrow River, 340 to show. Here's actor 3-4, 2640. Here's the fourth, a mile and a 16th, four and up, claiming tags 25 down to 20. Carney's kid, Mike Luzzi, bet and cast, John Velasquez. Akiko, Kruge, Yaros, Migliore, I'll take a stand, Michelle Luttrell. Charming Buck, Mojica, Roman Chorus, Chavez. And they're off. I'll take a stand, breaks well. There goes Akiko and bet and cash. Bet and cash to the lead. Akiko runs second. On the outside, it's I'll take a stand third and Carney's kids fourth toward the inside. A break of three back to Yaros and Charming Buck and another five back to Roman Chorus, who will do his running from better than a dozen lengths off the lead. It's an eager Betton Cash who runs the opening quarter in 23 flat and has opened up by three lengths. Akiko is in pursuit second, trying to get closer to Betton Cash, who's free running on the lead. I'll take a stand third on the outside. Carney's kid to his inside. Yaros is eight links from the front. Another four or five to Charming Buck. And Roman Corse still at the back. Betton Cash has drilled a half mile in four. Leads by Tico, whittling away at his lead now. There goes Akiko with an aggressive move on the far turn. And then it's I'll take a stand for the inside. Carney's kid and Yaros is hitting his best stride. Moving toward the lead on the far outside. Then a break of five back to Charming Buck, and Roman Chorus is the trailer. Akiko takes over from Betton Cash, who is wilting at the rail. Here comes Yaros charging hard on the outside. And then farther back, it's I'll take a stand, and Carney's Kid straightening away into the final furlong now, and Yaros is roused to the lead. Yaros in front by a length and a half. Akiko second, farther back it's Charming Buck, I'll take a stand, and Carney's kid, they're coming down to the line, and it's going to be Yaros going away. We've been saying a, nice, a lot of nice things about this trainer, Mitch Friedman, a man we don't even know, but his percentages are remarkable, and horses are really running under his guidance. But look what he's done here. For the first time since 1992, aided by a very fast fractions and a perfect ride by Migliore, he's gotten Yaros back into the winner's circle. For the Julie Stable, Mitch Friedman, Richard Migliore, 1085 and three. Akiko finally runs a good race, but was too close to that fast pace. 780 and six. Charming Buck, 1140 to show. The exact of four threes, 122.20. Quinella 3443, 6140. Team Valor is continuing its torrid pace of a year ago when Star of Cozine beat Lure in the Manhattan and Caesars and won the Arlington Million to contribute to the stable's 1993 earnings of 3.35 million. Barry Irwin and Jeff Siegel's Team Valor in 1994 is right on its 1993 pace in earnings and ahead of its pace in stakes performers. Leading sprinter Demolute Demashoot equaled the grade three Count Fleet handicap mark of 108 and 1 fifth in taking this 150,000 Oaklawn Park event in the Midwest. Out West, Lady Blessington won the $100,000 Grade 3 Buena Vista at Santa Anita. And in the East, Santa Catalina equaled the Grade 3 Shirley Jones handicap mark in winning this $100,000 Gulfstream Park event. From 23 runners this season, eight are replaced in stakes races, all but graded. 
Team Valor, General Partnerships, 800-734-5660. Team Valor, America's racing stable. Now, more than ever, you can own quality thoroughbred racehorses. Racing's hottest stable, LSI Gold, introduces the most innovative concept in racing today, affordable thoroughbred general partnerships. Right now, LSI Gold is among the leading owners in races won and purses earned. LSI Gold's formula for success is simple. Select development and training of potential high-earning sound thoroughbreds. Remember, the time to call LSI Gold is now, because winning is everything. Here's the pick three. It begins with a seven furlong race. Three-year-old fillies claiming tags 25 to 20. The Jupiter Assembly, Mike Luzzi, Holly Pop, Roberto Leon. Bo Creek, that's a one to two shot Chavez is riding. New shoes for baby, Lovato, Day Rate, Dale Beckner, Susan Valley, John Velasquez, Lily Von Stink, scratch. They're off. Day Rate comes out fast. On the outside, Susan Valley, then Jupiter Assembly, followed by New Shoes for Baby in Bow Creek, and farther back, it's five lengths to stretch running Holly Pop. Up the back stretch, day rate the leader, Jupiter Assembly on the attack early, Susan Valley laying just off them third. Bow Creek kept within striking range, four lengths from the lead while on the inside, then New Shoes for Baby, and a break of eight or nine back to Holly Pop. The opening quarter in 23 and one, and the field hits the far turn. Day rate blazing the way. Jupiter Assembly right there off her flank. Susan Valley poised on the outside third. Two and a half lengths back to Bow Creek. Still only four and a half lengths from the lead. Followed by new shoes for Baby. Then a break of six back to Holly Pop. Three furlongs from the line. They've run a half in 46 and two. And now Jupiter Assembly is coming on to get the lead. Day rate on the inside second. Susan Valley floated wide outside Jupiter Assembly as Bow Creek moves into contention right there in between horses. By the back, Holly Pop coming to mid-stretch. Susan Valley's in front at the eighth pole. Jupiter Assembly battling with her. Bow Creek under a fierce left hand from Jorge Chavez is coming fast at the rail. Susan Valley in front. Bow Creek under a relentless drive. It's going to be close. It's you don't get much closer than this one. We'll try and follow it down to the wire. Horse on the outside is Susan Valley. She's taken the lead. That's the heavy favorite, Bow Creek, on the inside. They're going to hit the wire together, but on the bob. You see what happened there? One jump later, Bow Creek was in front, but too late for Bow Creek. Susan Valley, the Jill Lane stable, Leon Lane, Dan Pites, John Velasquez is a Philly broker maiden here. 16, 24, 20, 280. Bow Creek, 240, 220, Jupiter Assembly, 260 to show. The exact is 63, 37, 20. Let's go to the inner turf. This is a mile and a quarter, four-year-olds and up, 50 down to 45. And they're off. Dr. Disaster is out for the lead, and there goes Polaris Star up after him. Moving for the first turn, Dr. Disaster taking the advantage early. Getting away by two and a half lengths. Polaris Star is running along in second. Soroboja saving ground in third, zero to 60. Jostled about there with uh, Soroboja. Now zero to 60 moves into third. Soroboja's back into fourth. And on the outside, running in fifth position is won the laurel, about eight lengths from the lead. Then it's Leningrad Symphony and Happy Trails. A break of three to Takib and Crazy About Kelvin. Another four to Raptor and the trailer Telegrapher. The opening quarter in 23 and two fifth seconds. They begin the long run up the back stretch now. The leader is Dr. Disaster. Polaris Star right there running eagerly with him. Zero to 60 running in third and well out into the track. One the Laurel is fourth. Now two and a half from the front. Then a break of five to Soroboja, followed by Leningrad Symphony. Happy trails down inside. Another four to Takib. Then crazy about Calvin, Telegrapher and Raptor. Heading for the far turn, they run a half. In 47 and 4 fifth seconds, it's still Dr. Disaster, the leader with less than a half mile to run. The favorite Polaris star has been off his flank the whole way. Just in behind, 0 to 60 is running in third. On the outside, 1 the Laurel is fourth. Then a break of 4, Takib is gathering momentum. 
They're moving toward the top of the stretch, and Polaris Star overtakes the front-running Dr. Disaster and opens up now by two. Dr. Disaster running in second. Won the Laurel is set down for the drive third. Zero to 60 at the rail. Taqib on the far outside. They're all chasing Polaris Star, who has a... You'll notice that horse is not going to be caught, even though Taqib will make a run at him. Uh, Polaris is the first of three favorites John Paracella runs today that wins. But this one, off its last win for 35, he willingly moves up to this level, and it wins again. One of those horses that he claimed out in California, I think his friend Steve Young claimed them very cheap, comes here, move it from 12.5 to 35 and now to 45. It's not too good a recommendation, but the horse does run well, indicating that maybe the Western turf horses are a little bit better. I don't believe it, but this indicates I could be wrong. Polaris star, Jimmy Riccio, John Paracello, Jorge Chavez, 5.380, Fakib closes well, 5.85, Dr. Disaster, followed the pace, hangs on, 11.60 to show. The exact are $9.13, $35.40. On to the seventh, a mile and a sixteenth on the inner turf. Three-year-olds claiming tags pretty high, 75 down to 70. But our sponsor, LSI Gold, made a sale here. cross Ice Pass will go to Bobby Barbera. Leo O'Brien's entry here, Finney Cassette, John Velasquez, Seminole Spirit, Filberto Leon. Tomorrow's Comet, Jerry Bailey, Aravante, Julie Crone. Grand Continental, Migliori, Grateful Appeal, Alvarado. Best of Music, Mike Luzzi, Cross Ice Pass, Sammy. And they're off. Tomorrow's Comet broke well from the inside. Best of Music is there, coming on. And farthest out into the track, Cross Ice Pass. Making the bend toward the back stretch, Tomorrow's Comet is the leader with pressure from Best of Music. Cross Ice Pass now taken into hand, running in third. On the inside, Aerovente, under a firm hold, is running in fourth position. Grand Continental came out running in fifth. Fini Cassette is in behind horses, running sixth. Then it's Seminole Spurt alongside him and four wide down the back stretch. Then a break of six to the trailer, Grateful Appeal. The opening quarter went in 23 and four. Down the back stretch, tomorrow's Comet, pressed by Best of Music, and on the outside, Cross Eyes Pass. Grand Continental settles in fourth. Aerovente under a relaxed hold now, fifth toward the inside. Fini Cassett alongside him, sixth by three, followed by Seminole Spurt, another three to Grateful Appeal. Tomorrow's Comet still in front, Best of Music trying to get by him now. Cross Ice Pass caught out there, three wide and disputing the pace. Grand Continental's had a good trip while in behind the lead, right there running fourth. Then Fini Cassette, Seminole Spurt beginning to pick it up from the back of the pack now, taking to the outside. Aerovente is second to last and Grateful Appeal the trailer. Turning for home, tomorrow's Comet trying to fend off a stiff challenge from Best of Music, Best of Music, and tomorrow's Comet. And here comes Grand Continental on the far outside. Best of Music has a slim lead. Grand Continental charges past. It's Grand Continental now in front. Best of Music and tomorrow's Comet. Grateful appeal coming from last, but under the line. Grand Continental figures to be one of the speeds here. Gets raided by Miliori very cleverly. He allows tomorrow's Comet definitely a speed to go out. And Best of Music gets used a bit early into that speed duel. Richard comes from behind them. He lays about third or fourth. Going to pick up his third winner. Very unstable. One pawn stable. Enzio Gioa, Richard O'Connell, Richard Miliori. 12.47.44.40. Grateful Appeal takes to the turf. Comes from last. 13.620. Second shot out there. Runs well. Best of Music. 3.40 to show. The exact of 4.5. 135.60. Pick 3. 6.94. $651. Racing Form Thoroughbred Action, brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, the best friend a handicapper could have. This is it. Yes, Monday, June 13th, marks the opening of Florida's final two-year-olds in training sale for 1994. Your final opportunity to bid and buy a two-year-old in training, who may be just a few weeks from racing and winning. Buyers will have hundreds to select from, and all can be seen under tack on the OBS Regulation Mile Race Track. So be in Ocala, Florida for the Monday, June 13th sale of two-year-olds in training. You will get more for your money, and that's what winning's all about.
When you come to Belmont Park Saturday, June 11, you'll get more than a great day of racing. You'll get a coupon for a free daily racing form handicapping video when you come back on Sunday. Playing to Win takes you inside racing to show you how the pros pick their winners. Speed figures, trip handicapping, workout patterns, and breeding angles are just a few of the helpful handicapping tips that can really pay off. And they're yours free with paid admission. The more you watch, the more you learn, the more you win. So come out to Belmont Park Saturday, June 11th, and you're sure to go home a winner. Promotional considerations are provided by the Luna Restaurant, conveniently located on Hempstead Turnpike, directly across from Belmont Park's main entrance. Affordably priced, the Luna offers the finest in Italian cuisine. Open for lunch and dinner seven days a week, the Luna Restaurant is the perfect place to cap off your day at the races. Here's the feature race today. This is the 11th running of the Genuine Risk. $100,000 added, grade two sprint for fillies and mares, three and up. And dear, Jerry Bailey. Appella, Appella's gonna be the favorite. She's the defending champ in this race. Larry Attard in for the ride. Roman Rachel, Julie Crone. Joy the Silence, John Velasquez. Miss the Storm, Craig Perrette. Spinning round, Jorge Chavez. They're off. Apelia breaking sharply on the outside. Spinning round comes out fast, but it's Apelia to the early lead. Spinning round, chasing her all the way. And down inside, Andir runs in third. Enjoy the Silence came out running in fourth position, followed by Miss the Storm, and it's three lengths back to Roman Rachel, who is the trailer. She's seven lengths from the lead. Rounding the far turn, Apelia, and spinning round, going head to head through a sharp first quarter of 22 and three. And Deers just in behind them running third. Enjoy the Silence between horses. Then it's Miss the Storm. Roman Rachel is the trailer, but beginning to pick it up as they move toward the top of the stretch. Apelia down inside, spinning round is right at her throat now. Enjoy the silence is coming three wide. Miss the storm is taken four wide into the stretch. Roman Rachel is set down for the drive on the far outside. And here at the rail, but in mid stretch, Apelia shakes loose by three. Living spinning round in her wake, back running in second, then down toward the inside. It's Anne Deer, but they're coming down to the line, and Apelia will go on to they're a They're going to run one, two around the track, but the defending champ wins it. Steven Stavro, Philip England, Larry Atard in for the ride. Larry's been on the horse every time, except maybe once, and she is the winner, the mayor. As the favorite, 563 and 280. Spinning round from George Steinbrenner runs second, 380, 360. Ann Deer, one of the long shots, 380 to show. Exact at 26, 2440, triple 261, $125. Here's the pick six. There were two winners. One was on track, one was off track. Each will be rewarded with $34,438. 73 tickets had five, $314 for them. Here's the ninth. We're running it again. A mile and a sixteenth on the wide. The maidens three and up. New York State breads. And they're off. Wolf Shadow comes out running. There goes Silver Safari, intent on the early lead. Silver Safari to the front. Joyful Bundle will come up and put pressure on. Grave Dancer now running third toward the inside. Wolf Shadow is taken back into fourth. And Mr. Baba is fifth on the outside. Three links to Rogers, Dividends, and Buck Mulligan. Then a big break back to Rika Misa, who's running sluggishly now. On the outside, Pickwick Punch and Watrall Sea Trip. Rika Misa is the trailer. The opening quarter went in 22 and 3 fifths seconds. They're moving up the back stretch, and it's Silver Safari pushed along by Joyful Bundle. Two and a half lengths back. On the outside, Mr. Baba now edging into third. Grave Dancer is fourth toward the rail. The half in 45 and two. They hit the far turn. Silver Safari still in front. Joyful Bundle still chasing second. Wolf Shadow is now moving into third. Mr. Bob is back to fourth. Rogers Dividends now moving steadily. Fifth on the outside. Grave Dancer retreats to sixth. And Buck Mulligan is called on for his best. They're moving toward the top of the stretch. Silver Safari trying to go the distance here. Wolf Shadow will press as they turn for home. And Mr. Baba split 
Jets horses as they turn for home. It's Mr. Baba who is the leader at the top of the stretch. Wolf Shadow on the outside. Toward the rail, Silver Safari doing his best, but it's still Mr. Baba holding on to the lead. Silver Safari second. Wolf Shadow is third. Watch all Looks like about a half a mile from first to last here, but look at the winner. If you were looking to get out and you were looking for something to play, this had a spring up at you. Ran once down at Camden and ran 10th uh, by 19 with 140 pounds. Michael Dickinson gets Julie Crone to ride's first time with the New York Breds. Bingo! Mrs. Henry Pax is the owner, Mike Dickinson and Julie. 1848, 25, 20, Watchful Seat Trip, 543, 20, Silver Safari, $3 to show. 78 exact to 147.40, late double 27, 73.40, triple consecutive numbers, 789, $368. All we have time for tomorrow is scratches. If they'll take that off, here we go. In the fourth, scratch the one, Nikki Wolf. Go on to the Sell the Trail. Special mana, Mike Smith. Other half of both entries are gone. Hot under the collar, Richard Migliori. Dolly's back, Bill Berto Leon. Sweet World, Dale Beckner. Cope's Light, Jorge Chavez. Ruthie's Relic, Paul Sindab. Caged Heart, Herb McCauley. under the collar towards the inside. Sweet World is right there on the outside is Cope's Light. Then it's Ruthie's Relic racing fourth. Down on the inside is Dolly's back in fifth. Caged Heart the outside sixth. Then it's all too well and special mana. Up front, it's hot under the collar and Sweet World there. Heads apart for the lead. The quarter went in 22 seconds. Right behind those two is Cope's Light racing third. Then it's a gap of five. To Dolly's back on the inside in fourth. Ruthie's Relic is now fifth. Then it's all too well, special mana and caged heart. The field is moving for the head of the stretch. Sweet World on the outside, hot into the collar on the inside. Cope's Light further out, looking for racing room as Dolly's back. They're in the stretch, the half mile in 45 seconds. Hot under the collar on the inside is short lead. Cope's Light in the middle of the racetrack now challenging. Then it's Sweet World, Dolly's back, a late move. Hot under the collar is going to make it all the way for the Was Up Stable, Marin Guerrero and Carmine Teleska. Richard Migliori, yesterday's riding star, three yesterday, starts off the day with a winner. Winner is Hot Under the Collar with Richard Migliori riding. 844-6360, Cope's Light, 885-80, Special Mana, 460 to show. The 3-6 exact is $87. And we'll finish the double with seven furlongs. He's a four and up to a little higher level, 17.5 down to 15.5. Prioritizes 15 with Robbie Davis. Hugger tags out. Crown Prospect is seven to two. Michelle Luttrell, Sylvester Stone is scratched. Berkeley Fitz, seven with Mojica. Revolt, five to two Chavez. Your favorite, eight to five on 632 with Herb McCauley. C. Baba, 15, John Velasquez, Regal Mike, eight, and Filberto Leon. They're off. Regal Mike Sebaba in 632 out fast. Sebaba hustled out to get the lead and 632 is right there to move with him. Then a break of three back to Crown Prospector third. Berkeley fits between horses fourth, Revolt fifth on the outside. Regal Mike back to sixth and the trailer is Prioritizer. Up the back stretch, Sebaba and 632 going at it head to head. Three lengths back to Crown Prospector, and they rattle off a quarter and 22 and two. And as the field hits the far turn, it's 632, holding on to the lead by a half length. See Baba right there, second. It's now five and a half lengths back to Revolt, who's moved into third. Crown Prospector retreats to fourth. Regal Mike's on the move. And then it's Berkeley Fitz in a break of five back to Prioritizer. Three furlongs from the line. The half in 45 and one with 632 pressured the entire way by C. Baba. Revolt and Regal Mike are closing in. Farther back, Crown Prospector is back running in fifth. Off the turn into the stretch. It's still 632 fending off C. Baba, but a stiff challenge from Revolt on the far outside and Regal Mike who comes bursting through between horses. It's 632 still there. Regal Mike surging. Revolt on the outside. 632, Regal Mike brush in mid-stretch. Revolt there, down to the line. Regal Mike wins. Three quarters of a length. I'm one of those people who always thinks Regal Mike is better early because of his name, Regal Mike. But this horse making his fourth start at Belmont now has two wins, a second and a third to account for that. And uh, last time out, he ran at this level. He's been winning at a lower level, 14 to 12. 
Trainer Arthur Wendell thinks the horse is right, and Arthur's right. Regal Mike, Herbert Davidson, Arthur Wendell is the owner and trainer. Roberto Leone is up. 1980, 660-340. 632-340-260. Revolt, 260 to show. The 86 Exacta, 9480, Quinella 6886, 3280, early double 3 and 8, 10280. Here's the third. This is seven furlongs, maidens three and up. Chris is out. Send them home, Jerry Bailey. Convince Julie Crone. Easy Miners out. Vegan Mike Luzzi, J-A-N, Robbie Davis, Classic Arbitrage Chavez, Holy Mountain, Migliori, Party Manners, Mike Smith, Royce Joseph Kruger, Plutonius Santos, Crafty Miss Perrette. They're off. Royce Joseph breaks alertly on the outside. J-A-N and Classic Arbitrage are there, convinced toward the inside. Then Holy Mountain. Up the back stretch and convince, moving eagerly from the inside to hook up early with JAN. Classic arbitrage just off the lead, running in third. Holy Mountain has been gathered back in the fourth position. Plutonius fifth on the outside. Party Manners sixth at the rail, followed by Crafty Mist, who's now running eighth, about nine lengths from the lead. Then fire the back toward the rail. It's send them home. And Royce Joseph in a big break back to Vigan, the trailer. The opening quarter was 22 and 2, and they're rounding the far turn. And convinces in command by a half length. JAN right there with them. Party man in contention while in behind the lead. Holy Mountain is also right there. Plutonius is coming well in the far outside. And then Crafty Miss. Royce Joseph will come wide into the stretch. The field turning for home. It's still convinced. Hand ridden into the stretch with the lead by a length. Still fending off JAN. Party Manners has a seam to run through now. Here comes Party Manners to the head of Convince and right by Convince. Party Manners rolls through the final furlong. Suge McGay, a long shot specialist with first starters. Remember he had one go off at 21 to 1 and win for fun? Now he has this duty dance call from Private Manners. They don't bet it, it wins. And look who runs second, Schulhofer. Party Manners, Ogden Mills fifth, Suge McGay, Mike Smith. 2680, 11, 660. A first of from Scotty with Julie up. Convince, 820 and 8. Royce Joseph, 520 to show. Exact is a little small, but after all, it is McGahey and Schulhofer, the old 8 2. 185, 20. Here's the fourth. It's a mile and a 16th on the inner turf. Three year old Phillies claiming tag 75 to and 70. Up. Ogie's Threat and Sunshine, Linda Jane out fast. Farthest out, there goes New Wave up and to take the lead. New Wave in front, Sunshine, Linda Jane trying to run with her early. New Wave the leader, Sunshine, Linda Jane making her work to hold the lead. There's a break of four. Back to safe at home, now running third. Ogie's Threat toward the inside, fourth. Sun Attack, fifth on the outside. A break of two and a half to Java Java, followed by Caroline of Kent. And the trailer is Believe in Doris. 23 and 1 for the opening quarter. Down the back stretch now. Sunshine Linda Jane is the leader. Moving at a strong clip here by two lengths from New Wave, who's running in second. Jose Santos trying to throttle her speed. It's another two back to safe at home, followed closely by Ogie's threat. On the outside, Sun Attack, and farthest out, it's Believe in Doris. Then Caroline of Kent and Java Java. They've run a half in 46 and 4 on the far turn now. Sunshine Linda Jane still holding on to the lead. New Wave has taken another run at her. And then it's Sun Attack. Believe in Doris on the far outside. Just in behind the lead, it's safe at home. Java Java moving within striking range on the far outside. Caroline of Kett. Ogie's threat had to steady on the turn. Off the turn and into the stretch. New Wave now. New Wave getting away from Sunshine. Linda Jane safe at home is under a drive third. In mid stretch, New Wave is hustled clear by five. Safe at home, Sunshine Linda Jane and Java Java. Sun Attack fifth, 16th pull. New Wave is home free. It'll be close for a second between Sunshine Linda Jane and Safe at Home. No doubt about the winner, New Wave. Six on the, the line. Three horses coming out of the same race on May 13th. Java Java, she finished second going the mile. They made her the favorite. Sun Attack, she won going the mile. Made her one of the favorites. New Wave finished fourth. Didn't touch her. She's off the picture. Wins for fun. However, Sunshine Linda Jane, who was the pace setter, comes back again to get the place. New Wave, Bertram Cohen, Richard O'Connell, Jose Santos. 1186-6520. Sunshine Linda Jane, 6-4, safe at home, 340 to show. 
The exact date one is 7580, Penella 1881, 3740. This is it. Yes, Monday, June 13th marks the opening of Florida's final two-year-olds in training sale for 1994. Your final opportunity to bid and buy a two-year-old in training who may be just a few weeks from racing and winning. Buyers will have hundreds to select from, and all can be seen under tack on the OBS Regulation Mile Race Track. So be in Ocala, Florida for the Monday, June 13th sale of two-year-olds in training. You will get more for your money, and that's what winning's all about. Friday, Sports Channel hits the fairway for the Michael Jordan Ronald McDonald Golf Classic. Celebrities include Ernie Banks, the Iceman, Globetrotters Curly Neal, and reigning champ Rick Roden. The Michael Jordan Golf Classic, Friday at 8 on Sports Channel. Sports Channel is proud to present the sixth consecutive season of our summer racing series from Yonkers, featuring some of the sport's biggest races. Catch the season premiere of Summer Racing 94, Saturday, June 18th, only on Sports Channel. Pick three begins with a sprint for Maiden Phillies and Mayors, three and up. Alan Jerkins sending out a pair of second choice. Miss Shoplifter with Noah Winter, Arc of Colors, Julie Crone. Jaded Island, Dale Beckner, new, but he picked six Chavez. Iron Maiden, Jerry Bailey, Sequitur, finally they're gone. The favorite for sport, Mike Smith. They're off, Iron Maiden and nobody picked six. Both break alertly, it's nobody picks six in front. There goes for Sport with the rush on the outside. Iron Maiden between horses and Miss Shoplifter. Those four headed for the far turn together. And Jaded Island is fifth toward the inside, Arc of Colors six. And Miss Shoplifter dashing away from the field, quickly opening up. A burst of speed there, 22 flat. Miss Shoplifter zipped that opening quarter, has a four-length lead, Iron Maiden second. Nobody picks six is back in third. First fourth, the favorite fourth on the outside. Arc of Colors following four sport and a big break back to Jaded Island, the trailer. It's Miss Shoplifter still there by three, but the others begin to close in, including her stablemate Arc of Colors, who's now second. The half in an eye opening, 44 and four. No winter going to work on Miss Shoplifter, coming to the eighth pole with the two and a half link lead, and her mate, Arc of Colors, is second. They're one, two, and four, Sport is third. 16th pole, Miss Shoplifter. Miss Shoplifter was bet heavily first time out. When they opened the gate, Noah Winter was out quite a bit slowly. Uh, Winona managed to wire her that day. Today, Noel breaks with the field, moves his horse up, takes the lead, and away she goes. Miss Shoplifter for the Hobo Farm, Alan Jerkins and Noel Winter. 6.20, 6.220. Reason it paid so much for place? Arc of Colors, the half the Stormbow runs. Second pays the same. Favorite for sports, third, 2.10. But the exact is the two favorites inverted, 1.7, $11.60. Here's the six. This is a mile and a sixteen. Three-year-olds and up. Now one is a two other than. Peace Baby breaks well on the outside. Danzig dance from the rail and Sky Hero. And Sky Hero will go out to be the early leader. But a two-prong pressure here from Danzig's dance on the inside and Peace Baby on the outside. Two and a half lengths back and McComas lets those three go at it and settles down nicely while in hand. Then a big break back to Casey's personal flag, who's allowed to trail well behind the rest. The opening quarter, relatively soft, 23 and three. Sky Hero Danzig's dance on even terms. Peace Baby's moving easily with them on the outside. McComas tracking them forth. An even wider margin back to Casey's personal flag, who's almost 20 lengths out of it now. Into the fire turn, it's the trio of Danzig's dance, Sky Hero and the favorite Peace Baby. The half went in 46 and three. So the cadence has quickened. They're rounding the fire turn. Peace Baby, the favorite, hung out there three wide, disputing the pace. Sky Hero's in between horses, Danzig's dance. And McComas looms a strong fourth. They're coming to the top of the stretch. Peace Baby by a head. Sky Hero second ahead. Danzig's dance third as McComas continues to draft in behind horses. Off the turn and into the stretch. Mike Smith still riding conservatively on the leader, Peace Baby. Peace Baby in front. McComas right at his heels. McComas tips to the outside now. 
down toward the final furlong. McComas is turned loose here by Julie Crone and comes by to get the lead. Julie got herself a nice trip behind those three horses that were battling for the lead. She tries to go between them, but when there's no room, she wisely alters course and goes around them and wins going away. McComas, Madeline Paulson, Billy, Mott, Julie Crone, 883, 40, 220. Peace Baby, the favorite, 260, 210. Dancing's Dance, 220. The exact of 4 6, 21 20. Here's the seven. There's a mile and a sixteenth on the widener. Phillies and Mayors three and up. Now one is a two other than. Velma's 25 with Maple, Gray Mood 8 and Crone. Teasing Charms the favorite, two with Luzzy. Dinner Diamond 19 and Davis running on E7 to 2, John Velasquez. Private Session 8, Jerry Bailey, Video Piano 12 and Perrette. 1D Flawless, 9 to 2 with Dale Beckner. Home by 10, 12 and Michelle Luttrell. Memory Green 19 and Sindab. And they're off. Velma is out first. Teasing Charm there, second toward the inside. Making the bend toward the back stretch, Velma clears the field, does it rather easily, opening up by two and a half lengths. Teasing Charm second, Memory Green on the move. Now third on the outside. Gray Mood is fourth, Video Piano running in fifth. On the outside, 1D Flawless races in sixth position. Running on, he is seventh in between horses. Then a break of four to Dinner Diamond and home by 10. Private session at the early trailer, 12 lengths from the front. Lively opening quarter, 22 and four, set by Velma. Velma out there by two and a half lengths. Memory Green in pursuit, second by four. Teasing Charm and Gray Mood running together, followed by an unhurried running on E. 1D Flawless now being nudged along while four wide heading into the far turn. Then a break of four to Video Piano, home by 10. Then it's Dinner Diamond and Private Session. A strong half here of 45 and three, set by Velma, who's been running hard the whole way as Memory Green draws in closer to press harder. Three lengths back, Gray Mood moving strongly now into third. Running on E, 1D Flawless is four wide. And then it's Teasing Charm, who's only three lengths from the lead. Home by 10, moving into contention on the outside. Velma in front, Gray Mood in behind her. 1D Flawless, fan four wide into the stretch. Running on E is coming on in between horses. Memory Green is retreating, and then home by 10, only three lengths from the front. Video Piano down toward the rail. Velma, short lead, but here comes Gray Mood. The rail opens up for Gray Mood, and here comes Gray Mood opening up. Then it's Velma, followed by home by 10. Private session last on the Julie got right through along the rail on Gray Mood and this true relaunch. She is a gray. Relaunches are generally gray. It's going to win the race with Home by 10, the old campaigner coming in second, and that's a Julie Crone, Michelle Luttrell exact, a gray mood. Uh, Roland Thompson, Tom Skiffington, Julie Crone. 18, 10, 80, and 8. Home by 10, 10, 40, 8, 80. Velma, 14, 60 to show. The exact are two nines, two thirty-eight, sixty. Now this pick three doesn't look big because the parlay's about two and a quarter, but the 142 at $167 is really Julie Crone, Julie Crone, Julie Crone, because she was on the other half of the entry in the fifth race. Crone, 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 $167. Daily Racing Form Thoroughbred Action. Brought to you by the Daily Racing Form. The best friend a handicapper could have. When you come to Belmont Park Saturday, June 11, you'll get more than a great day of racing. You'll get a coupon for a free Daily Racing Form handicapping video when you come back on Sunday. Playing to Win takes you inside racing to show you how the pros pick their winners. Speed figures, trip handicapping, workout patterns, and breeding angles are just a few of the helpful handicapping tips that can really pay off. And they're yours free with paid admission. The more you watch, the more you learn, the more you win. So come out to Belmont Park Saturday, June 11th, and you're sure to go home a winner. Now, more than ever, you can own quality thoroughbred racehorses. Racing's hottest stable, LSI Gold, introduces the most innovative concept in racing today, affordable thoroughbred general partnerships. Right now, LSI Gold is among the leading owners in races won and purses earned. LSI Gold's formula for success is simple. Select development and training of potential high-earning sound thoroughbreds. Remember, the time to call LSI Gold is now, because winning is everything located on Hempstead Turnpike, directly across from Belmont Park's main entrance. Affordably priced, the Luna offers the finest in Italian cuisine. Open for lunch and dinner seven days a week, the Luna Restaurant is the perfect place to cap off your day at the races. 
Here's today's feature, a mile and three-eighths on the inner, 36 running, Sheep's Head Bay, $100,000 added, grade three. These are Phillies and Mayors, three and up. Alice Springs, Rene Douglas in for the ride, Irish Lynette, John Velasquez, Fairy Garden, Jerry Bailey, Silky Feather, Mike Luzzi, Missy Moo, I Love You, Art Madrid, Trampoline, Mike Smith, Belle Nui, Samin, Aquilegia, Julie Crone, Market Booster, Jose Santos. And they're off. Irish Linnet showing early speed today. Alice Springs is gathered back in second. Silky Feather coming up toward Irish Linnet. And on the outside, Market Booster. Moving bias for the first time, Irish Linnet, a short lead. Mild pressure early from Silky Feather as Market Booster tucks neatly in behind the lead, running in third. Fairy Garden, fourth. Trampoli, three wide, heading for the turn, fifth. Alice Springs has been taken back into sixth position. Aqualicia's on the outside, followed by Missy Moo, I Love You. Belle Nui will be the early trailer. Irish Linden bounding along by a length and a half. Clear of Silky Feather second. The opening quarter went in 23 and two fifth seconds. Five and a half lengths back to Market Booster running third. And another gap back to Fairy Garden, who is a distant fourth. Fairy Garden better than 10 lengths now off the lead. And then it's Alice Springs toward the inside. Trampoli's alongside her. Aqualesia is clear of traffic on the far outside. And Missy Moo, I love you, second to last. Belle Nui continues to trail the field. Solid fractions here. The half one in 47 flat. Irish Linnet continues to lead the way. Silky Feather's been pushing her all along now. In a break of four and a half, Market Buster continues to run in third position. And another three and a half. Alice Springs is running fourth, still nine lengths from the lead. And then it's Trampoli, Aqualegia's in the far outside. Missy Moo, I love you. Fairy Gardens tailed off. Second to last, Belle Nui, the trailer. Less than a half mile to run. Irish Linnet committed to the lead, trying to go the distance here. She leads by two. Silky Feather working hard, trying to keep up with her. Market Booster, there goes Trampoli. Aqualegia's on the outside. Alice Springs is in behind horses, running in sixth. Missy Moo, I love you, coming up the inside. Fairy Gardens still in with the chance. Belle Nui, tight pack, turning for home. And they're all chasing Irish Linnet. Irish Linnet is still there by length and a half. On the outside, Silky Feather and Market Booster crying out for running room. Down to the inside, still Irish Linnet. Market Booster charging hard, and here she comes with the 16th to go. Alice Springs is there on the outside. Market Booster coming fast. Irish Linnet trying to hold her off. Here is Market Booster to pull it off. Winning by a long neck. Irish they had three equal favorites in this race. Alice Springs, Fairy Garden, and Trampoli. That's about to get third. Uh, that sets the pace. Barkett Booster, who started out after she ran in the arc last year, was in perfect position every step of the way with Santos. She goes after Irish Lynette. She's going to get her. There's a big price, deservedly so. And one of the favorites is going to hit the board. But after all, when three out of nine are favorites, one of them should hit the board. And the winner is Market Booster. That's for the Moy Glare stud. D. Wayne Lucas, Todd Fletcher's here, but we're happy to see D. Wayne in the winner's circle. Jose Santos up. Big balloons for this one. 44, 20, 80, and 740. Irish Lynette, 11 and 7. Fairy Garden just makes it for the show. $4 to show. The 9-2 is 542.20. The triple, 9-2-3, $3,120. On to the finale. This is a mile and a sixteenth. Widen the turf. Maiden Phillies and Mayors. Three and up state press. Miracle Zone. Fifty with Radowski. Sit down. Uh, five in Lovato. Lyric Opera. Three in Santos to sweep. Turkey Wing. Nineteen. Ruben Hernandez. Romancing Missy. Twenty-four in Sindab. Existentialism. Seven in Luttrell. Take the Silvers, the favorite. Two to one. Bailey rides. Branch Water. Five in Maple. Miss Bergen Beach. Thirty-five. Kruger. Funny Wild. Ten in Mickens. Miracle Zone was away slowly. Miss Bergen Beach dwelt at the start. Spots the field about 10 lengths. Making their way toward the back stretch. It's Turkey Wing who's anxious for the lead. Turkey Wing is the early leader on the outside. Take the silver right there. Pressing while three wide. Existentialism up close to the pace. Romancing Missy toward the inside. Branchwater is fifth. Only two and a half from the... 
And then it's Funny Wild running skip two and a half back to sit down. Another four to Lyric Opera. Another five back to Miracle Zone after a disastrous start. Miss Bergen Beach is well behind the rest, and they're moving at a lively pace. 22 and three for the opening quarter. It's Turkey Wings still in charge. On the outside, take the silver, pressing this uh, hard pace. Just in behind, it's Existentialism running in third. Branchwater is fourth by two and a half. Romancing Missy is back to fifth. And then it's sit down and Funny Wild. They've run a half here in 45 and 4 as they round the far turn. Take the silver now. Overtakes Turkey Wing. Branch water kicking in. Take the silver in front. Branch water running in second. Existentialism now threading her way through in between horses. On the outside, sit down. Here comes Lyric Opera moving swiftly toward the lead and extremely wide. The field now turning for home, and it's Take the Silver who cuts the corner, the leader by a length and a half. Sit down is set down for the drive. Romancing Missy is there, Branch Water, Lyric Opera on the extreme outside, and mid-stretch, it is Sit Down who has taken the lead. Sit down in front, Romancing Missy kicking in late. Take the Silver third, Romancing Missy closing with a flourish. Sit down trying to fend her off. It's gonna be close and it's going to be. Sit down, and neck. Romancing this could be called Miss the Wedding. Let's go to the funeral. Yesterday in the ninth race, Colt Division, same race, New York Brits. Michael Dickinson had a horse. Nobody bet it. Paid 8 9 to 1 with Julie. Today, take the silver. They made it the favorite. It's just barely going to get in there for third. Sit Down tries the turf successfully for Seymour Cohn, Stephen Schaefer, and Frank Lovato Jr. 12 580 360. Romancing Missy will make the middle. 14 and 580. Take the silver. $3 to show. The exacta 25, 193, late double 92, 684, triple 257, six hundred dollars even. Pick six today was tough. Nobody. Here's the scratches at this time for Tuesday. Our turf races are loaded with AEs. In the last race, take out the 13 baby Heffernie, and that's it. Here it is, today's pick six information. Nobody. Five correct, five tickets. They were paid rather well. $3,379. We'll start Belmont Week with a carryover of over $50,000. That's on Tuesday. Tomorrow night on Inside Racing, Nick Zito with Go For Gin. We'll talk to him, and you'll hear a very funny song they've written about Go For Gin. You'll hear that in the background. And, of course, John Preachy will analyze the race. That's it. We'll see you Tuesday. Good night. May the horse be with you. LSI Gold is among the leading owners in races won and purses earned. LSI Gold's formula for success is simple. Select development and training of potential high-earning sound thoroughbreds. Remember, the time to call LSI Gold is now, because winning is everything. Take a look at Saturday's stakes race here at Belmont. It's the genuine risk. Grade two, six furlongs for fillies and mares. Tom Durkin has the call. They're in the gate. They're off. Apelia breaking sharply on the outside. Spinning round comes out fast, but it's Apelia to the early lead. Spinning round, chasing her all the way. And down inside, Andir runs in third. Enjoy the Silence came out running in fourth position, followed by Miss the Storm, and it's three lengths back to Roman Rachel, who is the trailer. She's seven lengths from the lead. Rounding the far turn, Apelia, and spinning round, going head to head through a sharp first quarter of 22 and three. And Deer's just in behind them running third. Enjoy the Silence between horses. Then it's Miss the Storm. Roman Rachel is the trailer, but beginning to pick it up as they move toward the top of the stretch. Apelia down inside, spinning round is right at her throat now. Enjoy the silence is coming three wide. Miss the storm is taken four wide into the stretch. Roman Rachel is set down for the drive on the far outside. And deer at the rail. But in mid-stretch, Apelia shakes loose by three. Leaving spinning round in her wake back, running in second. Then down toward the inside. It's and deer, but they're coming down to the line. And Apelia will go on to a decisive three. Defending champions really win, rarely win rather, but Apelia comes right down, does it again under the same rider, Larry Attard. 
She won it last year. There's a hockey connection. Her owner, Steven Stavro, is an NHL hockey team owner. Apelia, Canadian base, comes down and wins the genuine risk under Larry Attard as the favorite, paying 560 for the win. Spinning round was second, and Deer finished third. Six furlongs in an excellent one minute, nine seconds. We'll go up north now to Suffolk Downs for a Budweiser Breeders' Cup race. This for three-year-olds and up, the distance a mile long. And guest announcer Downs, Dave Johnson, has the call. And they're off. Prolanzier came in a bit at the start. That's Winver Ridge and Prolenzier on the outside and Sunny Sunrise charging through on the rail. Now Prolenzier leads it. Sunny Sunrise on the inside second. Winver Ridge is racing third. Empire Ballet fourth. Stop and listen in the white cap is fifth on the outside. Just three from the lead. After that, it's the Roan Horse, Lil Big Horse next, followed by the favorite Wallenda, who's second last, and Frotage at the back of the pack. They move on to the back stretch with Prolenzier in front by a length and a half. With Sunny Sunrise in pursuit from the second spot, a gap of length and three quarters, Winver Ridge is racing third. Empire Ballet on the inside is fourth ahead. Stop and Listen is fifth on the outside. And five back, it's Walenda in the yellow colors moving through at the rail. After that, Lil Big Hoss and Frotage. A half in 47 seconds, and they head to the far turn. On the inside, it's Prolenzier with Jockey L. Cortez leading it by a neck as Sunny Sunrise moves alongside to challenge. Two back, Winver Ridge is racing third, and here comes Walenda moving quickly out in the middle of the racetrack. Walenda with a bold move on the outside. At the top of the stretch, Sunny Sunrise between horses takes the lead, but Walenda roars up on the outside and grabs command and down the stretch they come walenda drawing clear it's walenda all alone in the suffolk downs budweiser breeders cup the race is strictly for the play spot it's walenda easily in front on the inside nice Sunny. management of this horse they find a spot like this they go up there frank alexander doing very well walenda from as usual from way back way in front. That is correct. As the favorite, Walenda paying 380 for the victory here. Herb McCauley aboard for this easy victory in the Suffolk Downs Budweiser Breeders' Cup. Sunny Sunrise was second. Protage finished third, 150 and three for the mile and the furlong. We'll go to Monmouth now for another Budweiser Breeders' Cup race. This one's for fillies and mares, a mile and 70 yards. It's a grade three, and here's Larry Kalmus with the call. They're racing in the Monmouth Park Budweiser Breeders' Cup Handicap. Four all seasons and Louis Capote out for the lead and with the wink is sent up on the far outside by Joe Bravo to show some speed. Then it's better as a memory in fourth position. Right to the inside of her comes six season double sixes and then comes the early trailer who is Dime Keys. They're moving around the clubhouse turn and it's Louis Capote in front by a head. With the wink on the outside is second by two. Four all seasons wants to go up with those leaders. She's being restrained by the Maple and four all seasons is traveling well in third. Then it's two and a half more to double sixes followed by better as a memory and the trailer is Nine Keys. Moving down the back stretch, Louis Capote has the lead by a head with the wink on the outside is second. They're going quickly here, they went the quarter in 22 and three and a half and 46 and two. Racing in third is four all seasons and she still is well within striking range, stalking them in third. Then it's two lengths farther back to double sixes, followed on the outside by Better as a Memory and Nine Keys is starting to move up. She gets a rail run and Mike Smith is sending Nine Keys now. She's four lengths off the lead and closing. It's with a wink, the first one to turn for home. On the outside is four all seasons and nine keys. 
unleashes a powerful run down the center of the track as they come into the stretch. Nine keys on the far outside for all seasons and with a wink down at the rail, but it's nine keys and Mike Smith getting the lead and opening up late and nine keys will go on to win it. Nine keys wrapped up to win the Monmouth. Four goes colors and a four go kind of race. Nine keys puts in a good one, another last to first. And she's winning on a lot of different racetracks, Harvey. She won at Oaklawn, the Apple Blossom, down at Gulfstream, the Rampart, wins here at Monmouth, taking this Budweiser Breeders' Cup race. Angel Penna Jr. trains Mike Smith aboard the favorite. It's nine keys for all seasons was second with a wink. Finished third, 142 and two the final time. Out west we go now to Hollywood Park for the grade two Railbird Stakes. This for three-year-old fillies at seven furlongs. And here's Trevor Denman's call. And oh, where they go. Sophisticated Cielo came away a little awkwardly, although it did break well, but now drops back as Sportful Snob goes clear. Sportful Snob goes off to lead by two. Pirate's Revenge on the outside, an accountable lady pulling her way up to within a length of the leader. Sophisticated Cielo is fourth and Beautiful Gem. They're bunching up now. Four lengths would cover the lot. Past the five-eighths they run and Sportful Snob is clear a length and three-quarters to Accountable Lady. Sophisticated Cielo down at the rail. Beautiful Gem one from the outside and Pirate's Revenge going to be forced wide three lengths would cover the whole field past the half mile they run and sportful snob hasn't been flying for the distance leads it by a length and a quarter close up second comes accountable lady on the extreme outside is pirates revenge sophisticated cielo at the rail and beautiful gem is right there the five runners are still bunched as they run to the quarter pole sportful snob tries to shake loose now clear by two and a half lengths pirates revenge on the outside accountable lady sophisticated cielo drops out of it at the top of the lane and sportful snob Snobbers finding more on the lead. Sportful Snobbers clear by two to Pirates Revenge. Accountable Lady folded quickly today. They run for home and Sportful Snobbers finding more and keeping Pirates Revenge off. And it's going to be Sportful Snob to register an upset under Pat Valenzuela. Wins the Railbird. Sportful Snob from Pirates Revenge. Accountable Lady. It's only a field of five, but they managed to find a three to five favorite. However, this ain't it. Sportful Snob in this five horse field, 21 and two. Change. That is correct. John Sadler trains. Pat Valenzuela rides. It is Sportful Snob. Pirate's Revenge was second, and that three to five favorite, Accountable Lady, had to settle for third here. Seven furlongs, 121 and four. Sportful Snob winning the Railbird. We did have a couple of nice races during this past weekend, but it was kind of the uh, calm before the storm. We've got the, the big ones coming up this coming weekend. This is Belmont week, four pretty sharp contenders, one of whom is the local horse, Go For Gin, Derby winner, trained by New York's own Nick Zito. We'll talk to Nick right after this. <laughs> This is it. Yes, Monday, June 13th marks the opening of Florida's final two-year-olds in training sale for 1994. Your final opportunity to bid and buy a two-year-old in training who may be just a few weeks from racing and winning. Buyers will have hundreds to select from and all can be seen under tack on the OBS regulation mile racetrack. So be in Ocala, Florida for the Monday, June 13th sale of two-year-olds in training. You will get more for your money and that's what winning's all about. Sports Channel turns up the heat in June. Bobby Bow and the Mets slug it out with National League rivals in 18 games. At the plate with Rusty Staub serves up great baseball talk. Dynamets pitches baseball fun for the entire family. Catch the U.S. prepping for the World Cup on the World Series of Soccer. Summer Racing 94 is the place to be for live harness racing from Yonkers. And get same-day thoroughbred racing results from Belmont. It's all for you in June on Sports Channel. We hate to turn the Belmont Stakes into a sectional rivalry like basketball or hockey, but we're going to do it anyway. Nick Zito, he's New York. There's no question about it. As soon as he opens his mouth, just like me, you know that we're New York. And, Nick, one of the things we were discussing earlier, you've hit the Belmont Stakes a lot of times, at least been in it. Well, we've been in it the last four or five years, it'll be. And we did well, obviously, with 36 Red Harv and uh, Strike the Gold and 
Hopefully we'll do well with Kofi Jim. I mean, you're not Woody Stevens. We, no. can, we all know that. But still, even to get in that much is quite good with the stock you've got. Yeah, recently, that's, it's, it's really good. Uh, we're really proud of it. You know, obviously, you're only as good as you help. And my men and I are real happy about that. And hopefully, uh, this time, uh, you know, we'll get there. Okay, two things to work out the other day. Mm -hmm. Two things I want to ask. Why did you bring Chris in? He knows Belmont. It wasn't like you need to educate Chris McCarron on the Belmont Strip. Why did he come in, and why was it so fast? Well, that's a good question. But I think uh, I wanted to be assured that the horse was on his game, that he didn't lose anything, uh, you know, with the Triple Crown. And who knows better than McCarron? I mean, he, again, you know, not to be boring, but he is truly a Hall of Famer. And he told me, he says, I can't believe it, he said, but this horse is... He's hanging in there. I he's, mean, he's... He thrives on work, this horse. Well, I don't know about that so much. He's just a, a, a gritty and tough animal, Harv. And uh, I noticed a piece in the paper this morning. They called him a little lion. That's, that's a great word, because he is a little lion. And uh, what Chris did he go with? What were the breaks? Well, you know, Clockers and myself are two different things. But we were just about the same. Uh, Jules Watson, uh, the head clocker for the racing form, had him uh, 22 and 4. I had him 23, and then he picked it up in 46 and change. I had that. Then I got him in 59 and change, uh, 59 and 1 and 2, and I got him 11 flat. Jules got him in 10 and 4, but more importantly, he galloped out as good as a horse could that's gallop That's a pretty out. good finish for 6 for a while. And he was doing it effortlessly. Now, that's what I it. heard. People told me that the rider, that Chris was just sitting there, probably as shocked as we were with the time. You're not known for those kind of works. Well, no, and... Uh, I was very, very uh, uh, happy today uh, to read the racing form, and uh, Jules's comment was that he was going to put breezing, but obviously when a horse works that fast, he's, he's, he think I'm, I'm, I was, he, they would think he was crazy, but he said, believe me, the horse was merely breezing. And, you know, I told McCarron, just whatever you do, just sit on him. And quite a few people watched him work, and he never moved on him. Okay. Never. Now, I'm going to ask you another thing. This song. Yes. A Gopher Gin song. Who wrote that? Uh, a, fella a fella named uh, Alfie Kramer, uh, he's friends with Leon Blitzkowitz, uh, they're from Baltimore, and uh, he did a good job with it, and it's a lot of fun, I think the people will like it. I'd like to hear a little bit of it, and then we will discuss it while we'll, we'll watch your horse coming back after the Derby, and we'll listen to a few seconds of this song, because it kind of is like an anthem for the New York end of Gopher Gin. He'll win the Belmont that day. He's bred for speed and for stamina. Let's go for gin. Nick Dito, I know that guy. He's the trainer of pro. I know the owner of the cauldron. You'll have him fit for the Belmont States. Let's go for gin. You'll want to get down on the tiger at a mile and a half. Okay, now that's your an inspiration to get a song like that. Do you need rain? Well, the song says uh, he won't need the rain and the distance, no strain. So believe it like that. Well, they're both really in his pedigree. He can yeah. go the distance. Oh, absolutely. His pedigree is no, no denial of that. It. You really can. Is he going to be on the lead, or is he? Uh, do you think somebody will run with him? He will definitely be on the lead. He'll definitely go right to definitely. the front. You mean yeah. there'll be no polar expedition, no Ulysses? No, he'll be definitely on the lead. And I'll tell you what, to his credit, maybe. Uh, you know, the trainers and the jockeys will figure that, hey, he's had two races, you know, the Triple Crown. He didn't miss the Preakness. They did, Bracco and Stroge Creek. Tabasco, I think, has learned that, uh, obviously, Wayne, they did a good job getting the horse to relax. I don't think they're going to change uh, his style. So if he makes it, he makes it. So that's it. You're lay laying down the gauntlet. Nick Zito, New York's representative in the Belmont. John Preachy coming right up. Good luck, Thank Nick. You, Team Valor is continuing its torrid pace of a year ago when Star of Cozine beat Lure in the Manhattan and Caesars and won the Arlington Million to contribute to the stable's 1993 earnings of 3.35 million. Barry Irwin and Jeff Siegel's Team Valor in 1994 is right on its 1993 pace in earnings and ahead of its pace in stakes performers. Leading sprinter Demolute Demashoot equaled the grade three Count Fleet handicap mark of 108 and 1 fifth in taking this 150,000 
$1,000 Oaklawn Park event in the Midwest. Out West, Lady Blessington won the $100,000 Grade 3 Buena Vista at Santa Anita. And in the East, Santa Catalina equaled the Grade 3 Shirley Jones handicap mark in winning this $100,000 Gulfstream Park event. From 23 runners this season, eight already have won or placed in stakes races, all but one of them graded. T General Partnerships, 800 75660 Team Valor, America's Racing Stable. He may not be the most famous horse in the country, and many racing fans in New York may not know about him. But at Finger Lakes, Lord of the Mountain is king of the hill, and here's why. On Fiora Farms, eight-year-old Gelding won the George W. Barker Stakes for the third year in a row at Finger Lakes on Memorial Day. And this time, he equaled the track record of 109-1. and one. Lord of the Mountain, who was Finger Lakes' Horse of the Year in 92 and 93, was bred by Blue Sky Farm and is now 19 for 40 lifetime with earnings of 285000 He is one of the top New York Reds, pointing for the biggest day of racing in the history of the program. On Saturday, October 15th at Belmont Park, the New York Showcase will premiere with 10 races for registered New York Reds, including seven stakes. This will be a day of pride for New York breeders and horsemen, for it will feature the best thoroughbreds eligible for the New York program and a great racing program. Sprinters will be on display in the Hudson Handicap at six furlongs for males, the Iroquois Handicap at seven furlongs for fillies and mares. Two-year-olds get a chance to stretch out the Sleepy Hollow Stakes for Colts and Geldings and the Maid of the Mist Stakes for fillies, both at a mile and a sixteenth. Turf horses will clash in two events, the Mohawk Handicap for males and the Roga Handicap for fillies and mares at a mile and a sixteenth. And handicappers of both sexes will compete in the Empire Classic at a mile and an eighth on the main track to cap the day's events. A cooperative adventure of the New York State Breeding and Development Fund, Naira, and New York Thoroughbred Breeders, the New York Showcase will celebrate the achievements of the New York breeding industry. Be sure to mark your calendar to attend as a fan, for owners and trainers will be pointing their best to the New York Showcase, which we will continue to preview and report upon right here each week until October 15th. Guests on tonight's program receive a complimentary dinner for two at the Lunar Restaurant, conveniently located on Hempstead Turnpike, directly across from Belmont Park's main entrance. Affordably priced, the Luna offers the finest in Italian cuisine. Open for lunch and dinner seven days a week, the Luna Restaurant is the perfect place to cap off your day at the races. is John Preachy, who's living proof that uh, the Luna sells something other than salads. Uh, John, uh, let's go to Nick's workout with uh -huh. Go for Gin. Well, did you think it was too fast? Well, on the face of it, yes, because I didn't see where the track was all that fast. Heavenly Prize was the only one who really worked super fast yesterday. But again, Chris McCarron was motionless. And uh, the interesting thing, Harvey, is that, you know, before he won the Remsen Stakes as a two-year-old, he worked in 57 and 3 seven days before the race. Well, seven days before the race, he worked three quarters and ten and change. Well, so you don't think it'll be a... I don't either, because it's before. I don't like it when it's two or three. I don't like when I see a blowout of 34 and a horse is going into a race the next day. But this is, a, this is long enough. Exactly. But I think, uh, more importantly, it ensures that he will be sharp enough and that it will be on the lead. And speed is the gin's best game. And speed is the best game in the Belmont. Uh, yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, I have some derby stats here. And... Uh, Aside from the fact that uh, 14 of the last uh, uh, 14 of the last 21 Belmont winners had a dosage index between two and three, it is on the speedier pedigree, meaning that's why we got to have some speed when you go to the Belmont, even though you are going a mile and a half. We got four very good contenders in there. We have the Preakness winner, we have the Derby winner, and we have the horses laying in the wings, the Californians, Strode's Creek and Brocco. Uh, Harvey, it's really interesting. I mean, this is a very deep Belmont. I think it's a deep Belmont, not in terms of, of, of quantity, but certainly in quality. I, we're looking at six horses right now. The top four, as you mentioned, uh, I had picked Tabasco Cat to win the Preakness, and I'd have sort of really loved him if I was really sure in my mind and heart that he was a mile and a quarter horse. That was the only reservation I had. If I had reservations about a mile and a quarter, I have to have a little reservation about a mile and a half. So, uh, he, notwithstanding, I'm looking at the top three here, and that would be Bracco, who's probably had the best three weeks here, if you look at his training pattern, and you look at the animal, too, it looks like he's filled out nicely since the Derby, and, uh, 
I think the two top choices deservedly have to be Gopher Gin and Strode's Creek. We know now that Gopher Gin's going to be on the lead. We have that from Zito, and I kind of think there was no other way to go. Uh, no, I don't think so either. And it's interesting. This is going to be a rider's race, Harvey. Uh, Gopher Gin is going to be on the lead. Now, I'm looking for... Pat Day will probably ride his Preakness race back. Let's take a look at a little of that Preakness. You can even talk about it while you decide how Tabasco Cat will be ridden. Uh, well, or, already, uh, Tabasco Cat was able to extricate himself from off the fence. It was just a letter-perfect trip. Wayne Lucas will admit that, too. What I like about go for Jin's race here, incidentally, is that a horse is making one run, a perfect trip winner. Looks like he's going to go on. But you can see go for Jin just straining into that bridle, looking to come back. I mean, it's just a great race to... And you, set him up with. You don't think Tabasco Cal be able to do that so easily in the belt. First, it's a six-horse field. His perfect trip in the Preakness was because the horse next to him quit. Uh, exactly. If, if Silver Goblin had a little bit more gas in the tank, he wouldn't have been able to get out as easily as he did at the 516. But if we have Pat Day riding his Preakness race back, we have uh, Winnick, uh, Randy Winnick, Brocco's trainer, on record saying, I'm not too concerned about the mile and a half if I'm about two or three lengths off the lead. Well, you're going to have horses vying for second position, and I think you're going to get Strode's Creek with Della Husse, who's two for three in this race with one second having the three of them in, in his sights. So it's really a great betting race. They got four horses. I don't think there are many six to five in here. Uh, no, I don't think so, Harvey. Uh, interestingly, the last time we had a six-horse field, it was Risen Star back in 1988. Everybody seemed to love him, and yet he was two to one. I think we're looking at a couple of co-favorites here. Uh, Strode's Creek, when, when a Charlie Whittingham says, I have a race in my back pocket, you better pay attention. Uh, obviously, he had a very rough trip in the Derby. He was slouched a little bit on the first turn, five wide all the way, gaining ground through the stretch, and of course, he's fresh. But go for Jin, you know, uh, Nick has used the expression, this horse is a throwback. Well, he really is. There's nothing soft bone about this little guy. He never runs a bad race. We're looking at his numbers stay level, his buyers, all the numbers are just even all oh, the way. Uh, all the numbers, uh, uh, mine, I generate my own speed figures. He's remarkably consistent. Uh, I know you like to use the sheets, and on the Ragazin figures, he runs three, five, in a row. I mean, uh, but interestingly, too, uh, this race is generally w run won by a horse coming off a career top, and we've got a few of uh, we've got a few of those in here. Uh, let me get to these uh, to these Belmont Give trends. Those Belmont trends. We're, uh, okay. we're giving away a book right now with Belmont. Trends. <laughs> well, there you go. All right. Since 1965, we've only had seven Preakness repeaters, and three of those were Triple Crown winners. So it doesn't seem that the Belmont favors the the, the Preakness winner coming back. Uh, eight of the last 14 Belmont winners have turned two in their pedigree. So that would qualify Strode's Creek and Bracco. Uh, favorites, by the other hand, are only th have won only three of the last 15. Uh, I guess Nick would be pleased to know that 13 of the 21, of the last 21 Derby winners have finished one, two, one, first or second in the Belmont. Uh, only once in the last seven years has a Lasix horse won the Belmont. The only horse who didn't race on Lasix in his last race was go for gin uh, 14 of the last 21 belmont winners again as we've said before have a di between two and three that qualifies only strode's creek and uh, as best as i could ascertain don't don't hold me uh, uh strictly on this one but five of the last six winners uh, were coming off a career top and that's three of these horses the only exception was go and go of course you can't generate no, figures on the grass so okay that's a very very interesting analysis of the race and remember this, 12.30 will be the first post. We'll have, I believe, 10 races. Uh, it's going to be as good a Belmont as we've ever had. Will it rain? The way things are going, it's been too nice. Uh, it has been too nice. The chances are 26%. We've had 33 <laughs> wet tracks in 125 years. That's uh, Dave Lippman used to be the statistician. You're now my statistician. <laughs> Belmont, this Saturday. See you there. Good night from Inside Racing. And down the stretch they come. To go home a winner. Open we got five left. They're going a mile. Phillies and Mass four and up, claiming tags 25 down to 20. Top two are out. Here's the ones that are in. Okay, to advance, Latrell, Miss Cover Girl, Mojica, Buttercream, Frank Alvarado, Jetaway Juice, Georgina Frost, keeping fit, Robbie Davis.
keeping fit, stumbled at the start, going for the lead, okay to advance on the inside, and okay to advance. Advances to a two and a half length lead. Miss Covergirl is second, keeping fit as recovered and moved up on the outside into third. Buttercream is fourth, and Jetaway Juss is racing fifth. They move down the back stretch, and okay to advance is in front now by six lengths. The quarter went in a quick 22 and four. Miss Covergirl is racing second by two, keeping fit is third by two and a half. Then Buttercream in fourth by a length and a half, and Jetaway just remains in fifth. They're approaching the far turn, okay to advance. In front still by seven lengths. Miss Covergirl is in second, keeping fit is third. The half mile in 45 and four. They're midway around the far turn, okay to advance is the one to catch. She's in front by six lengths. Miss Covergirl is second, keeping fit. Dropping back a bit in third, Buttercream and Jetaway just gain a bit of ground as they're moving for the head of the stretch. Okay to advance in front, three quarters in one, ten and three. Okay to advance, turns for home. The lead now is just three lengths. Buttercream is gaining ground on the outside. They're passing the eighth pole. Okay to advance. It has stopped. Buttercream comes on for the lead. Buttercream in front, keeping fit, coming back on the outside. Miss Covergirl towards the inside. It's a bit of a fake race with OK to advance, thinking it's a four furlong race going out in 45, letting it's just anybody's going to come and get her, and it turns out to be this one. Uh, no real surprises, whichever horse won this race, but Buttercream was a logical closer, gets that pace up front, takes advantage of it. She's a winner. JBBH Stable, Howard Goldstein, Anthony Campagna, Bob DeBonis, the trainer, Frank Alvarado up. 6.43, 42.20. Keeping fit, Woody Stevens hits the play spot. 580, 240, Miss Covergirl, 220 to show. The 4-6, 45, 20. Here's the second. This is the off the turf for a mile and a quarter, originally on the inner, now on the main. 50 down to 45. We're only showing you those that are running. There aren't too many of those. Chris's dear Debbie has Luzzy, Miss Pocket Court, Lovato, Personal Dancer, Bailey, and Rebecca Lauren Leon. Chris's dear Debbie is away well from the inside. Miss Pocket Court is right there, and Personal Dancer moves up on the outside, and Personal Dancer now gets to the front. Personal Dancer by two lengths. Miss Pocket Court is racing second by two. Then it's Chris's dear Debbie in third, and a gap of about seven lengths to Rebecca Lauren in fourth. The first quarter went in 23 and four. They straighten away now and move down the back stretch. Leader is Personal Dancer. She's in front by three and a half. Miss Pocket Court is second by two and a half. Then Chris's Dear Debbie in third. It's a gap now of about a dozen lengths to Rebecca Lauren in fourth. The half mile went in 47 and one. It is Personal Dancer in front by three and a half lengths. Miss Pocket Court is second by three. Then Chris's Dear Debbie in third. About 15 lengths to Rebecca Lauren, still in fourth. They're moving into the far turn. It is the favorite personal dancer, continuing to show the lead. The lead is three and a half, now four lengths. Personal dancer in front, three quarters in 111 and four. It's personal dancer by four on the turn. Miss Pocket Court is second. Chris's dear Debbie in third. 10 lengths to Rebecca Lauren in fourth. The field is moving for the head of the stretch. Personal Dancer. She's been in front every step. She continues to lead it by four lengths. Miss Pocket Court is second, then Chris's dear Debbie and Rebecca Lauren. They're in the stretch now, and Personal Dancer is in front by four lengths. Miss Pocket Court in second on the outside, Chris's dear Debbie, then Rebecca Lauren coming for the 16th pole. Personal Dancer in front. On the outside, Chris's dear Debbie moving into second. They come for the line. Personal Dancer will do it. Wire she may be tiring towards the end of this Debbie race, but to whom? She's already buried those behind her, has Personal Dancer. John Paracella picks up another winner for the Lawson Stables. Jerry Bailey's up. And in this field of, I believe, four, maybe it's five, Personal Dancer, 360, 240 out. Chris's Dear Debbie, 280 out. Miss Pockett Court finished third. 
And there's four nine double incidentally, it's 15, 20, and there are so few in the third race, we got an instant double there. They're going five furlongs. These are maiden Philly two-year-old state breads. Uh, Leo O'Brien is sending out two, fills the field, but only one betting interest. Petunia Cougay, Alden's Breath, Mike Smith. Subway Sunrise, Alvarado, Prom Nights out. Follow the flag, Eddie Maple, Castigating's out. Devil at Julie Crone, Forever Proud is gone. Subway Sunrise on the inside goes for the early lead. Aiden's Breath on the outside is second. Follow the flag is third. Then it's Devilette and Petunia. The two-year-olds move around the far turn, and Subway Sunrise gets clear now by five lengths. Aiden's Breath is racing second between horses. Devilette is third on the outside. Petunia, follow the flag, is back into fifth. The quarter mile in 22 and one. Subway Sunrise in front by three lengths. Aiden's Breath is second. On the inside is Devilette as they hit the head of the stretch. Subway Sunrise with the lead. The lead is two lengths. Devilette is now moving into second. Aiden's Breath on the outside in third. Past the eighth pole. Subway Sunrise under the whip, still with a short lead. Devilette coming on between horses. On the outside is Aiden's Breath. It's going to be tight as they come for the line. Aiden's Breath and Devilette heads apart. Too tight to call as they hit the line. All things Aiden's considered, it's a pretty good finish. Devilette. That's uh, Aiden's Breath. Richard Bomsey sends out a pair of compliance fillies. This one, they started an open company the first time. She drops in here. She's going to get it just by a bob of the head. And uh, Devilette, a first by Claremont, that was the favorite in the instant double, gets second. But I'd Aiden's Breath, and one part of my program, it's Alden, and one it's Aiden's, but it's really Aiden's Breath. That's for Richard Bomsey, Leo O'Brien, and Mike Smith. 520, 2.20, out. Devilette, 2.40, out. Subway Sunrise was third. That instant double, the 9-1, 12-60. On to the fourth. They're going a mile and eight. Phillies and Mayors, four and up. Bottom claim is 14, down to 12. Music Tower, Chavez. Take a powder, Mike Smith's on that favor. It's another instant double. Ski at dawn, Dale Beckner, Saratoga, April Mojica. She's his equal, Georgina Frost, Irish intern, Mike Luzzi. Says you, one dance, Tony Mickens, Pretty Dolly, Michelle Luttrell, Caged Heart Scratch. Dolly on the extreme outside. Irish intern, Saratoga April right there, and down on the rail, it's Take a Powder. As they move down the chute, Take a Powder now with the short lead. Saratoga April, Ski at Dawn, Pretty Dolly all heads apart. Then She's is equal in fifth. On the inside is Music Tower Racing sixth. Then we come back to Irish intern and Seju One Dance. The quarter in 23 and three as they move down the back stretch and the favorite take a powder has the lead by a length and a half. Saratoga April is second, Music Tower now in third on the inside. Then it's a gap of two to Ski at Dawn in fourth. Pretty Dolly is next on the inside as she's is equal. Then says you one dance and Irish in turn. The half mile in 46 and four and take a powder. Will take the field into the far turn with a length and a half lead. Music Tower on the inside, now second by a head. Saratoga April is third by a length and a half. Ski at Dawn is fourth by five. Then it says you one dance, Irish in turn. She's his equal and pretty Dolly. Three quarters, one eleven and three. Take a powder has the lead by three quarters of a length. Music Tower has moved to the outside and now moves alongside of Take a Powder. Ski at Dawn is racing third. They hit the head of the stretch. Take a Powder once again gets clear by a length and a half. Music Tower is next. Ski at Dawn is racing third. Says you one dance farther back and forth, coming for the 16th pole. Take a Powder. It's actually the... nice of Mike Smith to give the mayor Take a Powder a breather approaching the quarter pole. At least it looked like she might get caught. But once he reached the top of the stretch, he lets her out. She just repeats what she did to them on May 28th. Take a powder. They don't repeat too often at this level, but she's been fairly consistent. The Jock Farm, Gasper, Mochera, Mike Smith, take a powder. New York Red pays 4 3 320 Music Tower, 4 340 Ski at Dawn, 540 the exact at 2 1 is 17.60. Quinella 1 2 2 1 13's 80. 
Think you can't afford Europe this summer? Think again. Leisure Air's European Express introduces DC-10 service from New York to London, starting at just $399 round trip. And New York to Paris, also starting at just $399 round trip. Service begins July 3rd, but we're taking reservations right now. Call 1-800-908-5000 to reserve your seat. Leisure Air's European Express. This summer, you can afford Europe. This week, check out Sports Channel. Wednesday, the Mets aim to end their road trip by knocking off the Rockies. Thursday, they're back at Shea for a slugfest with the Expos. The Mets versus the Rockies and Expos. Live this week, only on Sports Channel. Sports Channel is proud to present the sixth consecutive season of our summer racing series from Yonkers, featuring some of the sport's biggest races. Catch the season premiere of Summer Racing 94, Saturday, June 18th, only on Sports Channel. We're not used to this many instant doubles. The one-two instant double, third to fourth race, $14.40. So let's get to the fifth. This is a mile and the 16th, originally on the inner turf, now on the main. Three-year-old fillies all in for $35,000. Rupido going for the lead. Jen John came away in second. Naval Guardian is third. Blocko on the outside in fourth. Then Shane's Cowgirl and Blazing Clearance is sixth. Down the back stretch, Me Rupido in front by three and a half. Naval Guardian and Jen John are heads apart for second. The quarter went in 23 and one. And then it's Blocko on the outside in fourth, followed by Blazing Clearance and Shane's Cowgirl. They continue down the back stretch with May Ropido in front by two lengths. Naval Guardian is second between horses, Jen John in third. On the outside, Balaco is now a closer fourth and continues to gain ground. Then we come back to Blazing Clearance and Shane's Cowgirl. The half went in 46 and three. They're around the far turn. May Ropido in front by a little more than a length. Balaco on the outside is second. Blazing Clearance gains on the inside. Then it's Nadian, Shane's Cowgirl, and Jen John. They're moving for the head of the stretch. Three quarters in 111 and three. It's May Ropido with a short lead. Balaco on the outside. Balaco on the outside now puts a head in front. May Ropido is back into second. Blazing Clearance gains ground from third. They're coming for the eighth pole. Balaco in front by two lengths. Blazing Clearance is second at the 16th pole. Balaco in front by two lengths. Blazing Clearance is second. For the I don't think this uh, filly came back too happy, but at least she got herself over the line. Balaco, probably the most, the one who benefited the most when it came off the turf. She's a main track only. She just wires them. Uh, Jimmy Riccio, John Paracella, and Frank Alvarado. 340, 280-220. Blazing Clearance, 620, 320, Jean Jean, 280 to show. Exactly the old 145, 3280. Here's the sixes, a sprint, four and up, 35 down to 30 tags. A Hushin sending out Wonder Car with Frank Lovato, game wages out, but he left in memorized with Michelle Luttrell. Real Cielo, Santos, Gravel King, Filberto Leon. Gallopat's moment, Luzzy, top the record, Chavez. Ocean Splash, Macaulay, Gold Candy 2, Smith. They're up. On the inside, it's Wonder Car. Gravel King is right there. Real Cielo is racing third. On the far outside is Gold Candy 2. Galapiad's moment is in fifth. Memorize racing sixth. Top the record is seventh and a gap of five to Ocean Splash in eighth. Moving into the far turn, between horses, Gravel King on the inside is Wonder Car, and on the outside is Gold Candy 2. The quarter went in 22 and 3. And then it's a gap of two and a half to Real Cielo in Galapiat's moment. Memorized is next, followed by Top the Record and Ocean Splash. They're moving for the head of the stretch. 
on the inside wonder car now takes the lead wonder car in front by a length and a half as they turn for home gravel king is dropped back gold candy two on the outside is memorized galapiad's moment on the far outside top the record ocean splash looking for racing room down on the inside it's real cielo coming for the 16th pole wonder car in front memorized coming quickly on the outside ocean splash on the far outside as they hit the line the entry running one there's a good use of an entry even though they're different owners wonder car main speed goes out sets the pace as ordered looks like looks like wonder car may be home here comes the old stable mate memorized under michelle luttrell and wins it going away lou donato gino molinero mike hushin and michelle luttrell Four dollars, three eighty, two eighty. Wonder Car, same bet. Ocean Splash finishes third, rounds out the exact of three eighty to show, and that one six is twenty eight eighty. Here's the seventh. This is seven furlongs, Phillies and Mayors, three and up. Now one is a race other than. Alan Jerkins is sending out a pair. Keela with Frost waving the flag, Leon. Recognizable, Mike Smith. Seeking the circle, Jerry Bailey. This one took a lot of money. Return to Mom, Crone. Winona, John Velasquez. Miss Prospect, the favorite with Santos. They're up. Winona and Miss Prospector on the outside go for the lead. Recognizable moves up towards the inside. Oscilla is next. They race down the back stretch. Recognizable now heads apart for the lead. A gap of two to Oscilla in third. Miss Prospector races fourth. Then seeking the circle in fifth. On the inside is waving the flag in sixth. And return of mom is seventh. The quarter in 22 and three recognizable on the inside now takes the lead by a half length winona on the outside is second by two and a half and seeking the circle has gained ground into third miss prospector on the outside is fourth and it's a gap of three to oscilla followed by waving the flag and return of mom the half mile at 45 and one on the inside, recognizable. On the outside, Winona. They're still heads apart for the lead. Seeking the circle is gained on the outside. Farther out, it's Miss Prospector. They're at the head of the stretch. Seeking the circle now gets the lead. It's seeking the circle by two lengths. On the inside, recognizable with Winona. Then it's Miss Prospector waving the flag with a late run on the outside. They're coming for the line, seeking the circle. Will win it, Winona. Late money was right this time. Late money was on the money. Seeking the circle, she was second in the tempted. Uh, then she ran at Gulfstream in March, didn't run well at all. Been away since March 1st. Torse has never gone off better than two to one. They've always liked her. That late money said she's ready to throw in a good one. The late money, as we said, was on the money and seeking the circles home. Caesar Kimmel, Philip Solons, John Kimmel's the trainer, Jerry Bailey. 580-340, Winona, 563, recognizable, 460. The exact of three fives, forty-eight dollars. The pick three, fourteen, one and three, forty-six dollars. The Daily Racing Form Thoroughbred Action, brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, the best friend a handicapper could have. When they're off. Are you in the money? You are when you read the daily racing form, the authority since 1894. Only the form gives you the most accurate and complete past performances. Speed figures from Andy Beyer, the latest workouts, jockey trainer records, dirt, grass, and off-track career boxes, and the insight and opinions of some of racing's best riders and handicappers. So don't get left to the gate. Pick up the daily racing form, the paper to read when you're playing to win. This is it. Yes, Monday, June 13th, marks the opening of Florida's final two-year-olds in training sale for 1994. Your final opportunity to bid and buy a two-year-old in training, who may be just a few weeks from racing and winning. Buyers will have hundreds to select from, and all can be seen under tack on the OBS Regulation Mile Race Track. So be in Ocala, Florida for the Monday, June 13th sale of two-year-olds in training. You will get more for your money, and that's what winning's all about.
Racing's hottest stable, LSI Gold, introduces the most innovative concept in racing today, affordable thoroughbred general partnerships. Right now, LSI Gold is among the leading owners in races won and purses earned. LSI Gold's formula for success is simple. Select development and training of potential high-earning sound thoroughbreds. Remember, the time to call LSI Gold is now, because winning is everything. We're going to permit them on that grass course for this eighth race. It's a mile and a quarter on the inner. The inner is listed as good. These are three and up. Now one is a three other than. Fling's Dream, Juan Humana. Laminate, Jose Santos. Dover Coast, Chavez. Ocean Wave, Julie Crone. No sneaker, Mike Smith. Majesty's Derby, Samin rides the favorite. Dave in a frenzy, Alvarado. They're up. Fling's Dream on the inside. Ocean Wave. Also moving up, Fling's Dream and Ocean Wave heads apart for the early lead. Then Dover Coast in third. No Sneaker is next. Followed by Laminate. Then Dave in a Frenzy. And Majesty's Darby is seventh. The field moves around the clubhouse turn. And Fling's Dream has the lead now by a length and a half. Ocean Wave is racing second by two and a half. Then No Sneaker in third. Dover Coast is fourth. The first quarter went in 24 and three. And now they're moving on to the back stretch. And Fling's Dream continues to lead it by about a length. Ocean Wave is second by three. Then No Sneaker in third. On the inside is Dover Coast in fourth. Laminate on the outside is fifth. And it's a gap of six lengths to Dave in a frenzy and the favorite, Majesty's Darby. The half mile, 49 and four. They're midway down the back stretch. Fling's Dream on the inside, the lead by a half length. Ocean Wave getting closer on the outside in second. Now it's a gap of about eight lengths. Back to No Sneaker and Dover Coast. Three more to Laminate. Three more to Majesty's Darby. And far back is Dave in a frenzy. Three quarters, one 13 and three. They're moving around the far turn. Fling's Dream is still in front on the inside, a half length. Osh racing second. Now the rest of them are getting closer. No Sneaker, Laminate, Dover Coast, and Majesty's Darby all closing ground on the front runners. They are at the head of the stretch. Fling's Dream clinging to a short lead. On the outside is Ocean Wave. No Sneaker is right there. Dover Coast looks for room on the inside. Then it's Laminate and Majesty's Darby. They're coming for the 16th pole. It's Ocean Wave with a short lead. No Sneaker is next. Majesty's Darby is flying on the outside. They're coming for the line. Majesty's Darby gets... Victory. Good super grass race, a nice finish. Majesty's Derby, the one they made the favorite. That's James Phillips, Joan Phillips, and John Phillips, the old Derby Dan people, Jimmy Toner, the trainer, Jean Luc Samine. The last jump, people who were betting the favorite had a little bit of a problem for a while, but Jean Luc gets Majesty's Derby up. There was a foul claim by the rider of the third horse, Julie Crone, against the second horse, no sneaker was not allowed. Majesty's Derby returns, 563, 20 and three. No sneaker, 585, Ocean Wave three. The exact is six and five, 41, 20. Rapid, oh, I'm sorry, keep forgetting that. 96 winners of pick six, looks like a markdown from retail, 1498. Five correct, 1,273 tickets, $24. Ninth is at seven furlongs, maiden fillies and mares, three and up, claiming tags 35 to 30. Outside towards the inside is Touch of Nature. Moving up on the outside is All a Spin, and All a Spin now has the lead. Touch of Nature, Hill Razor heads apart second and third. Share Secrets is fourth. Wendy's Term in fifth. On the inside is Dante's Brew in sixth. Scam is now racing seventh. Then Belgian Bell in eighth. Just Said No is ninth, followed by Duke's Absolute, Sequitur, and Miss Instrumental. The quarter in 22 and two, they move into the far turn. All a spin, short lead. Hill Razor on the outside now challenging and Hill Razor goes on with it to take the lead. Alongside of Hill Razor is Touch of Nature. They're heads apart now for the lead. Share Secrets is third, Wendy's term on the outside fourth. Then Dante's Brew followed by Scam. Then it's Sequitur and just said no. They're moving for the head of the stretch. 
touch of nature on the outside. Hill Razor towards the inside. They're heads apart. Dante's Brew is behind those in third. Wendy's Terms on the outside gains ground. They're in the stretch. Hill Razor, Touch of Nature, still heads apart. Wendy's Terms on the outside. Down on the inside, it's Dante's Brew. They're coming for the 16th pole. Touch of Nature now takes the lead. Dante's Brew on the inside with Hill Razor. Then it's just said no. Touch of Nature will win it by a length and a half. Dante's this Brew. is a good one for the OTB play as a 1-2-3 box will bring you the triple. Touch of Nature, the Jewel Brand Farm, Frank Garofolo and Chavez get the money. 660-423. Dante's Brew, the number two horse, 1160-460. Hill Razor ran just as well with the pads as without them. Mile on the 16th, inner, four and up, all in for 35. The Frisky Chavez, Djokovic Davis, Alpstein Migliori, Gold Dust Leon, Ebony Magic McCauley, T. Barone, John Velasquez, Southern Slew Mike Smith, pencils out, Sea Voyage Beckner. And they're off. Lefrisky comes out quickly at the rail. Ebony Magic with good speed. Goldust is there. Southern Slew toward the far outside. Djokovic benefiting from his inside post. Making the bend toward the back stretch. It's Lefrisky who's out there with the lead. And Ebony Magic in pursuit now, edging closer to Lefrisky. It's two lengths back on the outside. Southern Slough will run third in the early going. Djokovic is back to fourth while saving ground. Then it's Gold Dust. Alpstein hemmed in down toward the inside. Sea Voyage three wide. T. Baronius four wide. The opening quarter goes in 24 and one fifth seconds, and Lefrisky moving at a good clip here, leading by two and a half lengths. Ebony Magic still pursuing second. It's a break of five, and Djokovic now is edging up into third. Southern Slough between horses is fourth. On the far outside, Sea Voyage fifth. Alpstein and behind horses running sixth. And T. Baroni, Gold Dust is now the trailer. Lefrisky has run a solid half here in 47 and three and still leads by two and a half lengths. Ebony Magic, Herb McCauley asking a bit more from him. The others are gaining ground. Djokovic, third toward the inside, now only four lengths from the lead. Sea Voyage is on the move on the far outside, and Southern Slough is moving in stride with him. T. Baroni is next. Alpstein, four lengths from the front now. Gold Dust is the trailer. Coming to the top of the stretch, Ebony Magic gets on even terms with Lefrisky. Those two turning for home together. Southern Slough is in be between horses. Djokovic is in behind Ebony Magic now, and Djokovic is out for the drive. Alpstein is down the center of the course. That's in front by a neck. Djokovic is right there at his throat, but it's still Ebony Magic fending off Djokovic. Djokovic, a final try as they come down to the line. Ebony Magic, Djokovic. A jockey's objection after this race. If you got the horse, it's a horrible thing. It's a rule. Yes, this is an automatic DQ. The stewards did determine that Ebony Magic and rider Herb McCauley is going to strike Djokovic, the horse on the outside, with Ouch. the whip. As you can see it coming up. It, it's really hard to tell from this, but the stewards did detect that that did happen. That's virtually an automatic DQ. Uh, a tough call if you're going on Ebony Magic Horseman. A very good race. McCauley up to this point, an excellent ride rating, a speedball off the pace, but it's all for naught as Djokovic and Robbie Davis are going to be put up. Ebony Magic did appear to be best, but it has to come down. There you have it. Nice gift on Djokovic, and there's the head that got hit. Uh, Donald Larkin, Richard Barr, Henry Cooperman, Melvin Gang, Mike Kelly, and Robbie Davis. 21 40, 12, 420, Ebony Magic placed second, 563, Alpstein, $3 to show. Two fives, 130, 120. On to the second. This is a sprint. Phillies and Mayors, four and up, 50 down to 45. Heavy favorite entry, Jean's Gray Girl Beckner, water resistant Luzzy. Obligated Sue, Robbie to Sweep. Uh, Alcris Chavez, who's the Queen, Alvarado, Tuesday edition, Latrell, Midway Gal Maple. They're off. Tuesday edition and Al Chris break together. Midway Gals there on the outside. So is water resistant. Jean's Gray Girl off a beat slowly is now rushed up on the inside. Up the back stretch. Tuesday edition short lead. Pressed by Midway Gal. Jean's Gray Girl right there. Down on the fence running in third. Two lengths to water resistant. Al Chris is fourth. Obligated Sue and who's the queen is the trailer. And as they hit the far turn, the quarter goes in 22 and 3 fifths seconds. Tuesday edition short lead. Midway gal on the far outside. There's a big opening at the inside for Jean's Gray Girl, who is sent down through. Two and a half lengths to Obligated Sue, Al Chris, and Water Resistant, who's the queen is far behind to the top of the stretch. Midway gal very down on the inside. Jean's Gray Girl right at her shoulder. It's Tuesday edition. Off the turn and into the stretch. Tuesday edition still has a short lead. Midway gal is there on the far outside. Midway gal is now in front. Tuesday edition running a bit erratically through the stretch. His second and down toward the inside, Jean's Gray Girl. 
It's Midway Gal opening up at the 16th pole. Jeans Gray Girl Tuesday edition, obligated to fourth. Midway Gal wins the length and a half. Woody Stevens won't be represented in the Belmont Stakes yesterday, but he sends a message that he still has it. Midway Gal for Woody Stevens and his old friend Eddie Maple is going to get the job done over the heavily favored Paracella entry. And one thing this would indicate, there's still moisture in that track because this Midway Gal loves it. Russell Reinerman, Woody Stevens, Eddie Maple. 10-63-40-240. Jeans Gray Girl through 22-10. Punch Pass at 260. 6-1, 24-40. 166-178. Early double two six one sixty eight twenty. Five furlongs in the third. Two year old maids, state breads. Skippy shop horse entry. Crafty silver Grayel, silver medalist Chavez. Northern centaurs out. Criminal bundle. Mike Smith on the favorite. Orwin Forrest Santos. Father Shea Luzzy. Key pro crone. Bobby's code Perret. They're off. Criminal Bundle comes out running right to the lead. Bobby's Code rushing up on the far outside. Silver Medalist is there. Key Pro is up and in among horses, running in fourth. Then a break of three back to Crafty Silver, followed by Alwyn Forrest and Father Shea. Around the far turn, Criminal Bundle continues the lead. By length, Key Pro is running second. In between horses, Silver Medalist, and on the far outside, Bobby's Code. Those four heading toward the top of the stretch together and a big break back to Crafty Silver, Alwyn Forrest and Father Shea. It's still Criminal Bundle. Mike Smith hand riding Criminal Bundle into the stretch with a host of pursuers on the far outside, Bobby's Code, Silver Medalist in between horses and down inside Key Pro. Still giving futile chase to Criminal Bundle. Smith takes a peek back and the others are just getting farther away. Good looking performance here from Criminal Bundle. It's a romp. You by seven. Crafty Silver will come up to be second. Criminal, Criminal Bundle, Bundle took some money, particularly some late money, and runs right to it. This is from the first crop of Criminal Type, former horse of the year. I presume his first ever winner. Haven't been able to look that up. The time here, 57 and 4. Fastest two year old five for a long time in the meet. Bundle of Joy, that's the Cooper Coy's Joy. The line, Robert Perez trying to get the money to enter Ulysses. Criminal Bundle, Calais the trainer, Mike Smith up. 563, 2280. Crafty Silver, 3240. Father Shea, 340. The exact of 3 1, 2380. On to the fourth. Mile and a 16th on that firm inner turf. He's a four year old's and up, claiming tags all 35. And they're off. Punch passer gets out first. Known Ranger broke well. On the far outside, it's bonus award. Deja's coming up on the inside. Northern Witness in between horses. Saratoga Ridge steadied a bit and checking hard there on the first turn. Northern Witness. Northern Witness was checked hard. Into the back stretch, punch pass of the leader. Bonus award prompting second. Deja headstrong in hand running in third. Known Ranger settles down in fourth position. Lou is fifth on the outside, four links from the lead. Down to his inside, it's Northern Witness. Saratoga Ridge, the gray is second to last. Boss Ben Jarrett is the trailer. The opening quarter went in 24 and one fifth seconds. The field moving up the back stretch, punch passer head to head with Deja. Deja by a head, punch pass pressing second and bonus award kept close to them running third known ranger is now running in fourth position about five lengths from the front saratoga ridge has made progress toward the rail in between horses it's northern witness lou is unhurried near the back of the pack it's another three back to boss ben jarrett they're a half mile from the line they've run a half in 47 and two fifth seconds rounding the fire turn punch passer and deja have been going at it head to head the whole way there goes known ranger with a sweeping move on the far outside to the lead known Rangers in front. Bonus award is second. Punch passer back to third. Deja couldn't keep up that pace and dropped back sharply. Saratoga Ridge had to check in behind the stopping horse. At the top of the stretch, known Ranger came a bit wide into the stretch, but he's in front by a neck. On the inside, bonus award is battling on. Bonus award, known Ranger. Known Ranger and bonus award, neither giving an inch now. Northern Witness is third. Known Ranger on the outside. Bonus award, they're still inseparable. Bonus award has that something left to prevail. 
Bonus award one last time out for trainer Frank Ferriola. Today it's under the name of John Paracella. Results are the same. Two wins right back to back on the grass. Is going to outgame the old favorite here, number five, known Ranger. At eight years old, he might finally be getting a little bit old on his best days. He could easily win a race like this. Favorites inverted. Bonus award, Jimmy Riccio, John Paracella, Mike Lussie, 1060, 360, 220. But yeah, I think that was the second choice. Known Ranger, 240, 210, Northern Witness, 210. The 9.5s, 2520, Quinella 5995, $10. 90 miles from New York City, there's an entire world like you've never seen before. The Concord Resort Hotel, Championship Golf, Indoor and Outdoor Tennis, Live Entertainment with the biggest names in show business. A million activities just for the kids, and much, much more. So leave your world behind and lose yourself in ours for a while. The Concord Resort Hotel. For reservations, call 1-800-CONCORD. Sports Channel turns up the heat in June. Bobby Bo and the Mets slug it out with National League rivals in 18 games. At the plate with Rusty Staub serves up great baseball talk. Dynamets pitches baseball fun for the entire family. Catch the U.S. prepping for the World Cup on the World Series of Soccer. Summer Racing 94 is the place to be for live harness racing from Yonkers. And get same-day thoroughbred racing results from Belmont. It's all for you in June on Sports Channel. Here's the fifth mile and the 16th on the firm Widener turf. These are Phillies and Mayors three and up. Now I'm winners of two other than that. Dayflower comes out first. K-Bomb is right there with her. K-Bomb and Dayflower will vie for the lead. A light and love down on the inside running third. Then it's Lescapade. Dahar's best with an aggressive early move. Into the backstretch. K-Bomb with the lead. Jean-Luc Samin trying to hold back Dayflower. Indeed it does as Dahar's best moves back third on the outside. And now Dahar's best up to take the lead. Dahar's best is the leader, followed by K Bomb running in second. And Dave Flower, the favorite, has been wrangled back into third position. Another two and a half lengths back to our dear Dana. Let's Capay down on the inside, Light and Love. And Symphony Ladies just in behind that group. Then a break of six back to Dana's wedding, the trailer. Up the back stretch, the quarter in 24 and one fifth seconds. Dahar's best in front, a length and a half. K Bomb is running in second. Dave Flower, a hard held third, the half. 47 and 1 fifth seconds. Let's get paid fourth. Symphony Lady now being moved to the outside for clear running in fifth. Light and Love back to sixth. Then our dear Dana and Dana's wedding. Around the far turn, K Bomb has overtaken the lead from Dahar's best, but Day Flower looms a threatening third. Just in behind them, it's Let's Get Fourth, and Symphony Lady is only three lead. Off the turn and into the stretch, K-Bomb and Dave Flower are stride for stride. Symphony Lady now called on for her best. Down to mid-stretch, Dave Flower getting away from K-Bomb will face a challenge from Symphony Lady. Dave Flower now put to a drive by Samin. Here comes Symphony Lady with a thrust to the lead on the outside. Symphony Lady gets to the lead 100 yards from the line to win by a length and a half. In the press box before the race, Dave Litfin told me this favorite Dave Flower is going to get beat. He said the reason is, and we have a new term, is going to Euro bounce. By that, he meant that horses coming over from Europe in their second starts in the U.S. often run poorly. And though Dave Flower didn't run badly, was not nearly as good as last time out actually euro bounce that's an old uh, rule it really is that they run one good one when they get here she'll be back though symphony lady a little reversal of ride there too julian cohen scotty shulop jose with a nice off the pace move 620 260 220 day flower 240 220 dana's wedding 340. the exact one in five the two favorites inverted 1640. here's the six seven furlongs three-year-olds claiming tags 50 to 45. Talk to my lawyer, Robbie Davis is on the favorite. Feeling Festival, Mike Smith. Rogers Charter, Ruben Hernandez, C. Lenny Run, Crone. Magic's Cause, Tony Mickens, Index Fund, Chavez, Creston House, Dale Beckner. They're off. Creston House breaking sharply from the far outside. And in between horses, there goes Index Fund after the lead. And on the inside, Feeling Festival, Index Fund to the front. 
Feeling fence still now back, running in second. Rajah's charter is third. And there goes Magic's cause between horses on the far outside. It's Creston House. Then a break of three to C. Lenny Run, who's running wide down the back stretch. Talk to my lawyer, the trailer. Up the back stretch, they rattled off a quarter in 22 and 3. Creston House right to the neck of index fund. And those two hook up in a duel into the far turn. And it's three lengths back. Rajah's charter being pushed along in third. See Lenny Run has moved up in the pack now to be fourth. Talk to my lawyer hitting his best stride now. Six lengths from the lead. Magic's cause has faded. The trailer is feeling festal. Coming to the top of the stretch, Creston House and Index Fun in a protracted speed duel here as Raja's charter swings into action. On the outside, Talk to My Lawyer gains in a prolonged bid. Three sixteenths from the line. It's Index Fund under a full-out drive here. On the outside, Raja's charter moving up. Creston House couldn't keep up. Talk to My Lawyer is third. The 16th pole, Index Fund still holding on. Raja's charter, one final try. Here's the line. Index Fund, a gritty performance to win by a determined half length. Raja. The winner, Index Fund, never really had it easy. Had to duel with Creston House all down the backstretch, then needed to hold off Raja's charter, who was making a strong late run. Gary Siaka, the winning trainer, finally starting to heat up a little bit after a little bit of a cold run. Bad favorite here, talked to my lawyer. Never bet one move horses on the rail at seven furlongs as favorites, because they got too much to overcome. Index Fund, Clarvich Stable, Gary Siaka, Chavez. 764, 220. Raja's charter, 420, 220. Talked to my lawyer, as Tom said, long sustained drive. 220 to show. The 6-3 exact is 32-20. Here's the seventh. A mile and a sixteenth on the widener. Phillies and mares three and up. Now winners of a race other than maiden, claiming, or starter. And they're off. Coronation Cup comes out running. And there goes Yerna. Yerna to the lead, Coronation Cup, and down to their inside, Via Wood comes up to be second, and Via Wood going on to challenge Yerna for the lead, and Via Wood is in front now. Yerna's running in second. Those two quickly opening up on the field. It's five lengths back to Ganzania. Now moving into third. Coronation Cup is fourth by two. Stall Dancer running in fifth. On the far outside, Silly's Philly is now in sixth. Our Majesty, seventh toward the inside, about ten from the lead. Crandall hard held in between horses. Vice and Ice on the outside. Then Pigeon P. Petitness at the back of the pack is Bet a Million Bach. The opening quarter went in 23 and two fifth seconds. They're heading for the far turn now. Via Wood still in front, pursued by Yerna. Three lengths back, Ganzania called on for a bit more run. And a hard half mile here of 46 and three, set by Via Wood is still in front. Yerna takes another run at her. As they round the far turn, Ganzania's third. Stall Dancer revving up now, fourth and gaining ground on the outside. Star Majesty's had a good trip, only four lengths from the lead while down on the rail. Corner Nation Cup is in between horses now. Pigeon P is circling horses on the far outside. And Vice on Ice, and it's wide open as the field turns for home. Stall Dancers emerging with the lead. Pigeon P is right there on the outside. Coronation Cup is coming up the fence. Yerna now back running in fourth. Then Ganzania, Vice on Ice. Petitness is coming well on the outside. Coronation Cup's in front. And Coronation Cup is getting away by two, by three. It's going to be Coronation. Cup and a runaway. It'll Coronation Cup, the half sister to Sea Hero, gets an absolutely phenomenal trip here. Everybody else goes out on some sort of helter skelter mission. The rail opens up and she's gone. Draws off to win nicely. No doubt a good horse here, well bred, and is the winter book favorite for the Najana Stakes. <laughs> Walks right through her condition, does Coronation Cup. Rokeby Stable, Mac Miller, and Jerry Bailey, a perfect trip. 5, 4, 60, 3, 80. Stall Dancer, big price here, 17, 80, 12, 40. Vice on Ice, 3, 80 to show. The exacto, Richard McCarthy picked it cold. The old 2, 8s, 1, 13, 60. Pick 3, 1, 6, 2, $95. Form Thoroughbred Action, brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, the best friend a handicapper could have. Even when the
the race is over, it's sometimes hard to tell who won. But the best way to pick the winners before they hit the wire is with the new look daily racing form. More workouts with rankings, record at the track and at the distance, expanded race conditions, additional fractional time, front bandages, more European coverage, and more of everything you need to get the complete picture on every race. So before you try to pick your next winner, pick up the daily racing form and see how the best just got even better. Savannah No Wrinkle Pants with Process 2000. They're not the only 100% cotton no wrinkle pants. They're the only ones that'll stay that way. It's because they're the ones made with our exclusive Process 2000. It's washed in, and unlike others, it lasts for the life of the pants. Savannah, the original no wrinkle pants with Process 2000. The only no wrinkle pants that'll stay that way. Here's the eighth, seven furlongs, three and up. Now when it's a two other than. Big Moist, Frank Lovato, Shoal Creek, Robbie Davis. Not for Love, Bailey on the chalk, Kyoko Santos. Golden Larch, Mike Smith. Slew's Ghost, Frank Alvarado, Super Nip, Julie Crone. They're off. Golden Larch, Shoal Creek, Kyoko on the outside, Super Nip and Slew's Ghost. All break quickly. And it's Golden Larch to a short lead. Super Nip there on the outside. Slew's Ghost in between them and taken back into third. Two lengths back, Big Moish. Fourth toward the inside, Kyoko. Not for Love is second to last in the early going. Now about six lengths from the front. Here is Shoal Creek. Stretch, Super Nip, and Golden Larch. Head to head through a hard fought opening quarter of 22 and three. Three lengths back, Slew's Ghost is running in third. Not for Love on the outside. Toward the inside, Big Moish. In behind those two, it's Kyoko. A big break back to Shoal Creek. Shoal Creek is better than 15 from the dueling leaders, Super Nip and Golden Larch, who have dueled through a half of 45 and two fifth seconds. Slew's Ghost continues to run third. Not for Love drawing in closer. Not for Love is coming well on the outside. Then it's Big Moish fifth toward the rail. Kyoko switched to the outside for the stretch drive. It's still a big break back to Shoal Creek. At the top of the stretch, and here comes Not For Love. Not For Love runs by the dueling leaders, but will face a stiff late challenge from Kyoko, who's full of run. Not For Love under a drive. Kyoko right there. Not For Love drifting to the outside. Kyoko takes the lead. It's Kyoko in front and pulls it off. By well, now Robert Perez definitely has the money to enter Ulysses Saturday in the Belmont. Scores with another one, Kyoko. Jose Santos gets the job done for Alfredo Colejas. Horse ran pretty poorly last time out. Maybe it was the mud. Comes back and runs much better today. The favorite in here, the Shug he not for love, the one I liked, probably needed the race. And Golden Larch and Super Nip, a suicide speed duel. No, we uh, couldn't have figured that in advance, but Kyoko takes advantage of it. Two for Perez today, two for Calais, two for Santos. 33.60, 7.80, Not for love, the favorite, 3.20, Slew's Ghost, 3.80. Exact the 4.3, $130.80. Here's the finale. This is seven furlongs, maidens three and up. Claiming tags 35 down to 30. Free Balzac Bobby comes out running. Top speed is there on the outside. Rock Oliver comes up between horses third. Gifted Traven is fourth. Hujak fifth. Robert Barron running in sixth. Blue Eyed Bob is seventh toward the inside. Star Thief is running in eighth. Premier Pierre ninth on the outside. Followed by Hard Live Tabernacle. And the trailer is Landalazi. Up the back stretch. Rock Oliver is the leader by a length. And the opening quarter in 22 and 3 fifth seconds. Rock Oliver leading the way into the fire turn on the outside top speed, pressing second, Rebalzak Bobby third, gifted Traven just off the lead, fourth on the outside, moving toward the lead now. And then it's Premier Pierre running in fifth, only four lengths from the front. Toward the inside, it's Blue Eyed Bob, who Jacques begins to retreat. Then on the outside, Robert Barron and farthest out into the track, Hard Life Tabernacle. They're moving toward the top of the stretch. Rock Oliver still in front. Gifted Traven still pressing second. Top speed just in behind the lead. Third, Premier Pierre looms a strong fourth on the outside. Off the turn and into the stretch. It's Gifted Traven doing battle with Rock Oliver. Rock Oliver's got something left. 
Rock Oliver holding on to the lead by a length and a half. Gifted Traven is running second. Premier Pierre is there on the outside. Star Thief beginning to muscle his way on through, but it's going to be Rock Oliver who bounds under the line. Much the best. He won by four. You have another first time John Paracella in Rock Oliver comes in from the Midwest, shifts into Mr. Paracella's barn and runs very well here. Actually, horse had some good back form and obviously John got the horse to run back to it today. Horse with kind of a strange trip in here, number two, Star Thief was up close early, dropped way back, and then closed again for third, maybe wants a little more distance. Well, John fooled me. Put this in for 30, not 35, and wins for fun. Rick Avery listed as the owner. A Jorge Chavez was up. Paracella, the trainer. 4-3-3-20. Gifted Traven, 6-4-20. Star Thief, 5-80. The exact is 6-11, 33-60. Late double, 4-6, 133-80. Triple, 611 to $200. It was hit, here's tomorrow's scratches. Remember, there's a lot more on the turf than I give you. In the first, take out the 16, dot boom boom, the 18, solar display, 19, continued, 20, slew of rubies. Uh, skip to the sixth race, take out the five, Frank Decord, the nine, Bucks in the Bank. In the seventh, the 10, Adventuristic, the 11, Muddy Waters, the 13, Chicagoland, 17, here's Noah, 20, call me anytime, and in the ninth, the one, Ridge Road. Here's that good pick six information for the one off-track winner, 47489 Five correct, they got $405. Well, we got a little... Express, this summer you can afford Europe. Here's a mile and a sixteenth on that firm inner turf, made in Phillies and Mass, three and up. And they're off. Snobette comes out quickly. On the outside, there goes Sonnet. Sonnet is up and after the lead, and Sonic takes charge. Snobette concedes the lead to Sonnet. Marigel with the lead, third on the outside. Cozy Goldie is taken back into fourth position. Flat Assertion, fifth on the outside. Sam's Diary in a bit tight toward the rail. Racing near the back of the pack in the early going. And then it's My Girl Sabona and La Rima is the trailer, about eight from the lead. The opening quarter in 24 flat. They're into the back stretch now. Sonnet is the leader, pressed by Marigel. Snobet in hand, running in third. Between horses, Koza Goldie now, moving quickly from between horses to be third now, and Snobet now fourth toward the inside. Flat assertion is fifth. Sam's Diary, the favorite, continues to run in mid-pack. Then on the far outside, it's My Girl Sabona, and the trailer is still Larima. The half went in 47 and four. The field moving into the far turn. Marigal now moving after the lead. It's Marigal who takes charge into the far turn, now in front by a neck. Sonnet counters to come back. And those two now tangle around the far turn. It's two lengths back. And now Jerry Bailey guides Sam's Diary to the outside for clear running. In between horses, Koza Goldie toward the inside at Snobet. Farther back, La Rima drawing within striking range. Off the turn and into the stretch. Mari Gell getting to the lead now by a length. On the inside, Sonnet running in second. Snobet between horses is third. Sam's Diary is under a drive, fourth on the outside. At the eighth pole, Mari Gell in front. Sonnet on the inside. On the outside, Sam's Diary, a link behind, 100 yards to come. And Sam's Diary now hitting her best stride late. Mari Gell on the inside, Sam's Diary to win it. One by a length. Mari Gell First two finishers here and a couple of horses. Sam's Diary and Mary Gell ran third and fourth in one of these races back at Aqueduct. Last time out when this race came off the grass, they ran in split divisions of it. Both finished second. Uh, if you put them together, you turned an even money shot into a 15 to 1 shot with the exact here. Not a bad deal. Sam's Diary, Ogden Fifth, Suge McGahee, Jerry Bailey. She returns as the favorite, 420, 260, 220. Mary Gell, 560, 340. The pedigree who a sonnet 340 to show. The exact at 27, 3380. Here's the second. They're going a mile. He's a four and up. The claiming tag's 35 to 30. We have a claim here. The favorite, the number three, two, the twist will go to John Paracella. The uh what, the one was scratched, I'm sorry. Call to rise, seven to two, Macaulay. Majesty's man, six and Luzzy. To the twist, eight to five, Migliori. Slews gold, eight, Chavez. Devoted glory, seven to two, Davis. Bay Park, five and Crone. They're off. Bay Park bounces out toward the inside. It's Majesty's man. Devoted glory's in between horses. A call to rise broke well on the outside, but has gathered back a bit. As the field moves up the backstretch, there's Slews gold to grab the lead. Slew's gold short lead. Bay Park right there with him. To the twist is coming on through. Down toward the inside, Majesty's man. 
And then it's a call to rise. Running in fifth position, followed by Devoted Glory. Five lengths from front to back, and up front it's Lose Gold, the leader. It's Lose Gold through a quarter of 23 seconds flat, and keeping him company is Bay Park on the outside, and to the twist to his inside. Another two and a half length break back to a call to rise. Revving up now, fourth on the outside, Majesty's Man Devoted Glory between horses. Around the fire turn to the twist on even terms here with Slew's Gold. Bay Park tailing off just a bit in third. Call to rise, moving four wide from fourth. Then Devoted Glory and Majesty's Man. Tight pack with three furlongs to run. Slew's Gold, short lead to the twist. A call to rise coming on the outside. Just in behind that group, Majesty's Man is right there running fourth. He'll need some running room, but finding none now. Devoted Glory's right off his flank. Off the turn, into the stretch. A call to rise, surging to the lead. There's running room now for Majesty's Man. Devoted Glory on the outside. Down toward the rail to the twist has given us up and slews go. Inside the final furlong, here comes Majesty's Man under a rousing ride here by Mike Luzzi. Toward the inside, a call to rise. They're streaking to the line together, and Majesty's Man gets there first. One by a hard-fought head, a call to... Favorite to the twist is not what he used to be, is unable to make the lead by himself despite a slow pace. And working out a good inside trip, a horse who dueled big time last time, Majesty's Man comes from off the pace today to get the money at a pretty nice price. I don't think I would have come up with this one. The GLAC Farms, Gregory Martin, Mike Luzzi, Majesty's Man, 1545, 60, 440. Call to rise, 44320, Devoted Glory, 320 to show. The 2172, Quinella 122131, early doubles a pair of twos, 4360. Two baby races today. Here's the first of them. Five furlongs made in Philly, two year olds. El Diablo, Herb McCauley rides the fastest Philly on the grounds at four to five. With the Princess Luzzy, pent up Kiss Smith. See you's out. Wilson's Courage, Robbie Davis. Chin House, Julie Crone. Dances in Gold, Renee Douglas. On the extreme outside, Dances in Gold breaks well and gets to the early lead. Dances in Gold by a length and a half. El Diablo is racing second. Wilson's Courage on the outside, third. Then Pent Up Kiss racing fourth. Chin House is fifth. And a gap of about ten lengths to With a Princess in sixth. They're midway around the turn. Dances in Gold on the inside, leading it by three quarters of a length. On the outside is Wilson's Courage between horses, El Diablo, a length and a half to Chin House and Pent Up Kiss. They're at the head of the stretch. Dances in Gold has the lead as they turn for home. It's Dances in Gold by two lengths. Wilson's Courage is next. Down on the inside is Pent Up Kiss in third. Then it's Chin House and El Diablo. They're coming for the 16th pole. And here comes Pent Up Kiss to take the lead. You like freshman sire Pentelicus, a son of Fabiano? You're cashing here because this is a Pentelicus. Pentelicus exacta. Heavily favored El Diablo was bet strongly. However, showed only three three furlong works. That's red boarding, but it's still valid. Pent Up Kiss, New Farms, Ben Perkins and Mike Smith. 780, 420, 420. Dances and gold. Somebody bet that a favorite pretty good in the show hole. Dances and gold, 440, 380. Wilson's Courage, 440 to show. And that exact of the 37, the Pentelicus Pentelicus, $28. Here's the fourth. This has a claim, too. It's seven furlongs, Phillies and Mass, three and uh, three year olds, 17, 5 to 15, 5. Lucky old Violet in a shake to Bobby Barbera. Nicky Wolf, Alvarado, Rough Machine, Rudy Rodriguez, Monster Order, Ruben Hernandez. Lucky old Violet, Dale Beckner, Charlie Phipps out. Sky Flasher, John Velasquez, Tenant Pocket, Migliori, Euphoric Interlude, Leon. They're off. Sky Flasher comes out first. Euphoric Interlude is there. There goes Nicky Wolf up. And getting the lead now. Nicky Wolf to the front. Sky Flasher second. Lucky old Violet now moving through on the inside. Up into second now and Sky Flasher third. Euphoric interlude is fourth. Then it's ten in pocket fifth, about six lengths from the lead. Monster order and rough machine. Up the back stretch now. Dale Beckner sending the favorite lucky old Violet to the lead early. The quarter goes in 22 and four fifth seconds. Lucky old Violet dashing away by two and a half lengths. Nikki Wolf couldn't match her strides. Euphoric interlude three wide. Sky Flashers in between horses. A break of five to ten in pocket. A break of seven to Monster Order. Rough machine trailing. Rounding the far turn. It's still Lucky old Violet leading the way. 
In between horses, Sky Flasher. On the outside, Euphoric Interlude. Nicky Wolf toward the inside, trying to come on again. By the back, ten in pocket. Taking to the outside, the half in 46 and 1. They're at the top of the stretch. Lucky old Bonnet in front. Here comes Nicky Wolf again on the inside. Nicky Wolf reclaiming the lead from Lucky Old Violet, who is laboring now. And in the meantime, Ten and Pocket blows by them all. Ten and Pocket in front, Sky Flasher second, Nicky Wolf third, Lucky Old Violet is gone. Heavily favored Lucky Old Violet is off a couple steps slow, and that really costs her. Dale Beckner rushes her up through a quick pace. She has nothing left in the stretch, and along to pick up the pieces are Ten and Pocket and Sky Flasher. Ten and Pocket, Morty Finkelstein, Joan Imperio, Richard Migliori, 13, 480, 360. Sky Flash of 4, 320. Nikki Wolf, $5. The exact is 7, 6, 40, 40. Quinella, 6, 7, 7, 6, 14, 80. of owning a new GMC Safari are seemingly endless. Its lease, however, is only for 24 months. The Safari 24-month GMAC Smart Lease. See your Tri-State GMC truck dealer. Sports Channel's Newsport gives you the latest on sports. Get the scores, the highlights, the inside stories. Go behind the numbers and hear from players and coaches. Preview your team with pre- and post-game analysis and recap. It's all on Sports Channel's Newsport. Friday, Sports Channel hits the fairway for the Michael Jordan Ronald McDonald Golf Classic. Celebrities include Ernie Banks, the Iceman, Globetrotters Curly Neal, and reigning champ Rick Roden. The Michael Jordan Golf Classic, Friday at 8 on Sports Channel. And we'll run it again, made in Philly, two-year-olds going five furlongs. Only here, there's no fastest in the world. Favorites, actually, three to two. Cara R., Herb McCauley, Garden Secrets, Jerry Bailey. Doppelow Espresso, that's the favorite, Santos. World's Girl, Mike Smith, Lawrence Prospect's out. Journey Proud, John Velasquez, so cheerful's out. Ready for a start. They're off. Cara R. comes out running. Kara R. sent to the lead after breaking well. Dopio Espresso was there. Whirls Girl. Journey Proud was off a beat slowly, but has quickly joined the leaders in the early trailer Garden Secrets. Rounding the far turn now, four abreast across the track. Whirls Girl, Dopio Espresso. Farthest out, Journey Proud. Kara R. backing up. Garden Secrets coming on. Midway round the turn, three furlongs from the line. The opening quarter, 22 and 1. It's Dopio Espresso toward the inside. Whirls Girl right there with her on the outside. Journey Proud trying to keep up. In behind horses, Garden Secrets. Kara Ars drop back the trail. Off the turn and into the stretch. Whirls Girl under a hand ride. Now beginning to edge away from Dopio Espresso. Garden Secrets is third. Whirls Girl opening up by two. Usually when an outfit sends in two two-year-olds on the same card, one is good and one isn't. Well, it turns out one was good and the other's better. First one, Pent Up Kiss, cost 105000 This one, World's Girl, cost only seventy five, but runs faster. She's a full sister to Pago Fire and might be a very nice horse. She's the one that uh, Bill Finley gave out breaking his nine-year drought. I thought after Perkins won the third, he had bet the wrong two-year-old, but nope. World's Girl, New Farm wins another. Ben Perkins Sr., another. Mike Smith, another. They sweep the two-year-olds. 820-360-220. Dapio Express, 3220. Garden Secrets, 220 to show. The four threes, twenty-five dollars. Here's the six. It's a mile and a sixteenth on the wide, and a three and up. Now one is a two. Other than, and they're off. Flaming Falcon gets out first. On the outside, Penine Ridge. There goes Best Selection up and after the lead. Best Selection takes charge early. Penine Ridge is right there with them. Possibilities is sent up third on the outside. Flaming Falcon back to fourth. Draw point is fifth. And Lahit settles in sixth. Eight links from the lead. Warm Wayne seventh. Johnny's Glory eighth on the outside. Goodbye, Doni in tight traffic. Then a break of five. Back to the trailer, same old bush. Up the back stretch. Penine Ridge the leader. Best Selection coming up after the lead. The quarter goes in a strong 23 flat down the back stretch, Pennine Ridge by a length. Now best selection settling down, second on the outside. Flaming Falcon rating at the inside, third possibilities in hand, fourth. Lahint has been taken to the outside, clear of traffic in fifth position. 
And then it's Warm Wayne who's making progress at the rail. Johnny's Glory on the outside. In between horses, goodbye, Tony, still in a bit of traffic. Moving round goes draw point. Same old wish, the trailer. Rounding the far turn, the half. 46 seconds flat, midway point on the turn. A nine ridge with a short lead, still trying to fend off best selection. Three lengths back to Lahint, running third. Flaming Falcon toward the inside, now being helped along in fourth. Warm Wayne is fifth as the field turns for home. Best selection on the outside, Penine Ridge at the rail. Lahint is put to a full out drive, third, and here he comes. They're coming to the final for long. Penine Ridge has reclaimed the lead, but Lahint is hitting his best stride and roars by to get the lead as they come to the 16th pole. It's Lahint in front and pulling away. Penine Ridge, best selection, Warm Wayne, left in the wake of Lahint, a four-length winner. Tight First, second, Penine Ridge and Warm Wayne. Well, I thought this was a good spot to take a shot against Lahint first time on the grass. Boy, was I wrong. This full brother to Hansel really takes to the grass. This is an extremely fast race, under 140, compared to the other race at a mile and a 16th on the widener. Penine Ridge, who ran very well as a two-year-old on the grass last year, sets a quick pace here and holds for second. I agree with you about Lahint. We weren't even together, so we both ripped. Mark Toom, Al Mark Toom, Billy Mott, Mike Smith, the full brother does it. A 584, 20, 340. Panine Ridge runs well, 484. Warm Wayne, 420. The 45, 37, 20. Here's the seven, the mile and a 16th on the inner, three and up, now wins a race other than. Devil Be Gone, three to one, Julie Crone, Dixie Reef out. Out from under nine to two and Luzzy. Balsam Bandit's your favorite, three to two, Chavez is up. Serious Spender, 24, John Velasquez. Darby Stubbles, five and Perrette. Lucky Perry, 50 with Alvarado. Sangre de Toro, 11 and Maple. Nice try, George, eight and Ruben Hernandez. They're off. There goes Balsam Bandit up after the lead. Devil Be Gone broke sharply from the inside. Lucky Perry moving aggressively early. And on the outside, nice try, George. Lucky Perry caught out three wide. Devil Be Gone secures his position at the inside as Balsam Bandit battles away in between him. Nice try, George. Tucks away in fourth behind a lively pace here. Two and a half lengths back to Sirius Spender. A big break of seven back to Darby Stubbles. Down toward the inside out from under. And the trailer is Sangre de Toro. 22 and one opening quarter. They're sizzling in the early going and Lucky Perry has taken a clear lead. Now in front by three, running an enterprising race here. Balsam Bandit is running in second. Nice try, George, third on the outside. Devil Be Gone, now taken back into fourth. And then it's Sirius Spender, fifth on the outside, about seven lengths from the lead. A break of four back to out from under, followed by Darby Stubbles and Sangre de Toro. 45 and one, grueling half mile. They round the far turn. There goes Balsam Bandit, who's taking charge now. Nice try, George, is right there on the outside, running in second. And here comes Sirius Spender up into third. Out from under, who was lagging behind early, moving into contention on the outside. Devil Be Gone is still in with a chance. Off the turn, into the stretch. Nice try, George, has a short lead. Balsam Bandit trying to fight with him. On the outside, out from under is coming well. Sirius Spender's in between horses and closing fast. Eighth pole is... It's Sirius Spender and out from under, going at it, head to head. Darby Stubbles is closing late on the far outside. Out from under, short lead. Sirius Spender, second best. Out from under wins. Petty and patient ride from Mike Lesley. Out from under had a pretty rough trip, finishing second in the very key Mr. Impatience race here uh, back on May 12th. Today he runs down all the speed, and Sirius Spender holds extremely well to be second and complete a very big exacta. And uh, Devil Be Gone, that's the half to lose. This doesn't do as well as Lahint as the full to Hansel did in the previous race, thus uh, forcing Finley not to go two for two. He's one for two. Still okay. The winner is out from under the DZ Stable and Donine Hunold, John Hurtler, the trainer, Mike Luzzi aboard. $11.45, $44. Serious spender. Anyone who likes to bet on a son of squander on the grass is collecting. $16.20, $10.80. Darby struggles a little wide. $5 to show. The exact of 3.5 is 198.80. Pick 3.4.4.3, The Daily Racing Form Thoroughbred Action. Brought to you by The Daily Racing Form. The best friend a handicapper could have. 
When you come to Belmont Park Saturday, June 11, you'll get more than a great day of racing. You'll get a coupon for a free daily racing form handicapping video when you come back on Sunday. Playing to Win takes you inside racing to show you how the pros pick their winners. Speed figures, trip handicapping, workout patterns, and breeding angles are just a few of the helpful handicapping tips that can really pay off. And they're yours free with paid admission. The more you watch, the more you learn, the more you win. So come out to Belmont Park Saturday, June 11th, and you're sure to go home a winner. Need 10 good reasons to go to Florida? Well, SunJet has one great reason. On SunJet, you can fly from New York via Newark to St. Petersburg or to Fort Lauderdale for just $69 each way. Seats are limited at this special fare, so call now to reserve yours. That's 1-800-4-SUNJET. SunJet, we've got your ticket to the sun. Here's the eighth race, a mile and a sixteenth on the wide, and the Phillies and Mayors three and up. Now one is a four other then. And if you bet late doubles, there will be a vet scratch or at least a gate scratch in the next race. The number 11 sailing on a prayer in the ninth. Uh, Siaka's entry, Eeny, Meeny, Miney, Robbie Davis, Kuru, Clotter, Chavez. Sway, Baby, Sway, Mike Luzzi, Dahlia's Dreamer, Eddie Maples on the chalk. Beloved B, John Velasquez, Irving's girl, Julie Crone, Cassie B, Jerry Bailey, Bonnie Shopper's out, Blazing Katie, Samine, La Piaf, Santos, Star Guess Perret. They're in the gate. They're off. Shway Baby Shway is out quickly. Kuru Klata also broke well. Shway Baby Shway to the lead by length. Kuru Klata conceding the early lead to run in second. Cassie B is third on the outside. Beloved B between horses fourth. Eeny Meeny Mani is fifth. Dolly is dreamer. Checked hard. While in behind, horses sixth. Checked repeatedly, in fact. On the outside, Blading Casey is now running in seventh position, followed by Irving's girl, La Piaf, star guest at the back of the pack. Up the back stretch. And Eddie Maple could hold Dahlia's dreamer no more, and she muscles her way right up to the lead. Shway Baby Shway counters the comeback, and those two are going head to head. Eeny Meeny Miney lagging off them, running in third. Kuru Clada between horses fourth, along with Beloved B. Cassie B is four wide down the back stretch, farther back. Blazing Katie and an unhurried Irving's girl. The trailers are star guest and Lapia. The quarter went to 24 and three. The half is gone in 47 and two. They hit the far turn. Dahlia's dreamer and Shway Baby Shway continue to slide. Plug it out. Cassie B picks him up now. Third on the outside. Irving's girl had a good trip while in behind the lead. Then beloved B, Kuro Clatter. And on the far outside, Blazing Katie is circling horses now. And La Piaf is following that move. At the back of the pack and in behind horses are Irving's girl and star guest. They're together. Six lengths from the lead as they turn for home. Off the turn and Blazing Katie comes sweeping past the field to take the lead. Cassie B is second. La Piaf set down for the drive on the outside third. Irving's girl is now fourth on the extra outside in mid stretch here comes La Piaf who's full of run and runs by Blazing Katie to get the lead. Two legitimate stakes horses in this four other than field one of them Dahlia Streamer gets off horribly has trouble thereafter the other La Piaf comes and gets the money at a pretty nice price very slow race but they went slow early. She hasn't won in a long time but she has got class and she had Santos is riding that turf very well. David Thompson Christopher Clement La Piaf 1065 24 20 blazing katie 765 60 irving's girl 360 to show the exact 9 8 97 60. Here's the finale, mile and a 16th, four and up, 17-5, down to 15-5. Sylvester Stone, 15, Kruger, Blaze on Song, 50, Kim Durant. Roman Chorus, four, Chavez, Easton Brave, 22, Beckner. Hot Slew, 10, Mojica. Kalisto, five, Mike Luzzi. Advanced Placement, nine to five, the favorite, Mike Smith. Hudlam Sidekick, 40, McCauley. Crackbell, four, and Alvarado. Hold the Basket, 30, Ruben Hernandez. Sailing on a Prayer, Gate Scratch. Hugger Tag, 13, and Littrell. And they're off. Hug it tag breaks first on the far outside. From the rail comes Sylvester Stone up after the lead. Cracked Bell has speed, so does Hudlam's sidekick. Hot Slew is running up close in fifth. Kalisto is sixth and behind. Horse is now angling toward the inside. Down on the rail, Roman Chorus is sent up from seventh. In between horses, Blaze on Song is now eighth. And at the back of the pack, our hold the basket, Eastern Brave and advanced placement. Up the back stretch, Sylvester Stone pressured through a quarter of 23 seconds flat by Hot Slew right there with them on the outside. 
Roman Chorus has made quick progress up into third position now, and he's being pushed along to stay within close range of the lead. Hudlum sidekick is running in fourth, Hugatag fifth, Kalisto is sixth, and down on the inside, Blazon Song seventh by three. Then advanced placement, Crack Bell hold the basket, Eastern Brave into the far turn. It's Ben Sylvester Stone the whole way, but forced through a half mile of 46 and one by Hot Slew has been right with them the entire distance. Roman Chorus still just in behind the lead, running in third position. Hudlum sidekick from the back of the pack. Advanced placement is circling horses. There goes advanced placement well behind early, and now he's third. Coming to the quarter pole, Sylvester Stone a length. Hot Slew second, advanced placement third on the outside. Roman Chorus down on the inside, fourth Kalisto is now running in fifth. Hugatag fan wide into the stretch. Plays on song down toward the rail, hitting the eighth pole. It's still Sylvester Stone grimly holding on short lead. Hot Slew right there on the outside. Advanced placement is still third with 100 yards to run. Inside the 16th pole, it's Hot Slew and Sylvester Stone. Sylvester Stone digs down and will not be denied. Do you remember yesterday? Well, remember it again. Keep your eye on Kruger on the horse on the lead. Really feel bad for the connections of this horse who brought him back from a six-month layoff. But once again, the old technical hitting another horse on the nose with a whip is going to cause a takedown here. Now, unlike yesterday's, in this one right there, you can actually see the horse's head jerking up. It may have had some effect on the outcome, which it didn't yesterday. But again, Sylvester Stone hadn't been out since January. Nice at Twenty-five dollars Call one 1-800-208-4333. This offer is limited. Call 1-800-208-4333. devil of a time thanks to the devils and their fans for a very hot season and here's to an even hotter one next year on sports channel open with a mile and a 16th on the inner turf maidens three and up and they're off stumbling leaving the gate was inside news and no storm inherits the early lead just to his outside top trader farthest out into the course it's stare to heaven facetious buck is in between horses making the bend toward the back stretch no storm the leader but quickly there goes an anxious stare to heaven stare to heaven charging up to engage no storm top trader the gray runs in third facetious buck is fourth inside news is now running in fifth position followed by poets pistol triple manhattan is second to last henry s is the trailer while saving ground the opening quarter went in 23 and 4 fifth seconds and they're moving up the back stretch no storm in front and Stare to Heaven is a measured second on the outside. Top trader up close, running third and saving ground. Facetious Buck is right with the pacemakers on the outside fourth. Then Poets Pistol, Inside News, Triple Manhattan and Henry S. As the field moves into the far turn, now it's still no storm in front. Stare to Heaven is pressured in the whole way through a half and 48 flat. On the turn now, it's still no storm trying to fend off the challenge of Stare to Heaven. Three lengths back, Top Trader is called on for more run. Another three to Facetious Buck, who's tailed off in the fourth. Poets Pistol, Henry S. is launching his bid from six lengths out of it. And now the field turning for home. Stare to Heaven on even terms with no storm. And they cut the corner together. No storm down inside, still clinging desperately to a short lead. Stare to Heaven giving his all, trying to get by. But no storm is digging down deep. Still in front by a half length. Stare to Heaven on the outside, right there running second. Five lengths to top trader at the 16th pole. No storm refuses to surrender the lead. And he'll go on to win. Wired After being wire. abused by my colleagues in the press box yesterday after the Redmond changed their name to Red Storm. This is Redmond's fans revenge here Harvey. This is no storm making a nice turf, turf debut for John Lenzini and Mike Luzzi. Stare to heaven the speed horse and logical favorite chased from the outside and couldn't get him. Watch out for outside favorites on the inner turf and one horse will always lose all chance at the gate. This time it was the number one inside news. No storm John Preachy likes it as a hunch play. Anthony Drakis, Butch Lenzini, Mike Luzzi. 1667, 4480. Stare to Heaven, 382, 60. Top Trader, 280. Exact to 288. 
Here's the second. This is a sprint. Phillies and Mass four and up. Claiming tags 25 down to 20. Youthful Sis going right out after the lead, and so is Smart Holly, and those two hook up right from the gate. She's Landing is just off them in the early going, and the Gray Goblin is fourth toward the rail. Nice Crane being pushed along to stay within close early striking range, then a break of about seven lengths back to All Too Well the trailer. Youthful Sis getting clear by a length and a half, and rattling off an opening quarter of 22 and 3 fifths seconds. With She's Landing in close pursuit, second Smart Holly is tailed off into third position. Nice Crane being asked for her best now. Fourth on the outside, five lengths from the front. Then Goblin and well, well behind the race. Does all too well. Coming to the top of the stretch, it's still Youthful Sis breezing along on an uncontested lead. She's clear by two with a quarter mile to come. She's Landing, though, stalking second at the top of the stretch. Youthful Sis is under a drive now, under a fierce left-handed whip. She's Landing is on full attack on the outside and Smart Holly is third. It's still Youthful Sis trying to hold on for one more furlong. She's Landing runs at her 100 yards from home. Youthful Sis still there. She's Landing surging. It's going to be close. It's going to be. She's Landing getting there. Well, in this race, I had the advantage of knowing that Youthful Sis would outpop the field and that She's Landing doesn't tend to run two alike. Well, she won her last start. She's repeating here today. I thought there'd be a speed duel. There wasn't a speed duel, but the second speed caught the main speed. It's a two-speed number. She's landing. Barbara Davis, Gasper Chera, Mike Smith. 864, 240. Youthful Sis, 380, 240. The overbet favorite, Smart Holly, 220. The 4 2s, 2760. Quinella, 2442, 1340. Early double. A lot of two fours up there, 7680. Here's the third. Five furlongs, maiden two year olds. Title wavy, Crone. A go, Mike Smith. Jump the shadow, Craig Perret. Northern Centaur, Jerry Bailey, six to five. Silver Midnight Santos, Furious Folly, Robbie Davis. Tidal Wavy and Northern Centaur out fast. Furious Folly sent up toward the lead on the outside. Jump the Shadow is coming on through. Those four in a scramble for the lead. And then it's a go. And Silver Midnight around the far turn. Jump the Shadow has come on through to get the lead. Furious Folly running in second now. Northern Centaur third. Tidal Wavy back and forth. A go is fifth. Silver Midnight is wide and last. Coming to the top of the stretch. Jump. The Shadow leads the pack by two. Furious Folly second. A go on the far outside is third and beginning to close in. Then toward the inside, it's Northern Centaur and down on the rail. Tidal Wavy, top of the stretch, jump the Shadow. Furious Folly running greenly through the stretch. On the outside, a go. It's jump the Shadow straight as a string. And he's opening up by three. Furious Follow continues to zigzag his way down the stretch. He'll be second behind Jump the Shadow in a good-looking debut, winning by four. Harvey, the Dejus are going pretty wild over in Europe. This is the first one we're seeing here, the well-named Jump the Shadow. Uh, Billy Mott had a horse in this race that didn't look mentally prepared for this race. Uh, ran third, his name was a go, and the second horse was good enough while racing greenly to hold the place. And you mentioned he's well-named. Dejus, if you may recall, is the horse that jumped his shadow. We had the Breeders' Cup here and safely kept, I do believe, won the Breeders' Cup sprint that day. Well-named horse and a winner at first asking. Dogwood Stable, Frank Alexander, Craig Perrette. Jump the shadow, 644-4280. A Copeland hits the board, Furious Folly, 1224-80, a go, 360. The exact to 36, 96-40. Here's the fourth coming up. This is a sprint for Phillies and Mares three and up. New York State Breads trying to run through that condition. They're off. Alexa's Lucky Star, Distinct Manor, Salt Air Queen, Exhibitor Star, and Lost Era. Lost Era and Distinct Manor going at it head-to-head. Saltaire Queen right there with them on the outside third. Toward the inside, Ladylike Action is fourth. Sam's in control, four wide, fifth. All Girl Nessa coming on through between horses from sixth. Exhibitor Star seventh between horses. Fire the back. Kiss the Pro on the far outside is running in eighth position. And then it's Needles last and Alexa's Lucky Star trails the field. Lost Era, Distinct Manor, Our Girl Nessa joining the fray. And they rattled off a first quarter in 22 seconds flat, a blistering pace here. Sam's in control, just off the lead, and poised on the outside fourth. Exhibitor Star in behind a wall of horses running in 
fifth, then Salt Air Queen and Kiss the Pro on the outside. At the top of the stretch, Lost Era. The rail is opened up for Excipiter Stars coming on through. And on the far outside, Sam's in control is charging hard from the back of the pack. Needles last. Lost Era is dropping back. On the far outside, Kiss the Pro is coming late. Excipiter Stars got a short lead. Sam's in control. It's going to be Excipiter Star. Going away by two expanding lengths. Sam's in control was second. I have great empathy for those betters who made uh, Sam's in control a short price here. Uh, Eddie Maple saved no ground at any time in this race. But Frank Alvarado did. He skimmed it on the rail and the turn, just tipped to the two-path into the lane and sort of out momentum the favorite late. And the winner is Exhibitor Star, Stephen DeMora, Stephen L. DeMora, and Frank Alvarado. 11.65-340. Favorite will try this condition again. Sam's in control, 3 and 240. Invader, Kiss the Pro, 360. The 2.8s, 3760. Quinella, 2882, 1140. Team Valor is continuing its torrid pace of a year ago when Star of Cozine beat Lure in the Manhattan and Caesars and won the Arlington Million to contribute to the stable's 1993 earnings of 3.35 million. Barry Irwin and Jeff Siegel's Team Valor in 1994 is right on its 1993 pace in earnings and ahead of its pace in stakes performers. Leading sprinter Demolute Demashoot equaled the grade three Count Fleet handicap mark of 108 and 1 fifth in taking this 150,000 Oaklawn Park event in the Midwest. Out West, Lady Blessington won the $100,000 Grade 3 Buena Vista at Santa Anita. And in the East, Santa Catalina equaled the Grade 3 Shirley Jones handicap mark in winning this $100,000 Gulfstream Park event. From 23 runners this season, eight already have won or placed in stakes races, all but one of them graded. Team Valor, General Partnerships, 800-734-5660. Team Valor, America's racing stable. We're on the inner. They're going a mile and a sixteenth. These are once again maidens three and up. And they're off. Bastille was off awkwardly, spots the field about five lengths right from the start, and Thunderbolted takes the early lead. But there goes a headstrong exclusive casino up into second. Kaha is running in third. Then toward the inside, 30 good ones. He is now fourth. And alongside him, Topic El Ram running in fifth. Kelly Sato settles in sixth, about six lengths from the lead. Then there's a break of four back to North 44. And Bastille, who is off to that eventful beginning. The opening quarter went in 23 and 3 fifth seconds with exclusive Casino and Thunderbolted alternating on the lead. Two lengths back, Kahao tucked away neatly in behind the front runners in third. Topical Rem kept close to the pace on the outside fourth. 30 good ones tailing off a bit in the fifth, now about six lengths from the front. And then it's Bastille, who's now moved up to be seventh, followed by North 44. The trailer is now Kelly's Halo, who's dropped back to last. The half in a solid 46 and 2. They're rounding the far turn. Thunderbolted now leads by a length from Exclusive Casino. But here comes Bastille. Bastille driving up toward the lead on the outside. 30 good ones still in with a chance. Right there, fourth and saving ground as they turn for home. Then Cahal and Topical Rem. As the field comes off the turn, it's Thunderbolted in front. On the outside, Bastille trying to get to Thunderbolted, who's still strong on the lead by a length. On the outside, it's Bastille, and in between them, it's 30 good ones. Thunderbolted is still there. Bastille giving his all. Here comes Bastille with the final charge to the lead. He got off last, but he got home first. It's Bastille by With the addition of blinkers, I try to make exclusive casino overcome the outside post. Unfortunately, he was unable to. Uh, this is a pretty smart-looking debut. Nice turf stride on this horse, Bastille. Uh, he's by the minstrel out of the mayor, S. Diev, who won a lot of turf races for Steve DeMar around here. This horse was extremely well bet, and as we always tell you, a mile and a sixteenth on the inner, someone's going to be compromised at the start. You know who was compromised at the start here? The winner, Bastille. This is a very impressive race. Anthony Corey, Gary Siaka, Chavez. 1288-65-40. Thunderbolted, 720-380. 30 good ones, 280. The exact at 2-4, 91-40. 
Now we're going to the first division of the Jive for 11th running, $50,000 added, grade three, allowance conditions, seven furlongs on the widener. Dominant Prospect Chavez, Secret Odds is out. Phone Fantasy Crone, J.G. Maple, Home of the Free, Bailey Rides the Favorite. Four-star Dave Maiori, Najinsky's Gold Santos, Preparant and Cox's Orange are out, Kiri's Clown Luzzy. They're off. Four-star Dave gets out fast. J.G. is also away quickly. Phone Fantasy is there. Dominant Prospect from the inside. Father Stout carries Clown. Up the back stretch, and Dominant Prospect gets to the early lead. Phone Fantasy is running second. J.G. on the outside, third. Home of the free now. Fourth through the inside. Carries Clown on the outside, running in fifth. Four-star Dave in between them. Three lengths back to the trailer. Najinsky's gold. 22-2 and two for the first quarter. Dominant Prospect leads the way as they hit the far turn. And a host of pursuers. Phone Fantasy off the rail now and pressing Dominant Prospect. Kiri's Clown joins the fray. Now running in third. Home of the Freeze had a good trip right there and moving through an opening toward the inside. Four-star Dave is only four lengths from the lead with three furlongs to run. A half eye-opening. 44 and two-fifths seconds. Dominant Prospect with the lead as the field turns for home. Home of the Free is down inside and in behind him. He'll need running room as they turn for home. On the extreme outside, Najinsky's goal was fanned five wide into the stretch, and he's coming hard, but they still have to catch Dominant Prospect. Home of the Free is full out. Najinsky's gold on the far outside, charging hard. 16th pole, Dominant Prospect, a slim lead. Najinsky's gold taking it on the line. Well, when the course is firm, that 120 is correct. The course is firm and the pace is hot, and you have a nice one-run horse when he's turning back to seven furlongs in the Jinsky's Gold. You're going to run awfully quick, Harvey. A friend of mine said, I bet this horse. He said, if you see him at the top of the stretch, he'll win it. We did see him. He circled the field, and he puts them away. Stanton P. Powell, Rick Violet, and Jose Santos. Najinsky's goal from last to first, 17, 69, and 520. Dominant Prospect holds well, incidentally. 11, 60, and 6. Home of the free, a little short, 260 to show. The 7 1 exacto, 160 20. The triple 7 1 5, $435. The time, a North American track record for seven furlongs on the turf. Who held it? Uh, formerly held by Unduplicated uh, at Woodbine, set in 1991. That takes care of that. They, that. I guess that track was fast. Here's the seven. This is a sprint. Phillies and Mayors, three and up. Now one is a two, other than. Strawberries last, Santos, Unreal Cupcake, Chavez. Saskia star, Robbie Davis. Night and Dreams, Mike Smith, Consider the Lily Crone. Magnetic Money, Dale Beckner. Saucy Lady, Gaylord Lovato. Classy Pat Bailey. Strawberries last, Unreal Cupcake, Consider the Lily. Classy Pat all out fast. There goes Saskia's star to grab the lead. Night in Dreams is also there. It's Saskia's star in front. Classy Pat pressing from the far outside. Night in Dreams backs off a bit. Now running in third. Magnetic Money comes on through to be fourth. Consider the Lily is fifth on the outside. Strawberries last. Back to sixth. Unreal Cupcake second. And Saucy Lady Gaylord. The opening quarter, 22 seconds flat. Saskia Star zipped the quarter and leads the way by a length and a half. Night and Dreams is revving up on the outside. Classy Pat is right there running in third. Magnetic Money down toward the inside running in fourth. Then farther out into the track, it's Consider the Lily and outside her, Unreal Cupcake five wide into the stretch. The field turning for home, Saskia Star in front. On the outside, Night and Dreams is right there. Farthest out, Unreal Cupcake. Consider the Lily is fourth at the eighth pole. Mike Smith rouses Night and Dreams to the lead. Night and Dreams in front. On the outside, Unreal Cupcake. And down toward the inside, Saskia Star. Down toward the line, Night and Dreams wins the length, Saskia Star. Well, they're betting two fillies in there, Harvey. And I guess uh, Consider the, uh, the Lily gave her best to Julie last time out, giving her a first win back. In the meantime, this is House Busters half. Night and Dreams from the Mott Stable, uh, who, like the winner of the last race, Rick Violet, was up in the press box today making their pitch to Albany. Uh, Billy Mott gets it done here. This filly's got a nice record. She does. I thought she preferred it wet, but she runs very well here. Muhammad al Maktoum, Billy Mott, Mike Smith. 560, 360, 340. Saskia Star, 980, 860. Unreal Cupcake, 440. The 4 3, 60, 360. The pick 3, 274, 389.
Platform Thoroughbred Action. Brought to you by the Daily Racing Form, the best friend a handicapper could have. When you come to Belmont Park Saturday, June 11, you'll get more than a great day of racing. You'll get a coupon for a free Daily Racing Form handicapping video when you come back on Sunday. Playing to Win takes you inside racing to show you how the pros pick their winners. Speed figures, trip handicapping, workout patterns, and breeding angles are just a few of the helpful handicapping tips that can really pay off. And they're yours free with paid admission. The more you watch, the more you learn, the more you win. So come out to Belmont Park Saturday, June 11th, and you're sure to go home a winner. 90 miles from New York City, there's an entire world like you've never seen before. The Concord Resort Hotel, Championship Golf, Indoor and Outdoor Tennis, Live Entertainment with the biggest names in show business, a million activities just for the kids, and much, much more. So leave your world behind and lose yourself in ours for a while. The Concord Resort Hotel. For reservations, call 1-800-CONCORD. Promotional considerations are provided by the Luna Restaurant, conveniently located on Hempstead Turnpike, directly across from Belmont Park's main entrance. Affordably priced, the Luna offers the finest in Italian cuisine. Open for lunch and dinner seven days a week, the Luna Restaurant is the perfect place to cap off your day at the races. Here's the second division of the Jive, but let's see how that North American record holds up. Seven on the widener, 50 added, grade three at allowance conditions, three and up. Derek and Shining Bitter out, Dr. Alphus Bacoli. Lazy Luke, Santos Chavez, a lot of money for this shipper. A in Sociology, Maple. Virginia Rapids, Samine, Seminole Spirit out. Hallisey Perrette rides the favorite. Roman Envoy Bailey, Pride of Summer, Smith. They're off, Roman Envoy came like a bullet from the gate. Virginia Rapids walked out, spots the field four lengths as Roman Envoy goes directly to the lead, and the quick-footed Roman Envoy leads already by three. Hallisey charges into second on the outside, A in Sociology third, Dr. Alfus is fourth. Then Pride of Summer, followed by Lazy Luke, who had to steady, and the late-starting Virginia Rapids is the trailer. 22-2 and two for the opening quarter, heading for the far turn, chasing Roman Envoy. Hallisey, his gray shadow, running second. A in Sociology is third. Pride of Summer is fourth. Dr. Alfus fifth, down on the inside. Followed by Lazy Luke. Virginia Rapids forced to go wide, launching a bit as they round the far turn. Roman Envoy still blazing the way. The half in 44 and 4 fifth seconds. Lazy Luke moving into contention. Hallisey now put to the whip in between horses. And here comes Pride of Summer charging hard. A in Sociology hemmed in at the rail. Virginia Rapids on the far outside and Dr. Alfus. Any one of them can win from here. Roman Envoy is still in front. Lazy Luke there on the outside. A in Sociology muscling his way through. Hallisey running third, 16th pole. Roman Envoy full out drive. A in Sociology with a decisive thrust between horses to get to the lead as they hit the line. A in Sociology wins. Well, all the granny lost on Sam's in control. Eddie Maple saves here with A in Sociology for Phil Johnson, who incidentally was the first trainer to speak at that uh, press conference this morning. Uh, Hallisey got a good trip. Uh, Virginia Rapids did not. Uh, broke six lengths behind the field, tried to make his Met Mile move back again, but the exertions were too much. He ran well. Yes, he liked the turf. He was unprepared for the start, and he ran a, a decent race. But this looks like a two-speed number, only it wasn't. A in sociology, good rate job by Eddie Maple, Fred Ronka, Phil Johnson, New York Red, there's the commercial, 1949, 20, and 3. Roman Envoy, 7 and 260. Hallisey, the favorite, 220. The exact of five nines, 125, the triple five nine eight, 363, and nobody pick six, which means $50,000 carry over the Belmont tomorrow. Belmont will not be in the pick six. It is the, tenth, the ninth race tomorrow. 14 tickets did have five. They received 1198. Here's the finale today. This is a sprint. Four-year-olds and up. Bottom tags here, 14 down to 12. comes on quickly and there goes reappeal 
toward the inside small pack in between horses Ben Alley's Rula up the back stretch and reappeal dashes to the lead clears the field from his outside post small pack running second down on the rail Ben Alley's Rula on the move on the outside from third Paraco between horses fourth Alex's Candy is gaining ground from fifth position now and then it's Happy Duck followed closely at the inside by Family Tries then it's Two Wise Presence and Run Galty Run is the trailer Reappeal is the leader, Ben Alley's Rula, right there with them through a sharp first quarter of 22 and one fifth seconds. Alex's Candy third on the outside, Paraco fourth at the rail. Happy Duck within striking range is running in fifth position. Family tries, is gaining ground, but in heavy traffic as the field turns for home. Reappeal off the turn into the stretch, still leading by length and a half. Ben Alley's Rula trying to get to him second. Down on the inside, Paraco right there running in third. Alex's Candy is fourth. Two wise, closing stoutly on the far outside. It's reappeal in front. Paraco charging hard toward the inside. Ben Alley's Rula and two wise. It's still reappeal. Here's Paraco. Here's the line. Paraco looked like he got there. Very close indeed to photo Probably with reappeal. This is uh, like a broken record here, but uh, this is my question. He was also added his voice to what was said about Albany up in the press box earlier today. Uh, those trainers swept the last four races on the card. Meantime, I needed Paraco, and he's making a great run, waiting for him to turn back into a sprint, and and he won it, didn't he? I thought he did. In fact, the photo reveals it was mighty close, but Mike Hushin will be happy, as will Gene Howman and Richard Migliori. Reappeal holds on. 8, 5, 20, 3, 20, Paraco 584, two wise 380 to show. The exact 11, 8, 41, late double 5, 11, 103, 60, triple 11, 8, 1, $431. Here are the scratches for the 10 race card tomorrow. Remember, the Belmont's the ninth, not in the pick six. In the first, and again, turf races, I only give you what I got. Take out the 14 slew of rubies, the 15 solar display, the 16 continued. In the third, scratch the two Fabersham, the nine tropical illusion, the 10 preparin. Uh, in the fifth, take out the seven Turco Lady. And in the last race, take out the two Sky Cry and the eight Lord Sage. Now. Let's go back again to those trainers. Are we going to have any action on that right in? Or? Uh, well, they're going up there, but uh, uh, they are also organizing a, a phone-in and a writing campaign. So, you know, if you like the show, if you like the game, whatever, uh, this is an important situation. If you contact your, your congressman and Mario, I know the horsemen appreciate it, and you would be doing yourselves a favor if you're a fan of racing. Yeah, we, so and there is a race there's, there's a race tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah, there is a race. It's called the Belmont Stakes. You've just heard the bad news. The good news is we got a pretty good Belmont. Have an opinion? Uh, we got a terrific Belmont. I think it's going to be very contentious, Harvey. Uh, I'm rooting for Strode's Creek because I think I think he'll win it. Uh, that that short bullet-like workout that he had on Wednesday answered a lot of questions for me. Charlie Whittingham, a living legend, deserves to have a Belmont trophy. But in the meantime, if Gophagen wins, well then, go Rangers, go Knicks. Oh, okay. First post will be 12:30. The show tomorrow night will be on at seven. Come on out and enjoy the Belmont. Good night. May the horse be with you. Play it, hoop it up. The NBA's official three-on-three -three tournament presented by Sports Channel. Call now for an entry form to play on Long Island in Manhattan or at Farley Dickinson University in Teaneck. Or get an entry form for New York tournaments in Newsday or New York Newsday. Or for the Jersey tournament in the North Jersey Herald and News starting June 15th. Each player gets a free shirt and free tickets to sporting events. Separate divisions for every age. Hoop it up. Brought to you by IKEA, KISS FM, PC Richard & Son, WDRE, Continental Airlines, and WFAN.
Sports Channel turns up the heat in June. Bobby Bow and the Mets slug it out with National League rivals in 18 games. At the plate with Rusty Staub serves up great baseball talk. Dynamets pitches baseball fun for the entire family. Catch the U.S. prepping for the World Cup on the World Series of Soccer. Summer Racing 94 is the place to be for live harness racing from Yonkers. And get same-day thoroughbred racing results from Belmont. It's all for you in June on Sports Channel. Saturday on Sports Channel, Jeff Kent leads the Mets against the Montreal Expos in an afternoon matinee. Live at 1.30 on Sports Channel, Saturday. The entire family catch the U.S. prepping for the World Cup on the World Series of Soccer. Summer Racing 94 is the place to be for live harness racing from Yonkers. And get same-day thoroughbred racing results from Belmont. It's all for you in June on Sports Channel. Tonight, join Rusty Staub for great baseball talk and more. The season premiere of At the Plate, tonight at 10, only on Sports Channel. Stop number one, the cold surf of Northern California and Santa Cruz's steamer lane. Stop number two, the Southern California surf town of Seaside Reef. And now, the third stop of the 1994 Bud Surf Tour, Pismo Beach, California. It's the Body Glove of Pismo. Presented by Hawaiian Airlines. say Sports Channel is in the game, it means you are too. Chris Terrari, his record. Island is gambling still. There's a little more animosity, a little more deeper feeling. Well, it's been a tough night, hasn't it, Richie? And Stevens does that perfectly. He gets into that zone right here. The Islanders, Devils, and Lance. Sports Channel is in the game. Well, the Jets have their work cut out for them now. The Oilers lead it 3-1. to one. Craig Matavish just about had that play bogged down. But he went back and got it. And Esatikinen 
fired a bullet wrist shot right off the post that beat Beauregard to his left. A no frills kind of play. It went from McTavish to Tikkanen. The Jets were cheating a little bit on the transition. That's why they didn't have enough guys back in there. When the puck was knocked off McTavish's stick, a couple of the Jets turned back up ice. They thought they were going to get an offensive rush. They cheated on the transition. That's why there were two Oilers down deep, one of whom was Tikkanen, who put it away. And the Oilers now have 14 minutes and 51 seconds to protect the lead to make it to the Smythe Division Finals against the Kings. Well, is it chance taking time now for Winnipeg, or is it still too early? They're going to have to cheat on the transition a little now, Mike. Not necessarily open up wide. You don't want your defenseman gambling at the blue line every time the play comes in, like right there, right? Ellett stood in, but there was a guy coming back. So the defenseman can't blindly stand in, but the forwards can cheat on the transition a little bit. Peter Klima moving, lost control of it, and then went down on the check of Mantha. Around now, it's Taglianetti starting back for the Jets. They've got to get two now, and they have 14 minutes and 20 seconds in which to do it. It's set up for Huddy by Ranford. Really hit by Fenton. Klima can't clear it out. Huddy and Fenton collide again, and Fenton pulls him down. Ashton tries to get to it, but instead it's Huddy. And down went Fenton, and off will come Randy Gregg, and Gregg gets an additional unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, and so a turning point in the game. Let's pause for a regional break. Sports Channel America's coverage of the Stanley Cup playoffs will continue after... Turn on Sports Channel America for exciting sports. Follow America's top amateur athletes on the USOC Olympic Sports Series. Hoops fans won't miss a beat with our exclusive national coverage of the World Basketball League. We'll canvas the world of sports and the world at large on World of International Sports. Your weekends are piston-powered with fast-paced NASCAR action and Monday night sizzled with a pro boxing tour. Turn on Sports Channel America for exciting sports. Randy Gregg has just committed a huge breakdown in discipline. The last guy you would expect. He is a medical doctor, has a degree in medicine. You'd think level-headed. Paul Fenton dragged him down, then came to the front. There's the cross-check in front of the net. Now watch number 21 of the Oilers. Watch what he does here. Goes right to Kerry Fraser, and he grazed him. You can't do that, Randy. Kerry Fraser immediately called an unsportsmanlike, and Gregg knows fully right now what he has done to his team. Four minutes now, the Oilers are going to be down a man. He's fortunate he's still sitting in the box because he could be tossed for that. 14 minutes to go in the third period, and the Jets with the long power play. No icing as Lowe tries to play it along. Out man. Three Jets were in deep, and they're able to get it away. Dale Howard Chuck back to Ellett. Waits across for the control of Olison. Spun back to Olison. Ellett again. Vanessa's to Howard Chuck. Deals it back off for Steen. Steen behind. Weaves his way in front. Backhander. And that went off Ranford. Reaches out. Trapped it. It came loose, but the whistle had blown. There was plenty of blocking and jamming going on, and a little more after this play stopped. Well, Dale Howardchuk was given a shot in the face by Tikkanen, but who isn't going to go diving for the puck? The Oilers ran into a problem because when Ranford made the save, we'll show it to you, watch where the puck finally ends up. Steen's going to hook around the net, come out on the far side for a backhand. Now watch this. Watch where the puck ends up. Out in front of Kevin Lowe, so Ranford has to go around Lowe to get it. Sure, Dale Howardchuk's going to take a shot at it. It's a noisy throng here tonight. Bill Ranford has faced 20 shots. He has stopped 19. There's ticket at number 10, just making a beeline right there for Howard Chuck. That 20th jet shot went right into Ranford. I don't think he saw it coming. It just hit off of him. And then they battled for the loose one. doorstep in 30 minutes or less. You can almost taste it. Come on, give us a call. 
Stop in at any of our Staten Island locations and mention Staten Island Cable for this month's special, a large pie with any two toppings for only $8.95 at Domino's Pizza. Officer Ike Taylor was so respected, so admired. Ike Taylor, hell of a cop. There was only one way his son could turn out. I'll tell you that on the job. It wouldn't take me. It wouldn't take you, Ike Taylor's kid. They lost. Buck Taylor doesn't need a gun. He's got the telephone.